-hmm. This is what you're dealing with Mm mods. And so when you're talking about the ethical obligations to your mod or maat, this is what they're talking about here. We have we have an obligation as brothers to take care and make sure that you know everyone's on the up and up. But you also have women that are initiated. They're initiated separately, but they're all part of the same mod. And so what it says here is it's more remote relations on the paternal side of just mod, who may still be described as kituchi. We are brothers, or we are brother and sister, sister and brother, or we are sisters, whichever combination is applicable to the speaker and the person being spoken about. And so if you marry someone who is from your, your mat, your age grade, if you are a male, you have married your sister. If they are a woman, you have married your brother. And this is what you find in the ancient Egyptian records in terms of the kings and queens. They weren't marrying their literal brothers and sisters. They were from the same age grade because you can't marry somebody that's in your parents' age grade. And you can't marry somebody that's in your lower age grade because they're considered your sons and daughters. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so you marry your brother or sister, the people that is in your age grade. And so the age grades range from like, you know, five to seven years. So that's 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 the age range. You know, uh, no, no, it's actually about 20, about seven to 15 years. And so, you know, so every 15 to 20 years, it actually changes, but that's the, the range that it has. And so um, he goes in some more to talk about the twins concept. I won't get into that. Um, this is an early work in 1909 that interviewed the college and people that reinforces this. So we have early records before Christianity or Islam penetrated the college and people. And so, um, but here's another thing. This is a, a, a text, you know, the ancient Egyptian uh, chronology <laughs> uh, edited by Eric Harnon et al. Uh, There's a cat by the name of Jay Moje uh, in his review of this work of uh, family terms and the limitations of using genealogies for dating purposes. He notes also the missing of uh, proper genealogical terms in the Egyptian language is notable. For example, there are no separate words for uncle or nephew. So for simplification, sin, which is the word commonly used for brother, can mean brother, uncle, or nephew. But even a good friend can be called sin. And so this term is, is hard to say because, um, you know, how they use it, because it can mean brother, uncle, or nephew. Um, but it can also, a good friend could be simply called brother. It's no different than what we do as African Americans in the modern time. And so, you know, uh, that's my brother over there, or is he a brother? You know, th- these are stuff that was stressed. But we have, you know, uh, our, uh, anthropologists, linguists, and all of this uh, saying the same thing. So this was in uh, the Journal of Archaeology of Egypt. 2008. And so, you know, Marcel Griole, uh, talking about the Dogon, talks about the same concept um, in amongst the Dogon individuals. So we have extra African uh, <laughs> issues there. I mean, uh, support there. Um, I won't go through that just for the record so you can see it. Um, How are you going to get past that, though? I mean, you can't yeah. get past that, understanding. I said that they're important to understand African culture, man. Exactly. And so <clears throat> y'all missed most of the uh, what was um, happening before, but I just wanted to answer some of, what's his name, Brother Devine? Yes, Devine. <laughs> Pseudo. So, uh, oh Brothers Brother of I'll, I'll deal with Nasi first, okay. because Brother Nasi made a claim that the word metanature was not used as a phrase together in the language that you couldn't find it anywhere. I don't know and so I immediately I knew that was false. And so I went here to the, oh, I'm sorry, um, the Egyptian language thesaurus. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a French website, but the everything is written in German because uh, it's drawing from the, the Germanic Wurtzbush, Ermin Grandpa Wurtzbush dictionaries. And so what's good about this site <laughs> is that you can do a search, that's what this word, lamenta, uh, is for a term or a phrase, and it will tell you not only you know where to find it in the dictionary, not only where to find it in the dictionary, but also where to find them in the papyruses and the papyri, or or as still as wherever it's located in ancient Egypt. So we have 31 attestations 
of the word metanetral, which is in the red here that we see. And so not only that, they get the transliterations of the phrase and phraseology around the term in which you search and the German um, translation, you know, here on the right. So we see from here, um, I can't see from this distance, but uh, I can just look, you know, um, in, in the Saqqara text of Unis, you know, you see this word metanetra, you know, here in the phrase. So we have in the Berlin papyrus and the, uh, the Amherst papyrus right here, metanetra. All of these different uh, Amherst papyrus here, metanetra, metanetra, metanetra as a phrase. So you can go into these things, you can find the primary, look at it, look into this area where it's located and see the word and phrase metanetra in the hieroglyphs. So where Nazi got that from, I have no idea. This is why I'm calling the, the Hebrews Hamites, those who don't know Egypt. And so, you know, they're, they're <laughs> ignorance of Egypt and they keep making these, these aren't even rookie mistakes. Mm -hmm. These is, you know, before rookie, before you even get to rookie state, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, Brother Divine said that you can't read the determinatives in terms of their being solid. And so this is um, a particular text. Yeah. <laughs> Say that again. So, oh, okay. This is, this is Dr. Mube, uh, Muba Binge Bilolo, who's an Egyptologist out of the Congo, uh, and linguist, evangelologist, and philosopher. So he, he speaks, writes in uh, German, French, Greek, Chinua, uh, the meta nature. You know, he knows uh, a few Semitic languages. Uh, he's, a, he's a real polyglot. And, and when he's examining the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, he's reading the, I don't know if you can see, you know, this, for example, the, the meta nature, the determinatives, and when he does, they're, they're uh, complete words in his language. So one of the theses of Dr. Mubabengi Bilolo is that the Metanetra language is kin to his language, his native language, Hidu Abantu in Central Africa. And so all of these words that we find in the Metanetra, we speak on this on a regular basis. And so the Metanetra language is, is a living language in Central Africa, not including the college who we just mentioned, you know, who has an a, a immediately direct connection. But in here, you know, these are um, phrases. So I'm giving you the book. I'm giving you, for example, page 128, 129. And so because they, they aren't students of the metanature, they aren't students of um, Egyptology, and they're still stuck on works from the 70s on back, they aren't on this new scholarship and, and, and can't refute anything uh, to that nature. And so... It's, it's interesting. So we already hit up, for example, the collagen people. And then we have this author here, uh, Abu Bakri Musalam. And uh, Abu Bakri Musalam has written uh, several texts. Here's just one of them, uh, the Sahara or the Valley of the Nile. And so he's talking about the African, I mean, the Egyptian origins of the Pular people, people in West Africa. And in this text, in the back of the text, is, is a work written in French. Um, Muba Binge Bilolo's works are in French, and this author's works are in French. So you have to be able to read and understand French to, to get at it. But what's interesting is this last chapter here on, uh, I don't think it's the last chapter, probably the second to the last. Yeah, with uh, dealing with Yaro, Yayo. Um, this is what I'm looking at here. Uh, talking about the migrations between the Nile and Senegal. Um, you know, in terms of the conversation of the Yaro the Ayo. And so there's records in the old days, in, the, in, the, in like the 1800s and 1700s, this 1800s actually, um, of Europeans coming in and taking data on the Pular or the Fulani people in Senegal. Mm -hmm. And they're talking about their ancient Egyptian origins. And when they started examining their their uh, conversation concerning their origins in Egypt. What's unique about this is that they were naming pharaohs who they were uh, under. And so when you, when you look at the language, and, and Abu Bukri Musulman is an Egyptologist and also a linguist, and he's looking at the, the, the languages and how they're pronouncing it, and everything lines up. We can actually find these actual pharaohs, you know, from the time in which they moved out of ancient Egypt. 
And this was uh, more during the time of the uh, Greek and Roman period that they moved out into West Africa. And we find stories like this all the time. And so, you know, some of these Fulani people ended up in America and is, are African Americans. And so it's not surprising that you would see, for instance, somebody's DNA like Brother Hunt, which he showed in the, um, in the, in the presentation that, uh, you know, his, his DNA goes all the way to East Africa. My DNA right. goes all the way to East Africa, but right. in, in Southeast, um, yeah. in East Africa. Mm -hmm. And so, you yeah. know, when they're talking about, you know, who are these communities that exist or who are these people that are the ancient Egyptians in West and South and Central Africa, we can say that, you know, we can say, for example, who they are. And this is why they won't take any DNA tests, you know, because they can't prove DNA wise that they are Hebrew Israelites. Okay. <laughs> and so, it's Ishmael. Ishmael? Yeah, he said it here. And so, um, yeah, what up? You know, so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll let my other brothers, What's you know, say and talk. And so, if I have any more supportive information. Did you cover then, everything? Did you cover it? Uh, make sure you cover everything. Yeah, go right to all um, the Did you? Because y'all didn't get the chance. I mean, did you all know your did not sell some more y'all here? Yeah, I did a little bit of this. As a matter of fact, here's the yeah. genealogy of Jesus. I talk about the genealogy of Jesus. And, uh, and so how Jesus comes from an ancestral relationship. Um, and, um, you know, I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of things we could harp on, but I, I, I wanted to let everybody have, you know, a time uh, to discuss. And so, you know, these are just these are just the notes. This wasn't even my full presentation, you know, to, to deal with them. So, uh, I await any of the uh, the challenges. Check it out. Try to um, you know, go a little faster so I can let them in because you know yeah, they yeah, got yeah. their little flights and yeah, yeah, so. I want them to get it into. Y'all gonna use? Y'all yeah. just gonna? We just yeah. gonna build first and yeah. Jenny gonna go. Yeah. 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 Y'all gonna build off the head right off the top. Yeah, yeah. I got a presentation too. That I'm just. Okay, let's go. Let's get that. Who said time? You make sure to make sure he get in. So okay, he's next. next. He's going next. Hey, so now, they didn't have no Are we live right now? Yeah, yeah. we live. Let me show them how they got to give them my man with these gears, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how we wrap it out here. Yeah, y'all yeah. yeah, yeah. know, know what it is. Y'all know what it is, yo. Yeah. Hey, hey, king of diamonds. Pan African New York. gear. Pan African apparel. Hey, you feel good to be the king of New York, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, yo? That's what I'm saying. This is a big stage. Y'all know what it is, yo. I'm the raw squad up, man. They ain't had right. nothing from Oakland University, yo. What they going to do? Yeah, let them finish, let them die. You know, it's amazing, like, you know, amazing. They're, they're talking about where's our book. Earlier, you should have seen me with y'all. Come on, man. Come on, dog. I'm just saying, like, you know, like, you know, nobody in their campus, nobody in their camp are scholars. And so there's nobody in their camp that they can say is publishing works, you know, on scholarship that the, 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 the scholastic community respects. And so we saw the blunders in their lack of methodology last night, and this is why they got the result that they did. Now, of course, they'll say that they won the debate. No, they said that. Look, I was at, look at, online. No, I was at the after party. That's, yeah. And look, you're going to see it because I, I was filming it. Right. If you had an after party scheduled before, yeah. Yeah. Then what you're going to say when you got there, this is now the losing party. You still got to go through it to the after party. Hebrews was saying that they lost. Hebrews was running up to ISU you don't came to Tazoria. I was like, yo, Tazoria, what y'all gonna do about this? <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet him? Did you finally meet him? Uh, yeah, 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 cool, okay. cool. Yeah, good sorry, brother. Oh, you finished? Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Okay, that's good. Also, pass that Pass that down. Also, also, yeah. Hey, 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 man. Hey, feel good, y'all. Get the king of New York, man. Come on, man. Yeah, you know I mean. Smash rock well. What do you think about what Professor James Small said to you, brother? Hey man, you what know, he said? Say that he again. was being nice. He was like, "Yeah," he said, "Kimmick was on the rope, and then the Ross Wall came." But I knew it. I knew it. We didn't even break out the thermal nuclear <laughs> weapons. We ain't do none of that, man. It was on some real quick. Yo. Let me ask you that. I don't think Brother Small was talking about we was on the ropes in that debate. I think he meant like. Over the, past, over the past yeah, a few debates. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. there wasn't no time we was on the ropes in that debate. I'm like, what was he looking at? Yeah, yeah. yeah even polite segment? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah polite was saying, doing good. Polite, no, nah, no, nah, polite. Hey, hey, I'm going to tell you, you know, polite need to stop and put on that show. Like, hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he hyped. He's on that plane ride. Yeah, that was hyped. <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> he need to cut. Hey, but hey, well, now y'all know officially with a goddamn scholarship. Now y'all understand the different show. Now, Let me ask you all. 
uh, one thing I do know about the Hebrews is that they do read books, but they fail to bring in the information. So which one of the brothers said that was you, right? Yeah. That said, look, they ain't got no books. I said that. No, that was you. That was a good point. Yeah. Because one thing I know, when Khalid, any debate Khalid Muhammad had, go and look at it. He have a whole big mm -hmm. table yep. with nothing but books on it. So he can go right to his references and show you, hey, I got it right here. But even, even still with that, that can be that can be a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. Because that's why I stressed earlier the issue of method. Mm -hmm. Because you can have all the books in the world. You can write anything. I can write something on a napkin. <laughs> you know, and it could be the truth or it could be falsehood. The, the issue is, do you have the correct method to be able to investigate right. and verify that which you are claiming? So that's what, um, you know, for instance, what's his name? Um, Shaka, you know, was saying about uh, uh, their their sources. You, 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 uh, you'll get the source, but you won't um, take it your computer. Can. Can I give a shout out to Shaka real quick? Oh, yeah, good. No, so, oh. Hey, let me just say something that Shaka did that no other scholar has ever done that I've ever witnessed. And he showed a connection him. between Judah and Israel and Kemet without the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> you always I'm mention a sure video. You, <laughs> you always mention all these quotes, but nobody has ever brought out the scholarship showing the beetle with the angst and showing that they have had yeah. stuff in in, in, um, in Israel and Judah. All the kings, they were basically vassal kings, and nobody has ever drawn up. Let me tell you something, Shaka. The debate was over after you left. Trust me, they, they were trying to recover after. GOCC, y'all let me down, man. That's all I got to say. Uh, all right, without any further ado, I'm going to bring on one of the members from the Amara squad. He goes by the name of Sinjay, Brother Sinjay. What is your take on the debate? And then talk about what you're about to show the people. Okay. All right. Peace, everybody. Um, Hotel, Mafia, uh, Shalom, everybody. Um, my take on the debate was it looked more like personal attacks. Um, yeah. When my brother and I walked in, you know, it was on Brother Polite's book, you know, and it was real personal. I didn't really see scholarship. Now, you know, there, there, there is a big brother Shaka. Pardon me. Okay, thank, thank you for that correction, brother Shaka. Um, what scholarship actually is? What is scholasticism? It's not just about putting words up on the screen and slapping up pictures. What type of research is behind that? What type of studying and financial and time investment goes into what you're um, discussing? Okay, anybody could just slap some pictures up on the screen. But do you are you learnt in the subject matter? And that's the issue that you know we're seeing in the so-called conscious community. Okay. And a lot of people are not accountable for the information that they're putting out. So that that's very, very problematic. So what you're about to show us. Show okay. Us. Um on the screen I'm about to show you is um we're gonna talk about the chronology. It's not gonna be a lot of detail, but just a couple of main points so that the audience can really get a better idea. How are we going to look at issues of chronology? Now, Dr. Clark, Dr. John Henry Clark, the great ancestor, you know, he, he teaches us that, you know, history is our time clock, okay? And you have to know your point in time in history. What, what is your barometer? What is your compass, okay? And it's very important. Um, and, again, Brother Sar talked about method, okay? So I'm not going to go deep into method, but, um, for this, I use what's called an Afrocentric approach, okay? Some people may have problems with the term, okay? But again, it's about looking at African phenomena from the standpoint of Africans themselves. And if you're not doing that, especially when that information is readily available to you, then, you know, there is going to be a huge gap in scholarship. So if we're talking about um, the cultural practices in regards to sexuality, for example, homosexuality, why are you not looking at it from the Egyptian standpoint, okay? And then you can put what, um, what other contemporary people, what is their view of that? But you're judging it from an outside source. What are they saying about the sexuality, okay? And the texts are, are abundant. And when you look into the languages, you know, as uh, you know, our brother Jonathan demonstrated. You know, the magic okay. brought the science and yes, the scholarship. Exactly, and that's yeah. what happens when you actually invest time in studying the culture, the language. 
okay, the customs and the history to understand from its own standpoint, okay. So that's so when I said the Afrocentric method. That's what I mean by that. Okay. Um, so let's go here. So this, you know, an overview of the ancient Kemetic or Egyptian chronology. All right. Issues and challenges. Just a couple of points. All right. First, um, hold on. All right. Again, Afrocentric perspective definition. This is from Dr. Asante. All right. In regards to theory, it is the placing of African people in the center of any analysis of African phenomena. So again, if we're talking about Kemet or Kemet on trial, then you have to look at Kemet from its African phenomenon, okay? Not from the biblical phenomenon. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to come up short. Thus, it is possible for anyone to master the discipline of seeking the location of Africans in a given phenomenon. Where are the Africans in this? Okay, let's go to the next. All right, now I'm going to need to modify this. All right. Oh, here's your, um, your pointer. No, Check no. it out. See that? That goes forward backwards. No, no, you need okay. to uh, take it out the screen so we can show it off. Oh, yeah, okay. I need to. Yeah, you need to <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hopefully, you can see this. Now, if, if you look at the. Hold on. Okay. This is the dynasties produce, um, and this is, and I reproduced this from John G. Jackson's Man, God, and Civilization. He put an excellent list in here. Now, um, these are many of the main people from Manetho's time. Manetho, again, he's a high priest in ancient Kemet in the third century who put together a chronology. Okay, he wasn't the first to put together the chronology. All right, but again, he's an African. But then further down, you have others such as Wilkinson in the 18th Hundreds. You have Champollion. We need to know who these people are. What are their backgrounds? Okay, in relation to the subject in which they are studying. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the numbers. But again, Manethos, Dynasty One. Then it goes to Dynasty Six, Twelve, and Eighteen. All right. So Dynasty One, Manetho says it's 5700 BCE. All right. Now again, this is an African from that culture. Okay. From that culture. And then uh, Dynasty 6, 4300 BCE, Dynasty 12, 3400, and we have Dynasty 18, uh, 1700 BCE. Okay, now. Hmm? Yeah, the point. Okay, there you go. All right, so this is where Manetho is. Now, down here again, these are other scholars. Yes, these are Europeans. All right, so again, you have Wilkinson, 1836. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because in a, in a past discussion, our brother Nasi brought up that he believes that the first dynasty of ancient Kemet starts about 2000 BCE. This is an improbability. All right? No Egyptologist, no archaeologist in the world is going to agree with this. Nobody. But anyway, Wilkinson in 1836 is the closest person that might agree with him. Again, 1836, and he puts the first dynasty at 2320 BCE. All right. Now, obviously, that was dismissed. All right. Now, Jean Champollion in the 1830s, he put it at 58 to 57 BCE. All right. Again, this is closer to Manetho. All right. We're going to go down. Let's go down a little bit. Yep. I'm not going to go through all the numbers. All right. You have. Yep. Okay, here we have Flinders, uh, we have Petrie, you have Meyer. We're going to talk about Meyer because he's going to be very important. Okay, Meyer put the first dynasty at 3180 BCE. Now, again, when you go to most Egyptological books, um, the first dynasty is going to range between 3400 BCE and now 2900 BCE. And that's somewhere in that range, depending on who the author is and in that, in that background. All right, now Flinders Petrie, right? He put <clears throat> 5777 BCE, but he did that in 1894. Okay. All right. Of course, later on he modifies it down here in to 4553 BCE. Mind you, Flinders Petrie was an archaeologist, actually. So even though his he has he has different numbers here, he's going to be a little bit more objective than those who have uh, religious and financial incentives to fit their chronologies according to the biblical context, which we'll talk about in a second again. All right? So again, you all know who James Henry Breasted is, okay? Famous Egyptologist. 
He puts it at 3400 BCE. All right, picture again, he modifies it. You have a man named McNaughton, okay, in the early 1900s, 1929. He puts it at 5598, okay? Again, McNaughton, he starts to re-examine the data. So this is how it comes up his numbers, okay? And of course, he makes some modifications later. Now, a lot of people like to use um, EA Wallace Budge. Now, these last three are not are not in John G. Jackson's book, so that's the addition that I made. All right. Now, um, of course, there's some problems with Budge, but again, you put a 4400 BCE. Now, uh, Budge, he was a curator at the British Museum, so he had direct access uh, to the documents. Okay. Now he puts the uh, other dynasty, Dynasty Six, at 3266. Dynasty 12 at uh, 2466, and then Dynasty 18, 15, 33. However, in order to in order to come with these numbers in between, you you have to conflate, all right, or reduce the numbers of the Middle Kingdom and the and what's called the Second Intermediate Period. All right. So of course there's going to be some issues with that. And Robin Walker pointed out that um, one of our distinguished scholars, uh, Charles Finch. Um, did something similar. So Charles French actually has similar numbers. Okay, uh, even though Charles French does a much better job than say someone who's saying 3100 BCE. Okay, now here's an here's an African right here, Wabogo. Now Wabogo, uh, he does some recalculations and he comes up with 4378. Okay, um, and he reveals that in a publication by ASCAP. All right, now Robin Walker, another African. Okay. He puts 5660 BCE. Now, in my opinion, he has, at this point, he has one of the most plausible um, calculations. However, uh, we do have to contend with some of the works of uh, Eric Forno and other Egyptologists. Okay. All right, so let's go, go to the next slide here. Okay. All right. Come on. Okay. Man. All right. Now. Hold on. Hold on. One minute, so you don't get disturbed. Yeah. Let me get all that. Is it on pause? Yeah. I got on pause. I'm still live, sir, man. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, he it's good. all good. He's good. Oh, all right. Give me that chair back, man. Give me that chair. No, no, we need to put the coat on if you want. Okay. Okay. He's good. Oh, he's probably like. Peace, right. brother. Peace, brother. Yeah, brother. Yeah, Polite in the building with the honor of Ross. I mean, I, I kind of just got started. So you, All right, you cool, good. man. You I want to catch you fresh, Brother, man. Um, the Take dog up. killer. Hey, man. Hey, y'all know what right it is, man. I'm hey, I'm going to tell y'all before you get back. The only reason why I sit that KY is because we was two hours late with GOCC. I think they could have sabotaged it, man. Yeah, yeah, the internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They could have sabotaged it. We started two hours late because nobody couldn't get the uh, PowerPoint Jackie up. Day, so that's why y'all was present. able to get on. Now that I see their presentation, why didn't y'all want us to have the internet? We could have refuted that stuff in the park. Right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> like, like, off the head. Who would have needed the head. internet for them? Okay, All right, let's get back to the Yeah, we're ready. Okay. Well, let me make a comment about that. Um, about the mishaps from yesterday. Um, the way I see it, um, you know, whatever happens always has a purpose, okay? That's the law of the universe, okay? So, yeah, you know, Brother Sar, myself, you know, even I didn't get a chance to go in as much as you want to the end. Um, I know John didn't get a chance. But the way I see it is that um, had we given it, we wouldn't be here right now. Because perhaps the subject matter for which we're dealing with needs a wider audience, That's okay, right. Right. and a more in, and for a more intimate setting, so that you know we can have clarity of thought. So that's the way I've seen. Okay, I said, I said, all right, all right. So let's get back into this. All right, let's, hold on. All right. Good, brother. All right, got on there. Okay, now, Sheikh and Adia, the great ancestor scholar, okay, in the African Old Civilization, page one hundred five to one hundred six. He says this about the chronology: the official date adopted until now. For no special reason, waivers between 3100 and 3000. Okay, that would be BC, by the way. In actual fact, the choice of 3100 results from no necessity but that of synchronizing Egyptian and Mesopotamian chronology. Okay, in other words, what he's saying is that they are taking Mesopotamia, okay, which they purport is the uh, the mythical home of the Garden of Eden, okay? 
So as long as they can synchronize it together, they can validate themselves. Okay, let's keep going. The motivating idea is to succeed in explaining Egypt by Mesopotamia. That is, by Western Asia, the original habitat of Indo-Europeans. Okay? And we can also add in some, uh, some uh, Semitic people as well. So, again, he's telling you this is the motivation that they have before they even get there. And so far as the research and when they're putting these numbers together, they already have in their mind, I need to make sure that this lines up with the biblical narrative before we get there, so it's not objective, all right? The foregoing demonstrates that if we remain within the realm of authentic facts, we are forced to view Mesopotamia as a bel belatedly, some people might say, John, come lately, born daughter of Egypt. The relationships of proto-history do not necessarily imply the synchronization of history of two countries, okay? So in other words, all right, Kemet stands on its own, okay? Mesopotamia stands on its own, okay? So, you know, with the whole Kemet on trial thing, so, okay, well, what information do you have, archaeological, anthropological, that can stand on its own? What can you pull from the ground? What can we examine for ourselves from the ground? Where are the, mon where are the monuments? Where's the writing, etc.? Show us, demonstrate for us, without having to go outside to... You know, have it yes, stretch out a sense of validation, even though you do need other sources. However, what do you have directly? So, this is an issue. All right, now let's go into selected backgrounds. I'm gonna give you a quick background of Benito, then um, a man, uh, a bishop named Usher, then Meyer, Bressed, and Krauss. All right, background Benito, remember, third century priest of Sabinitos, which is in northern Kenneth. All right. He wrote a book called Egypticus, the histories of the dynasty. Okay, and, and it is a history of the dynasties as ordered by Ptolemy the first. Mind you, Ptolemy is a Greek who took political power. All right, after Alexander of Macedonia. Okay, I'm not going to call him the great because he's not great for us. Okay, so we have to understand that Ptolemy, the Greeks, took political control, not cultural control. So keep that in mind. Now. Here's a quote from a man named Sinicellus. Therefore, Manetho tells also of five Egyptian tribes which formed 30 dynasties, comprising those whom they call gods, demigods, spirits of the dead, and mortal men. Okay, and mind you, this work was written in Greek, and when Manetho was writing for the Greeks, he's writing in such a way that they can understand, okay? Because again, I'm not familiar with um, a term specifically that means that actually says demigod, like a half god in Egyptian language. Make that up you know, to address I mean, what you bring you know, it up. Again, I'm not sure, yeah. but again, yeah. um, it's a Greek. Um, I think what, they, what he means is by deified ancestors, yeah. maybe. I mean, it could mean like, again, for us, again, spirits of the dead, this is deified yeah, ancestors. Well, yeah, well. yeah, right here. But again, I'm, I'm talking yeah. about the word literally. But again, this is still our concepts, all right? But it, have God, have man, but that's what a different God is. Pretty much, yeah. So it's still, it's still legit. This is still legitimate, regardless. All right. So we have guys, them guys, except but again, he's writing this for the Greeks. All right. Let's keep going. Now, who is this man? James Usher, 17th century Irish bishop. This is uh, one of the primary proponents or men who put together the chronology for the Bible. He did some calculations. In the 17th century. He wrote a work called The Annals of the World in 1658. All right. Now, according to his calculations, the world, Genesis, was created the night, of course, you know, the night before, on Sunday, October 23rd, 4004 BCE. Okay. So his chrono chrono chronology goes from that point all the way to 70 AD. Okay. That's very important because, again, this provides us the motivating factor for later Europeans who are biblically centered and they're going into archaeology, anthropology, and Egyptology, and they have, they have things such as this, these paradigms like this as their motivating factor, okay? Because remember, Diab tells us that they're trying to synchronize Egyptian history with the history of Mesopotamia, all right? So let's keep going. 
Uh, let me also make this point. A lot of authors you'll see today who are heavy into Kemet, but they'll write books trying to find, say, Moses in mm -hmm. Egypt, yeah. you know, like, you know, these pharaohs, the Hebrew pharaohs, etc. They have this type of motivation behind them because, they're, again, trying to synchronize it because, again, they don't have records that can stand on its own. Let's keep moving. Okay. Now, who is this man? All right. In 1887, Professor Edward Meyer of the University of Berlin proposed the first dynasty state of 3180 BCE. Robert Walker put this in his book. Now, this is one of his books here. Uh, it's written in German. Okay. Let's keep moving. Uh -huh. Let me see. Uh, Egyptian Zur Zepzer Pyramina Birch. Yeah, German. Uh -huh. Now, this is James Henry Breasted. James Henry Breasted is an American um, Egyptologist, and he was a disciple of Meyer. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is very important because, again, Meyer, again, German, all right, and they have this biblical background. So um, he is the teacher of this man. Henry Breasted, and James Henry Breasted is the founder of what? The Oriental Institute of Chicago, all right? And the Oriental Institute of Chicago is one of the main centers that dispenses information on Kemet, okay? As far as so-called mainstream Egyptology, okay? You know, even in Cairo, they, uh, in a sense, submit to the ideals coming from this place, the Oriental Institute of Chicago, all right? Now, again, even though... There's a lot of good information and prominent information that comes out of it, but again, we have to understand the backgrounds. He puts the first dynasty again, 3400 BCE. All right. Now, this is, we're going to start getting into this whole, you know, the first dynasty starts at 2000 BCE, as our brother Nasi Yashavel claimed. Okay. Because again, you know, you have to examine all the data. Because when he came on the show, the Amara Squad show, I asked him, say, have you examined? Works such as the Tablet of Saqqara. Did you look at the world turn, uh, world Papus of Turin? Did you look at the Hall of Ancestors from the tomb of Sadie the First? All right. Have you read the book by Manetho? All right. Have you, have you, what, what have you examined that got, gave you the idea that it's 2000 BC? All right. His response was, well, many of the dynasties ran concurrently. We're going to answer that in, in this right here. Yeah. All right. Now, again, before we move on, I'm going to make the point that. I said, well, if all those dynasties ran together, why is it I can find, let's say, the end of the 12th dynasty, we have a queen, all right? And if I remember right, her name is Sepet Hotep, all right? And then she goes and marries a man from the north, okay, instead of someone directly from the bloodline, okay? And then another dynasty starts after that point. And then the priesthood of Amun, they start their own thing because they disagree with her marrying a man from the north. All right. So why is it that I can find a point, a start, an end point, and a starting point? All right. That's the demonstration. All right. Let's go back to this now, and this is going to address the date. <coughs> the calendar was introduced in the middle of the forty-third century BCE or forty-two, forty-one BCE. This is the oldest fixed date in history. This is what James Henry Bryson said. Again, this is going to uh, refute this whole two thousand BCE. All right. Let's keep going. Oh, wow. All right. Now, all right, now, this man, Rolf Krauss, now this is written, this is a book he writes in French, uh, Moïse Le Ferron, in other words, it means Moses the Pharaoh, all right, this is the French edition, in this <coughs> book is where he's claiming that the Pharaoh Amin Mise is Moses, okay, <laughs> so I heard that brought up, I'm not sure uh, who brought that up, Polite, but, um, Polite. Yes. All right. This is this man, Ralph Krauss. He brings that up in his book here. All right. So again, we have to understand where the sources are. All right. Again, he had a Christian background as well. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So this is just, this is where one of the places you can get that from. I'm not sure if they if they can read French, but again, he writes the book in French. All right. Now, R. Krauss also is one of the leading um, authorities. On the chronology of Kim. Okay. Now, again, not now I'm not saying that he's necessarily all correct, but again, 
as, as far as the latest dating, and he, he, uh, he was a contributor in a book edited by Eric Horno, the book called Ancient Egyptian Chronology. This? Yes. So he was a contributor. So this is where this comes from. He puts the first dynasty at 2900 BCE. Notice they keep scaling it back. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Okay. Now, mind you, the first person, as far as the priest, Manetho, put it together. He said 5700 BCE. Now, let's do a little history. We know who Napoleon Bonaparte is, right? Yeah. All right. Now, in the late 1890s, when Napoleon Bonaparte was spreading his um, empire, all right, he goes into Kemet, right? He brings in an army of so-called scholars with him. All right. We all know about who um, uh, the author of Ruins of the Empire. All right. So they go in there and they have this idea in their head that black men and women, Africans, Moors, whatever you want to call them, doesn't really matter. Okay, are beneath them. <laughs> that we are subservient. All right. So they're going into Kemet with this whole idea of you know what James Henry Bresson might will call later on the Great White Race. Okay. Bresson said that. Yes. Yeah, yes. Nazi he need you that yeah. bullshit. All right. <laughs> that all North <laughs> Africans <laughs> are part of the Great White Race and that they are dark skinned Caucasians. All right. So again, still. Yeah. Uh, you have, get in yeah, oh, you have to understand the background and the motivation behind these theories That's and who these people right. are. All right. Yeah. Um, so again, Napoleon Bonaparte goes into uh <laughs> Kemet and they are in for a psychological shock. I don't mean just like an individual, oh, snap. I'm talking about this is a collective shock because in their heads, we're nothing but niggers, okay? Property to be owned. Because remember, this is the late 1700s. What um, politi social, political, and economic state were we in, okay, around the world, especially here in America, even in Europe? Now, of course, some of our moors may disagree, but okay, you know, some of y'all may have been free, but watch this, some of you, okay? <laughs> That's like, you know, one Negro says, yeah, um, I'm, the first, I'm, the, I'm the only black person in my university, all right? Isn't that great? Or I'm the only free one around here, all right? No, you are only as great or you cannot rise higher than the status of your race, okay? So, yeah, a couple of y'all might have it, but, again, your respect is going to come from the group. Your power comes from the group base, all right? Let's keep going. <clears throat> now... Um, what's the guy the author? Cal Boney. Cal Boney. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was an empire. He said he was black, right? Yeah, he said he was black. The, the men that who today we call our slaves yeah, and the object of our scorn. And they're looking at the, the Sphinx and the, other, and the other monuments. So, again, this is a psychological shock. Here's the problem. If they believe, this is critical, if they believe that the world begins at Genesis, or to give, my, give our brothers the respect, the better sheep. Okay, at the head. That's not even the enemy at the head of. Um, that, we can come back to that. Yeah, head is always used as a metaphor. Yeah, beginning. as the beginning. Better sheep. Yep. Okay. So, if the world starts at four thousand and four BCE at nine o'clock in the morning, <laughs> in July, <I'm> okay, <laughs> then <laughs> it's a problem when you put a chronology together that says that the first dynasty of these niggers. Because again, that's the back in the 1700s. This is the term that they're using when they're writing. Okay, ex books of a nigger king. You know, you have books like that. This is what they're saying. You can't have rulership, kingship, okay, authority of niggers. Again, according to um, the European mindset, ruling and starting <laughs> at what 5700 BCE that predates your beginning of the world at 4004. BCE at 9 o'clock in the morning. Right. So it becomes a problem. <laughs> so now, this will be one of the motivating factors about why they keep scaling scaling the chronology back. Okay? All right, here's other problems and issues. Omission of kings from the list and conflation. All right? Now, when you, when you actually go into some of the raw data of when Egyptologists, like uh, Petrie, um, Budge and others, they're writing down, especially the early dynasties, like the first dynasty, second dynasty. The issue that they always come across is that they have names of kings that they don't know exactly who they are, but they know, okay, these are first dynasty kings. However, I don't know exactly where they go. So you're going to have these names of kings 
who they just omit out of default, okay? So then they give you this list, but you know, you're gonna have 10, maybe 20 other names that they didn't, that you can't account for, all right? So this is one of the ways that they can conflate or shorten the list, okay? Now then we're gonna look at the tablet of, of King Jer from the first dynasty. We're gonna look at the, the Dera Zodiac. We're gonna have a nice little lesson right there because we're gonna show you how you are going to look at and judge the monuments of Kemet that's gonna help you to judge when the first dynasty starts. I'm gonna take a quick look at the Tassetian incense burner. You might say the Nubian incense burner. <laughs> then we're gonna look at the palette of Nara. All right. All right. So omission of what's up? Jay, let me ask you a question. Go for it. What, what, uh, Put the mics on. Yeah. Um I'm looking at this detail that uh uh you present, right? And I'm just trying to figure out like we said, we said that the debate don't really start to the day after. And we can really critique everything, you know what I'm saying? So we can really see how, you know, what's being exposed, man. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. So you absolutely right. Things happen, you know what I mean, for a reason, yo. But I'm trying to figure out what level are they going to try to use, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to combat that. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? They had the Burger King Power Rangers outfits on. I wouldn't <laughs> let you know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nazi. I was telling you, Nazi, bro, yo. Yo had the, the red, he was the red Power Rangers. Who's the best? <laughs> Damn, who's the best? Who's the best? Nazi was doing his thing. He came with the energy. I like his energy. You know what I'm saying? The Power Rangers, yo. You got the Burger King thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you get it in. Hey, yo, oh. but hold up. Let me, let me tell him, man. Yeah. Yo, man, we gotta stop trying to clown our brothers because of because of their uniform. That's what they. That's what they wear. Yeah, ain't no uniform. But let me tell you. Yes, it is. Just no, that. No, 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 listen, let me finish. Let me finish. Because this is what they, you know, their belief is. They wear them type of uniforms. We can say the same thing about the comedic people because look at how. Hold up, they wear uniforms as well. Oh. If you look at the African Day Parade. You'll see how people That's come out. Community. You'll see how they come out with the with the uh with um arm and, scholars? and stuff like that. So Those anybody who don't really understand, yeah. they can still make fun of them too. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But this and is I give you that. You, we, can look up, we can look at scroll. Tell them start making up homosexual accusations. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, he ain't talking about that. Talk that. Talk That's talk something different. Hold on, hold on. Are you going to use non-scholars? Non-scholars, non, non the, 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 What you're wearing as a scholar suggests that this is what they was doing in times of antiquity. Right. That's, that's what we're talking about. Like, right. they did that at, back yeah, in the days. Y'all yeah. yeah. making that, that shit up. That was my point earlier. Right. Okay. Yeah. That with, I the mean, yeah. with, with the college and people, um, you have a living tradition. You can see their outfits. You can <laughs> see their jewelry. Yep. It's a continuous, unbroken chain. And, and and what they wear, like he has photos in the in the text, you know, of what the ancient Egyptians are wearing. Not, and um <laughs> yeah. give him a mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's said it again. Uh, reset it's not gonna be picked up. Uh, 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 what I was saying is that, you know, to your point, this is why I bring up the collagen people. Because the collagen people, they have an unbroken chain in terms of their, their genealogy back to ancient Egypt. They know exactly the, the primary place of their community. We call it Jeddu, but they call it Toh. That's, the that's how they pronounce the. That's how they pronounce the word Toh, and what we would consider uh, the northern part of, of Egypt, but was their south. And so you can see the 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 outfits that they wore, and then in their di indigenous communities, that's what they wear. And so we we can we can compare the jewelry, headdress, all of that, um, and two, and we have photos and paintings of them in the eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds that verifies. You know these particular connections, but you don't find any. Again, you don't find any Hebrew Israelite community that's from the the times of ancient Israel to now that have been living their traditional ways, speaking their traditional language, doing their traditional customs that we can go verify. So when we see the outfits that they have on, we know for a fact they weren't wearing them in, in the fashion that they were wearing them. You know, saying in those days, these are new modern renditions. You know, and conceptualizations of their belief of an ancient, you know, because they have no monuments, they have no artwork to right. tell them exactly what the stuff looked like. So they have to imagine in their head what it probably looked like, and then from there construct something from their imagination. Whereas we don't have to do that. We can look on the wall and say, "That's okay," that's right, right. and this, this, we can cut it this way, <laughs> and right, 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 right. <laughs> we can see exactly, you know, what it is right. because they left their artwork. Right. And so, you know, that's that's just the point I want to make. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you, are you 
are you saying there's no Israelite artwork? Because I know you said artwork. No, you have to. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to say. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, that's definitely a great point. Um, again, you know, the way I see it, you can, that's the way they want to dress. You know what I'm saying? Then that's the way they want to dress them. So, you know, our brothers. No doubt. Hey, you know. In the Power Rangers, though, that's all I'm saying. I mean, hey. <laughs> I'm not gonna call Power Rangers. I'll let you call. Them, but yeah, don't call them, man. You know, I'm just gonna I don't respect my brothers. <laughs> right, right. I, you know, <laughs> you, even though I disagree with the information, with um, the, the level of scholarship, you know, um, the brothers came with some energy, strong black man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he did come down. All right. Yeah. So look, yeah. omission. I love how they broke down that dude. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was nice. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, right. Left? Six minutes, W fresh year <laughs> Okay. All right. Now this this is about the um, our discussion with uh, not Shasha Bell, with the simultaneous dynasties. Now, one obvious problem with using the simultaneous dynasty argument to compress the chronology is that it flatly contradicts the research of Herodotus and Manetho. Mind you, Herodotus, Herodotus and Manetho were first hand witnesses. They actually into um, interacted uh, with the priest and actually consulted them, all right, and asking them questions, all right. Um, and Manetho himself was a priest. Two are our most important ancient authorities. According to Herodotus, quote, thus far I have spoken on the authority of the Egyptians and their priests. They declared that from their first king to this last mentioned monarch, the priest of Vulcan, i.e. Ptah, all right, was a period of 300 and 41 generations. Such, at least, they say, was the number both of their kings and of their high priests during this interval. In other words, for every king you have, you're going to have a high priest, okay? In the, in the uh, New Kingdom, as they say, in the, in the 1800, in the 18th dynasty, 19th dynasty, they'll call it, say, the uh, first priest of Ammon, or first prophet of Ammon. That's the name of that office, okay? And you have to be trained for it, all right? Now, Simulta not, this is not simultaneous. This is, comes from the Hall of Ancestors in the Temple of Seti, the first 19th dynasty. All right, this here is uh, Seti, the king, 19th dynasty, showing, and again, see his hand right here? So he's showing his son, um, Usamat, Ras the Temple, Rav, Ramesh, and Ram, all right, or Ramesses II. All right, showing him, these are your ancestors, okay? Mm. This is not simultaneous. Mm. This is primary documentation, mm. all right? So where are you getting the simultaneous, um, oh, uh, you know, claim from? Did you examine the documents themselves? Is that That's the question. That, that Nazi? Okay, hold on, oh, hold on. Man. Next, here's a closer up. So, so, <laughs> all right, inside the circle you see uh, the shinwa, which means to a circle. It's not a cartouche. All right, cartouche is French for cart. Technically, it's a word for king. Okay. It's just paradigm. The, what, the, talk about the word shinwa. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, I'm saying, say oh, Henny in, in Ghana, or, yeah, or Benny in Yoruba, yeah. or Hogar, so it's actually a word for Hogar. Oh, okay, <laughs> and you're saying that the shin, the shin. yeah, the yeah. Shin, well, this shin is just paranoid, they yeah, use the shinu, but it's a word for king, right? So you encircle it here, so it's yeah. king, da -da 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 -da. king, da -da -da. that's like king, instead of shinu in the circle, yes, exactly. So so again, this this is not simultaneous. Did did any of you examine this? And you have to do that. Even if you're a Hebrew, that's okay. Still do accurate information. Because again, we're all black folks. This my, to my brothers, this is still your history. That's right. This is your history too. Now again, you may use the biblical narrative and say, you know, the Egyptians are evil or whatever, but mind you, this is still black history. Do not allow people with uh who do not have our best interests at heart yes. judge. I have a final word in our history. That's right. Okay. Even, even with the Israel, uh, Israelite history. All right. Do the research, find out exactly what's there, and then demonstrate that. Mm. Okay. And don't let anybody come in and put false information on, Is on, on the whole Israel. But use primary documentation, anthropology, and archaeology, just like we do. That's right. Okay. That's right. So this is primary. We got a hundred. Okay, keep going. We got 188 people watching live, y'all. All right. Okay. Now let's continue. This is what Herodotus says. Now, quote: The priests offered Herodotus visual evidence to this to sign Herodotus once more. They led me into the sanctuary. Pay attention. Which is pay attention. A, pay attention. Listen. They led me into the chamber. I want you to visualize this. 
So you can walk them in there, which is a spacious chamber. All right, so it's very wide. And showed me a multitude of colossal statues in wood, which they counted up. All right, so again, visualize this. They're saying this is boom, one, boom, two, boom, three. All right, and found to amount to the exact number they had said. The custom being for every uh, priest during his lifetime to set up his statue in the temple. As they showed me the figures and reckoned them up, in other words, counted, they assured me that each was the son, the one preceding him. And his, they repeated throughout the whole line. All right? That's not simultaneous. Okay? That's one after the other. All right? Again, this is I would this is I would so what do you mean by simultaneous? In other, words, in, other words, in other words, dynasties, oh, for example, you know, you words. put them side by side, ruling at the same time. That way you can say, well, I, I, say, I can okay. get it down to 2000 oh, BC. It's man. a simple. Oh, right. Anyway, I don't think that's his research oh, anyway. Yeah, it's it's All right, now, conflating the dynasties. Okay, this is Mena. Mena. Now, you can say Menes. All right. Mena founded the temple up atop in the first dynasty. As we have seen, 5,000 uh, years later, the priests of that inst institution were able to show Herodotus proof of 341 uninterrupted generations of priests who had presided there. This eloquently refutes the notion held by Meyer, remember that guy, that one can compress Egyptian history by claiming simultaneous dynasties. This is by Robin Walker. Okay? Let's keep going. What's the sound of the studio? All right. Now, this here is a primary documentation. Again, this is a tablet of Jer, one of the kings of the first dynasty. You get this from the University College of London. All right. This here is a reproduction. All right. This here is a partial. This is a reproduction here, coming from Sir Fundus William Petrie's book. All right. Um, volume one of Egyptian history. Now here you see the name Jer. Again, the hawk here. It means this, this right here. This is a what's called a serek. Okay. Now. It's a, it's a hieroglyphic model of a temple. Now, the word serek, all right, it means king because you find it in, in modern Hausa as sereki, all right? They speak this right now, sereki, and it means king. So, essentially, you're saying King Jer, all right? You go up here, it's Jer, King Jer, all right? In fact, this uh, temple, uh, uh, hieroglyphic rendition, you find in Saqqara right next to the step pyramid. So if you type in Saqqara, step pyramid, look at the temple right next to it, it's going to look exactly like this. All right, now, I'm, I want to put your attention to this right here. This here is a, is a bull, as you can see. This is the rising of, uh, this is the sun here, with Sopta. Now, Sopta, or Spadet, is a Surah star, rising together, okay? Now, if the earliest count, the earliest calendar date is based <coughs> off of this, the earliest time that you can get the rising of Septa um, as recorded, mm -hmm. all right, about 4200 BCE, all right. So again, if this king, listen up, if this king was able to record the rising of Septa during mm -hmm. his lifetime, wow. okay, then it stands the reason. All right, it stands the reason that sir, this is not 3000 BCE because then, <laughs> the, <laughs> you have 40, about 4200 BCE. That's the rising. Then the next one after that is 2700 BCE. Mm. Wow. Let me say it again. 2700 BC is the next time that occurs. Mm -hmm. So, if this king on the primary document, wow. okay, and again, and I want to recognize that this is a reproduction right here. If he's recording the rising of the super star with the sun, then he's done during his lifetime. It has to be 4200 BC or prior to that. That's right. Okay? Because any or no, fifty-seven hundred. Okay, or that, that's or, many, or, or, or exactly that's exactly okay. What was, that's, exactly okay. That that's what the priest Manetho was saying. All what right, let's so. keep going. That's all right. Now, hold on. He's like the Sabbath of the Twelve, right? Twelve o'clock now. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. All right. The age of the age of Gemini. Taurus. All right. Now listen up. Um. The age of Gemini is from 6,000 to 4,000 BC. I'm not going to go through all of this here. All right? That's the age of Gemini. All right? Now, age of Taurus, 4,000 to 2,000 BCE. Keep that in mind. Let's keep going. Okay, now, the this is Dendera, the sky map. It's from the Temple of Het Haru. All right? Now, this is the primary documentation here. 
These are all the constellations and different stars in the deacons. This is reproduction. Now, if you look here, all right, so see this right here? That is King Mena, or a so-called pharaoh on this suit. Right in front of him, right here, this is a bull. Right behind him, right here, is the age of the twins. Age of the twins, age of the bull. Look where he's situated. So we're looking at primary docu documents on the mind so you can learn how to look at it. They're telling you that he ruled during the time when you, we, we were about to enter into the age of the bull, and we were leaving the age of the twins. The Egyptians are telling you when the first dynasty occurred. Mm -hmm. All right, if you're saying 3000 BCE, then he would be closer right here. Wow. But why is he right here? Right again, right at before uh, he starts. Let's keep going. The great bull. That's All right, great. now look up now the normal powers. What's up here? What are they telling you? You have the bull at the top. This, this is during the age of Taurus. All right, we're not going to analyze all the descriptions on the inside. But again, you see the hedge crown. Um, and then you see the red crown here. All right. So again, he's taking, he's in this suit, bitty. I never right? noticed that. Hey, I say that tablet a lot of times. I yeah. noticed the balls up there. Yeah. The top. Right balls up top. All right. Symbolizing the Taurus. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's time to go into a full analysis. You hang with the Hebrews too much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I see. All right. All right. Oh, All right. Man. Let me get through the whole thing. Hold on. All right. Now, Tasseti Kustu, this is uh, uh, about 300 years before the first night. So I'm not going to go into that. This here is the stone palette um, of the Palermo stone. You have to examine this. All right. Let's keep going. All right. Palermo stone. Um, this would be uh, McNaughton. He, he got astrological. Oh, that suggests, man. I suggest YouTube or something else sign it and come back. I'm telling you right now, this here is better for us than trying to put it out to them. I'm serious. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to receive this, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, 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 yeah. got a book that it hypnotizes us. You mm -hmm. got to say what I'm saying? They still under hypnosis. Yeah. Nah, they're they're not they're receive this. All right. Let me get through this. Let me get through this. All right. Let me get through this. Now, listen. You have to examine. If you're going to. All right. Listen. If you're going to make claims about the chronology, you have to examine. These types of documents yeah. in detail. So Again, this is term papyrus. You have to examine this. Let's keep going. All right, now, these are some other points oh, that's um, it. that I was ready for yesterday. I this one, decorations of innocence. For, this is the papyrus of Mahurpuri. Now, Mahurpuri was a uh, Nubian prince under Amenhotep II on 18 died. So he says here, um, I have not lain with man. This is this is direct, says. Yeah, black book, okay, man. let's keep going. <laughs> All right, this is on the wellness of God. I'm not going to read the whole thing. You, you know the biblical references here. And so, ton, oh, so God without equal, self made you fashion your body, created, uncreated. Now, mind you, created, uncreated is uh, the Greeks later on say the unmoved mover later on. All right, let's keep going. Make up every land, created whatsoever. Let's what keep going. All right, too. you have it in the Quran. All right, this uh, on the side here we have from Muhammad. All right, then we have, oh, how many are there things that you made? They're hidden from the face of you, one God. You already have that. Let's keep going. These are, these are, I'm not going to read them all, so um, y'all can read them later. This is about the Soga on the Papyrus of Ani, okay? I took that picture myself of the Papyrus, okay? Now, you was up in there? No, See, no, 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 I have a fat simile, so I just took that one on. Oh, oh okay. Papyrus of Ani, just yeah. crazy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now, uh, quick point, the word, now, you brought this up, making fun, saying, you know, the one guy, who's the one guy? Because everybody got this um, right. title. Well, now, now listen, up. the one guy is a title, okay? Right. It is a title. They took a literal and, and did some reduction. Exactly. Okay, just like just like King of the United States, the first lady, the first lady. We don't think that she's the first lady who ever lived. Right. It is a title. It is a position. Right. Okay. So when you say the God, the one God, this is a title. Okay. Let's keep going. All right. All right. So here's on morals and ethics. They were saying that hey, you know, where are y'all morals and ethics at? All right. Here you go. Labe for your for your mother and father who are resting in the valley. That's what instructions are on it. Keep going. Serve your father and mother that they may go and prop that you may go and prosper. That's from that's from Shishak. This predates Exodus 20. Out your mother and your father. Let's keep going. Okay. All right. These are words for to teach. I'm not gonna go into it. The installation of the vizier Rek Mire from his tomb in Waset. They say thieves. Do not judge unfairly. God arbors uh, partiality. All right. Let's kick down. Regard one you know like. The one you don't know. All right. In other words, you know, treat everybody equal. This is equality. All right. One near you, like the one far from you. 
All right, let's keep going. Do not enter the house of anyone until he admits you and greets you. Do not snoop around the house. They're giving you instructions on what to do here. This is from uh, the instructions of Ani. All right, let's keep going. The instruction of Amin Mopet. He says this, beginning of the teaching for life, the instructions for well-being. Every rule for relations with elders, for conduct towards magistrates, knowing how to answer one who speaks, to reply to one who sends a message, so as to direct him on the path of life, to make him prosper upon earth, to let his heart enter his shrine, steering clear of evil, to save him from the mouth of strangers, to let him be praised in the mouth of the people, made by the overseer of the fields, experienced in his office. This is the title, by the way. Let's keep going. Better is a bushel given to you by God than 5,000 for wrongdoing. That's chapter 6. Um, do not sever your heart from your tongue. In other words, uh, what's in your heart should be, you know, the same as what's in your mind and what comes out your, out your, out your mouth. Of course, you know, we're all guilty of, you know, not having that uh, at some point in time. And that's what, okay. in the Bible, going. Paul says yeah. it's not what goes into your mouth, but it's what comes out of the mouth. Exactly. Right, so, right. You know, all right. Back do not enter your belly to everyone. All right, and just and thus destroy respect you. Broadcast not uh, your words to others. No join with one who bears his heart. Okay, better is one whose speech is in his belly than he who tells it to his cause. In other words, just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean you got to blurt out. Let's keep going. <laughs> Do not pounce on the widow when you find her in the fields. All right, don't take it like again. Don't you, you don't see her with a man, so don't go run after. Do not refuse, do not refuse your oil jar to a stranger. Or doesn't that sound like uh, Abraham when the angel came down? Said, hey, you know, break a bread, he's a stranger, etc. That's right. God prefers him who honors the poor to him and who worships the wealthy. That's chapter 28. Do not revive one older than you. In other words, respect your elders. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that it? Yes. Okay. All right. All right. So that's that's it for my brother right there. What we want to do now is just have a nice sit down um right, discussion right, from the brothers with the brothers. Turn that over there. See that button? I can't present that. Yeah, 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 of course. I gotta kill this. This shit, right? Yeah. I'm gonna go five. I need to make my loss. I'm gonna go five. 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 Yeah, that shit will be nice. So what we're about to do, just a little round turn? Yeah. All right. Yeah, let me say this to uh to my brother Polite. And I agree with Unc, too. Unc, yeah. Unc said, man, Polite going to have to stop that shit. That shit got me hyped when he was up in that damn plane. <laughs> and he showed that. I mean, I think that was one of the hottest spots for <laughs> me. I like when you went and you sold it the way you sat with Dr. Ben and he gave you blessings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was powerful. I like that. Let's talk about that a little bit and pass it around. Yeah, uh, in previous on previous occasions, if, so, if the mic cuts, a lot of times the, the it's like brothers say that was your Howard shy and everything like that. <laughs> but when they, when they make their accusations against Kemet, they say things that is like amazing set way for us to verify facts. And I'm like, as much as accusations as they've been making, they make the type of accusations we actually embrace. We actually want. It. So. Uh, when Lex did that interview saying that he loves what he likes about Dr. Ben, and this is what I'm saying about being disingenuous. Uh, and I do I do respect Brother Lex I. What I don't like that other people do is when they accredit our scholars for saying things that they believe might contradict what we're trying to do or pull off. Because then in doing so, you're not really commending our scholar. You're actually ridiculing. Mm -hmm. So he's using... And anytime they use our teachers, they're never using them to make citations that they agree with. They use our teachers to make citations against us. And they undermine or circumvent what that teacher has done. So when Lex Zion said, one thing that I do commend Dr. Ben for, when he said, one thing I do commend Dr. Ben for, I'm like, you don't have the right to say one thing. Right. And the one thing you do commend Dr. Ben for is saying that, uh, he doesn't want us to have Egypt in our mind mentally, but more rather he would have us go to the field and get the work. That's understood, but that doesn't exempt anybody from still doing research from wherever they are or getting facsimiles of the same. 
So for him to do that, that was showing that he was more at grievance with the people that he was supposed to debate as opposed to being conformity with the spirituality that he says he bears witness to. So when I seen that, I was about to say, not only that, you remember this, you know, talking about that, um, that, you know, nobody's doing nothing in Africa in the African Pacific community. Dr. Ben has adopted yeah, a village over there in Nubia. The village has been supporting them since the 30s. And so, you know, who do they have on that same scale? It's like they don't know. You know, but you missed it earlier, but it's a, it's a, it's a word in the Egyptian, which means ignorant. And they, it's a word, Hemu, it says, uh, those who are ignorant of Egypt. And so uh, uh, I now renamed the Hebrews the Hamites, those who are ignorant of Egypt. And this shows that's you know, every right. single you know, uh, oh, go around that. just how ignorant of Egypt they is. And we keep overturning their assumptions. But I'm sorry. No doubt. Yeah, and the thing was, amongst many places I went to, I went to the village yeah. that Dr. Ben erected over there. And if you say Dr. Ben's name over there, and I got it on videotape, the wow. Nubians go in. <laughs> I went there. I went to Elephantine Island. I start off in Cairo, and when I was in, oh yeah, I started off in Cairo. I'm a cameraman. <laughs> and when I went to Cairo, while in Cairo, I went to Old Cairo. While in Cairo, I went to Giza. I went to Saqqara, and I also went to Memphis. Oh, this is it. Then from that trip, I went down. To Luxor, and from Luxor I went to Karnak, and from Karnak I went down the Nile River Valley to Aswan. From being there in Nubia, Elephantine was just right next door. Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm sorry, we got um, we got um, part of the Amaran Free team leaving because they busted leaving. Man, uh, that's so Jenny, right. um, yeah, I was hoping to have more time with y'all brothers. Word up. Yeah, These yeah, two yeah. brothers here is leaving. Um, give a shout out. I didn't even know they were so close, man. Let them know you out. You got to bust it up and do something being so close, man. You in Philly? Yeah, you in Philly. Man, that shit never happened. Let the people know you're out. You're out. Let them know. Yeah, we... We're out. Uh, he can speak for himself. He's like, we're we're out. Out. We saw him. 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 Me and my son at the TV, even in with my brothers at the Amara Squad. The Amara Squad is all over the globe right now. They all over. Pause in Philly, California, Atlanta. Y'all spread out. So we 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 are a research collective, and this is this is how we do on the regular. All right, that brother said Jenny Cole. All right. All right, uh, shout out to Side Level TV. Um, you know, so Jenny, you know, I really enjoyed my time here, you know what I'm saying, on the couch. All mm -hmm. right, what's up with my brothers? Thank you, uh, Son Nutter, for giving us the opportunity, you know, to do a little presentation, yes, have a conversation. You know, we look forward to doing that again. Um, again, I'm Ross Squad, Magi, um, you know, uh, his institute here. You know, again, we research, and it's about critical thinking. Translating, right? you know, here, you know, we translate text. We read it, try to get an understanding of it, do be a, be as objective on one end, but you can't be totally objective because we're, we're using an African centered perspective. Okay. okay. So again, you know, we, we really want to put out the research and be better examples of this is what scholarship looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not about about hollering, him and hawing, getting angry and all kinds of stuff. Right. When you take all that out, when you take all that out, when you take out all, all the theatrics and jump on those stage left. and all that, right. when you take that away. What do you have left? Of substance. Wait, hold on. All right, let's go. Yeah, they ready. They ready. The black man is God. Hey, <laughs> give me that. All right, hey, now, now sorry, we are still here. We got we got the bad guy, and we got the God killer. But hold on, hold on. I want polite to finish what he was nah, gonna say. Nah, nah, let me hold on. Give me that. I want polite to finish. He gonna finish. Give me that. I had some very help with all that. We brought this back right here, Mike. The red, black, and the damn green. I forgot to bring that. That's that. Oh shit. We brought that back. Thanks, man. I think that was a hell of a goddamn. Uh, what, what you think, Smash? I think that was a hell of a goddamn. Uh, I think uh, when I was at the Brooklyn Ball, it was sold out. Way more people than that. 
I was rapping, so y'all need to get it up. Y'all got to come out and <laughs> <laughs> shoot. I was mad at them shoes right there. Hey, why y'all hating on my boy getting his? Let me ask that. Why y'all hating? I thought I was there at all. Hey, they did a presentation about my family member shoes, man. You know you ain't got no scholarships if you made a PowerPoint about my man's shoes. 60 grand was made. Shit, I wish it was. All right, but let's dig in. Come on, let's get it. Let's get it in. Whenever y'all ready, we're about to get in. Did they bring a PowerPoint about some shoes? Let me ask this question. Let me ask this question. Word up. Do they have Hebrew factories? that actually take the plant, the cotton from the earth and produce the stitching to make their own clothes? Or did they buy their shit like everybody else did? They bought it like everybody else Okay, they bought it. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right, let, me, let me tear them off a little something. This is one of the things y'all been looking for. And this is actually out of a book by Lesko, or Leonard Lesko, called Pharaoh's Workers. Because y'all all, well, a lot of the Hebrews like to act like they was, you know, that was the Pharaoh's record. But let's break it down how it really went down. If you ever been in California, you ever seen the day laborers? There's a spot on the corner where you can go stand in order to get work in the morning. You see what I'm saying? And they, uh, a lot of uh, people who might not can find work, specifically a lot of Mexican immigrants, and you know, some of our Mexican brothers, they do day labor. You can stand at spots and pick up a job. But we finally realized it was like that in Dier El Medina, where a lot of people would come yeah, in stop. to Kemet yeah, looking no. for work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? See, and uh You wrong, stupid. And basically we find work as a, a tool work or whatever. Like, but here's yeah, the deal. Loud, get him, Whoa, hold on, wait, wait. Go back then. No, oh. so. Yeah, they would find work as a tool worker. <laughs> That's See, two that's words. Like, like the Mexicans coming. Yeah, just like day labor. That's what we call it in California. Wow. But here goes mm -hmm. something that y'all should know now. These people were afforded right. tools, houses. You know what I'm saying? They had everything. So anybody who tried to portray the workers or the Pharaoh's workers as, I just want to go off the head for a minute and get the book. Anybody want to portray the Pharaoh's workers or slaves or anything that's just not looking at any primary text. But here goes something that we do. When we start talking about the tales of Horace and Set and all the uh, deviants yeah. and all the stuff, what we finally learn is a lot of these stories are foreign injections. I mean, and I, I can prove it. And but like, I, I will give them some information that nobody gave them since they always talk about yeah, the contingents of Horace and Set. They need to look this up and find out that the contingents of Horace and Set was found in the. Come on, shit, nigga. I know we're in New York. <laughs> what the fuck is going on, Sarnetta? Horace and Set was found in Dierra El Medina, and that was a Canaanite city. It was actually found in a guy named uh, Niakis, uh I got his name right here in the book, but in Niakis, uh tool. Okay, so this was like a Canaanite text. They found it in... Uh, in the yeah, so, yeah. DML Medina. It's Wait, called, listen, my, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, something my guy. Uh, you said uh, John or Gabar, what's the name of the person? I know that's the Arabic name. Okay, but so, see, so this is why I want to read a few sources for a few things that people have seen and have never seen before. This, so that's actually, so that's where that papyrus comes from. That is where that papyri come from, the village workers. The village workers, the village workers in Dier El Medina. And they was Canaanites, majority. A lot, it was a few Nubians too, but like I said, they were coming to Kemet looking for work as day laborers. I can read it straight from the book. I can take y'all to the primary, but I want to read something else as a reference to homosexual behavior and us not having laws against that. I quoted Tarim Papyrus, Oh, one twenty point six, where it reads, and we can even find it in this book, the Pharaoh's Workers, where it reads, "There is even death of a man who acts as a woman, and vice versa." Yeah, like it said, which looks like a reference to homosexual like behavior. And you, this is not the primary. The primary again, because you got to check the primary uh -huh. before you put out some work on a book site. It's the Tarim Papyrus. 120.6. So when they act like we didn't have these real life functional laws, again, let me read it. Death of a man right, right who now. acts as a woman. So y'all just be tripping. Now let me tell y'all something. What nature is that? What nature is that? Pardon me? All right, what nature is that? Right now. Uh, this is actually let me Osiris now, now. giving out these commands. Osar, Wusair. So we know him as Wusair, you know what I'm saying? 
just uh, another great ancestor. But like you said, the nature was Osar, Osiris, or Osir putting this out. So acting like this was not decreed. Not decreed, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like it was not decreed. I can even show you court yeah. cases. Give me one minute, Scott. Yeah. Oh, let me just get this real quick. Okay. All right, go ahead, y'all. I can even show you court cases and a few other things that uh, by the way, just what we said. But dealing with that, that is a document I want all of y'all to read. It's called the Jew, a typhoonian. Please, it's really called Contra Ed Beyond. Josephus Contra Ed Beyond, but there's a good chapter in there called the Jew, a typhoonian. It's such a strong chapter that you can just Google the Jew, a typhoonian, and you'll find out that the, everything that's set in body, this is why I didn't want to tear y'all off like that. Everything that's set in, in body was actually a personification of you or the Hebrew. And Kim, I can prove that 100%. You need to research the riots of Alexandria around 38 CE, and we'll find out they called uh, Jews and Greeks Zono Feroni. Zono, why don't you look up Zono Feroni? Z O N O P H O uh, R O I. So Zono Feroni. Fero and you'll find out they was called girdle wearers. That was called evil. That was evil daughter wearers. And there was an oracle called the Potter's Oracle against the Typhoonians or the Setians or the uh, Zonoferoni or the girdle wearers who was doing all this wicked stuff in Kemet. Now, what are we going to do so about that? <laughs> yeah, for real. Because y'all been sitting around all this time asking us to explain who is a set. And we were like, no, nah, we don't want to do that. Let's see, a lot of this is high science that it don't even require us to reveal a lot of this history just at your demand. But you keep beating on that door. Now you find out the story was about you. <laughs> the story was about you. There's no getting away from it. The Jew, a Typhoonian, is the document you want to read. And primarily, any Hebrew who cites Manitho, I said this from the gate. I told General Rahana, you don't know what you're doing by citing Manitho. Manitho said clearly the Jews start as defiled Egyptians and they got sent to a city called Avaris because they got outcasted and there was only them and lepers there. These are his words. So I'll be like, why y'all using Manitho? Because you ain't using Manitho, you using Josephus' refugiations of Manitho, but you only using his histories book. Go get his other book, Contra Apion, where he going against Apion. See, Apion is the one who stood on Manitho's translation, was like, oh, they all lepers. So he reiterated it. So Joe, the document I'm sharing with you is actually called The Jew of Typhoonian and Josephus' Strategy at Refutation. Let me, ask, let me ask my brother Uncle a question. You call yourself the God Killer, the Black Atheist. Right, real black atheist. But I didn't see you kill no God yesterday, brother. Mm. I didn't see mm. you. He said, give me that, give me that. <laughs> he tried to I didn't see you kill God. no God, brother. What's up with that, man? Maybe you could kill God right now with the Black Atheist. Yeah. Well, goddamn light and this super duper presentation. <laughs> nigga ain't had no damn time to do nothing. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> He's in a damn zone. What the fuck we gonna do? Then, then the information yeah. about the homosexuality was very important. Oh, see, we're not selfish right here. We're not selfish right yeah, here in this yeah, group, yeah. man. You know I mean, he out. had he knocked them niggas out the first round, right? He come with the pediation of homosexuality. Yo, I just had enough time to smack them up. You know, they was already knocked yeah, out. You know how you walk yeah. by and kick them? You get next. You know, <laughs> that was my job. You know what I'm saying? That's what I did. So they was already smashed up, man. Yeah, and so when I'm talking about killing God, I'm talking about the idea and concept that's presented by the Indo-Europeans. Semitic races. Uh, I'm not uh, talking about the original religion. Sure. Okay, I'm not talking about the origin of the word God goes back to the imminent uh, permanation of forces out of the burial mound. Mm -hmm. Look it up. Look up the origin of the word God. It goes back to a burial mound, right? And what they thought was permanent out the burial mound. We know through science, right, that when you decompose, right, the elements go back into the air. That's right. Okay? Niggas ain't talking about that. Niggas ain't talking about the natural world. So niggas say, well, uncle, what you pray to? Nigga, I pray to the water. Why do you pray to the water? Try three days without no motherfucking water. Mm. All right. That's right. Uh, what you pray to? I pray to the air. Nigga, let me take this out of this room. All right. So I pray to the things that is vital because that's what we're talking about vital force, man. So you will never hear me refute the vital force. You can't refute that which you're just connected to. That's impossible. So when I'm talking about killing God and I say I'm atheos, I'm anti-fetos. He know, he know. What's that oath? 
That oath is the Greek word for God. Right. I'm anti-fucking Greek culture, anti-homosexuality, anti-Romans, anti-Germans, anti-Europeans, anti-monotheistic religions, right? Because they're the three religions that say you can enslave the African people. So why wouldn't anybody be anti that shit? Yeah, right. Niggas just scared of words. And in this yeah, motherfucking group, right. we use words around this motherfucker. And, and we define words. Right. They command words. Okay, now, you know I got an accident because this is what I hear or sometimes I see it in the chat room. You said you anti Greek culture. Anti Greek culture. But you call yourself the black atheist. I said a real black atheist. The real black right. atheist. Yeah, it is, give me that mic. Does give that mic. have anything to do with Greek? Yeah, give it that. Go in. Thank you. I really appreciate that, man. Let me give you the reference. Our stolen legacy, right? And he talks about uh, uh, the Greek philosopher Socrates, our star on him, right? Uh, Plato. And he talks about these uh, Greeks coming into Kemet. Okay, they don't even come into Kemet during African power, right? They come into Kemet. Probably during the Persian period, because before that point, we was murdering they motherfucking ass, right? If they broke them borders. Let's get that established, because they was out of fucking order. But these particular Greeks, they got into Kemet, right? And they started to get some semblance of teaching to calm the fuck down, okay? And so when they took that information back to their area, to Ionia, to Athens, right? And they were talking this uh, semblance of African science, the Greeks were looking at them like, the fuck is y'all talking about? They said, you're atheos. You're talking against the state sponsored religion. So the first people that was considered atheists was those who spoke up against the Athenian government, right? With their anti-Greek teaching. That's what it was. And if y'all want to play the homosexual part, right, let's look at Aonia. Aonia, and let's look at Plato. Plato wrote the laws, right? And one law he wrote was, he said, it is unnatural to practice homosexuality. I got the book. You know what I'm saying? He said it's unnatural. Now check out Aonia. What is Aonia? Aonia is where... Uh, um, uh, uh, man, what's his name? Um, damn, I can't even think of his name. The first Greek philosopher would be Thales. Thales set up the school in Ionia. Now, why is this important? Because, see, uh, what y'all don't understand is, although the Greeks practiced homosexuality, it wasn't across the board. You had certain Greek provinces, right, that had laws against homosexuality. Now, what is one of the one place that had a law against homosexuality? Ionia. What's in Ionia? It's the first philosophical school for the Greeks. So now y'all have it. So y'all can't get me on that, right? And stop worrying about them goddamn words. I'm anti-Greek culture. Those who came to Greece and start kicking that African science on a small level, they looked at them niggas like they was crazy and say, we're going to murder you. We're going to kill you, right? We're going to burn your ass up. We're going to enslave you and chase your ass out because you're against the Greek government. So everybody here listening to the show should be against the Greek government, should be against the Indo-European government. You're supposed to be anti that if you're for that African liberation. So there you go. Niggas just hate words. You feel me? <laughs> uh, talk to me about this before I go to Brother Polite. Um, when you seen Brother Polite up in the plane, you said, man, God damn, that shit like really pumped me up. Man, that nigga had talk my, about man, that. listen, man, look, look, when he, he set them niggas up, right, this nigga <laughs> is a tactician with that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, like, I mean, that's what this nigga do. Yeah, he set them up with the, he put the screenshot, right, with the, okay, this when he made that statement, right? Yeah. <laughs> Then the nigga come out, I was right here. Kim, man, I knew he was there because we talked to the nigga while he was in Kim. Yeah. All right, see, that's what y'all don't know. Yeah, while y'all fucking yeah. around, this nigga's in motherfucking Africa, yo. You know what I'm saying? Fucking with what he know to be the truth. Y'all niggas can't go to Israel. <laughs> All right, what you gonna do? Look at some rocks and dirt? You know what I'm saying? So, so you gotta respect the game. And so when this nigga showed that plane, Oh, Egypt, nigga, you couldn't do nothing but stand up like that. <laughs> I, 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 I was like, just put my arm, I couldn't even put my arm down and shit. You yeah, like, crazy. Yeah, yeah well, that's I, shit I my down for a minute. I was like, oh, my yeah, shit you can't, can't man, you can't do nothing with that, man. That show just the motherfucking vigor to want to have the right. motherfucking right. truth. They don't have that. Okay, that shows mm -hmm. just, I'm, you know, yo, we put that money on their head. That's what they don't know. Mm -hmm. Put that bread oh, on their head. I had to say head. that, too. How much y'all spend on y'all prostitutes? Nothing, nothing. No. Uh, come up. Let me go to Brother Polite. Oh, Brother Polite, Polite. That's real. when you heard Nazis say, oh, man, y'all just here to make money, they don't understand that you spent more money on your oh, trip, trip for this debate. I can tell you. Than that, that you know, so when, when he said that, what went through your mind, brother? Oh, man, I, I enjoyed it because they felt they, they talk prematurely about things and they gamble entirely too much. <laughs> so for starters, when Lex was talking about uh, one thing I like about Dr. Ben, and I can't stress it enough, to say one thing, you're about to commend Dr. Ben for something, one thing in particular, and with the body of work that he's presented, 
you're going to demean him or reduce his body of work to the one thing that you commend him for. And that one thing you commend him for is something that you try to condemn us for, which means you don't really appreciate the brother. See, that's knowing words and that's syntax, mm. right? Well, that's we'll go forward. That's real. I like that. So he says, the one thing, one thing I got to give Dr. Ben is that he said he don't want you going to Egypt in your mind. He wants you to go to Egypt and, and go in the field. So I'm like, okay, now this is disingenuous because he himself never went to Israel because this is what he told us and he intends to go one day. This is what he told us. So why would you hold on to something like that? Because you know you're being disingenuous when you say that. That doesn't yeah. prevent us from studying when we can get facsimiles of the same. It's just another part of the experience of the information. So now when he said that on the day before I was out to leave, I just smiled when I watched the footage. And, and at, that day, at that debate, you can clearly see I'm so meticulous that I actually listen to a bunch of information I don't really like just to see what they're saying. You see what I'm saying? Because they didn't give us the charges up front. So I had to generate charges from shit that they said against us. So when I watched that, I said, dang, he going to use Dr. Ben and condemn me for not going in the field or Egypt to get the information. So I said, that's a double negative because I actually went to Dr. Ben and got his blessings and went to Egypt. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So I was like, wow, this is powerful. So I got in the crib and I'm like, okay. Uh, once I got in Egypt, I already started editing. Like, let me just take this Dr. Ben clip right here and let me do what I'm doing. Now that was one. Then when Nasi was like <clears throat> uh, talking about me and money and uh, we just doing this for money and all this other stuff, I just smiled because not only did I go to Kemet for research, my wife came out with me. So that's double the bill. And my brother came out with me because we was there on research and the type of research we had to do, we had to accumulate data day to day. And when I say we had to accumulate data day to day, we recorded everything from us being in the neighborhood with the with the with the people that lived there. We went at a time which also could have posed as a threat because January 25th is the day of the revolution. Okay, this is when they were trying to get their man Mubarak out of office. And that rebellion that took place that you kept seeing Egypt on the news on is commemorated every uh, January 25th. And where's this at? That's at the square, Tahir Tahrir Square. Where's Tahrir Square? Tahrir Square is adjacent to the Cairo Museum. The first building that got burnt down, right, for the revolution is literally uh, less than a thousand feet away from the Cairo Museum. Yeah. Meaning when you step out the Cairo Museum, the building that they first burnt down was right here. And top, top rear square where over a million people organized, it's just a few feet in front of that. So we come at a time two days prior, January 22nd is when we left. January 23rd is when we got there. So we got there at a time where the revolution was two days premature from being celebrated. And I still went in the damn museum because I, I, I was this close to the truth. Right. So what I'm telling you is, and I, I'm, this is the actual experience. We had to decide if we was going to go to the Cairo Museum or not, because the Cairo Museum is not just at the heart of the revolution. It is where the revolution took place. With the Cairo Museum is exactly where the Damn. revolution took place. So that's something that you have to keep in mind. Now, when he talks about, who's that, son? The brother that was on, that took the uh, brothers. So when you talk about the money element of things, First of all, you got to talk about the heart to go out there because it wasn't as, as dangerous a place as people can see. It's just the time that we came yeah, yeah. in Cairo. Like we went to uh, Luxor first. It had been good. But we went to Cairo first because the way my schedule was. My wife was like, she's down. And what people don't know is the first time I learned anything about Egypt was when I went on Dr. York's land at 404 Shady Dale Road, 476 acres of land in Eatonton, Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's the first time I ever experienced anything about Egypt. I never paid it no mind for as long as I was alive so the first time i really intimately connected with egypt was when i went on the land that's the first time i, I saw i even cared about a pyramid or knew anything about a pyramid and when i loved what i what i felt from the land i went back and i told my wife yo we got to go ahead for me the first egypt i ever knew was in georgia mm -hmm. so i got my wife and when my wife experienced it i dropped out from the game when my wife experienced it she no longer permed to hair now did we read something to tell us don't do it no I didn't read nothing that said drop out, and she didn't read nothing that said stop permanent hair. But when we went to the land, the experience was so impactful. Seeing Sphinx blowing water out their mouth, when you cross the bridge, there's two rows of Sphinxes blowing water out their mouth. Black pyramid, people coming, doing their uh, my garage, 
making prayers and it was just multicultural too because people was visiting because it was a zed fest or celebration so but to see black people was running their own land i didn't even think such a thing could happen in that capacity ever in my life and so tamaray or nuapia when we went to uh like i said 44 shady del road Eaton, georgia that was the first time i ever experienced egypt ever in my life so other people like oh those those ain't made of limestones and sandstone. Yeah, I hear you, right? But you can't take that from me. I knew nothing about Egypt ever. I knew no deity's name. I knew nothing about no pyramids. I knew nothing. So when I first went on that land to Dr. York's land, that's when I got interested in Egypt. And I said, yo, I can't deal with this gang thing because I just seen black people organizing a whole nother level. Now, when I brought, when I left and got my wife to come back real quick, I got my wife to come. Then she just didn't want to perm her hair no more. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing that she read. It was just the experience alone. Then I, st I stopped eating meat. I stopped drinking soda. I stopped chewing gum. But it wasn't nothing that I read. It was something just clicked in me like yeah. everything's been wrong. So when they took the land, it was like they took a part of my wife's and I's relationship. So when this debate came and I'm like, yo, I want to go out and research. And I'm trying to get two more people because I'm going to need help carrying my equipment because I had computers and books and everything because I'm still studying. I wrote a book for the debate, but it's, it's my book for the debate is a diary of being in Egypt and chronicalizing everywhere I was going. So I needed help. And then I'm corresponding with him and he's sending me on research tasks and I videotaped it. So you're going to see us in the chat where I showed on my findings for the day and you're going to hear Reggie. Yo, he got it. Yo, you see <laughs> that? That's it right there. And then he's like, Yo, you see why police pointing at that side of the wall? That's the research I gave him to do. You're going to see all of that. So this is exciting. But the thing was, when I left to go, my wife was like, I got to go. And I'm like, yo, you know, it's going to be a little intense because it's a revolution. And I'm just rolling. I just want to roll the brothers on this. I just need two more people at minimum because this trip expensive too. But it's really the energy. She said, yo, yeah. you know, the land was taken from the Nuwapians. And that's the shit that really made us really love each other and change. So at least we can go to the inspiration, the archetype of that land. I couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell my wife no. Because what she said, like I said, when they took Doc's land, that shit tore part of us up. Because that's part of our relationship, the history of that land. So she, I'll come real quick. So she said she got to go. And when she said it like that, she said it's for our relationship. Because I never got over when they took the land. Yeah, she, she I couldn't stop I'm in that. So, you know, this was some emotional like, shit. I got it. So she, right. she went with me. So when you talk about we do this for money, right? And they was trying to get at me. I'm like, homie, let me let me tell you the expenses. It don't cost this much to go to Kemet. You know, people charge a lot. I realize it don't cost that much, but it's right. all good. Right. We're going to do our own joint. And I'm not saying that to knock nobody. I just thought it was extremely expensive right. the whole yeah. time. No, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it don't cost ago. that much. Years ago. Right? And then I'm, coming real, I'm going to talk about the money. I just want to talk about the money. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is it don't cost that much. You could go to Egypt uh, for less than a rack. Now, depending on what you're doing, from New York, you can go for less than a rack on a one week's notice. But wow. depending on which, exactly, wow. You know what I'm saying? But depending on, it's actually more from Cali because at first I was going to fly from Cali. It was like 1400 You know what I'm saying? But depending on what you're going to do, that's where the expenses accumulate mm -hmm. because then your money getting converted into balance. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Egyptian money. So. When this happened, I was like, you know what? Our trip is 6K each mm -hmm. after we do everything for research. Because not only, you have not one person, uh, then two people, then three people. I brought one of the brothers from New Covenant. So you got to look at it like this. We fly into Cairo. Then on the first days, we go to Old Cairo, right? Because mm -hmm. we go to Old Cairo, so we go to El Molaka, which is the older, older church in the Vatican. You see what I'm saying? Because I did some religious research, too. We also want to go to the Coptic Museum. The Coptic Museum, early Christian, when we say Coptic, they don't call them Christians in Egypt. They call them Coptic. You know what I'm saying? And when you go to the Coptic Museum, on the first floor, the second you go in, you will swear you're in Egypt because they literally show you that their cross was the Ankh. They show you the boat of Ray on their, uh, yo, I, the boat of Ray is, is on their joint. And, and the monograms, the Christian monograms, where Ra or uh, the sun would be is where they start implementing their crosses. But the boat array is where it's, it's, it's on the uh, on the archaeology. So you go down the first floor and everything you see is onks and it's like wow. So we went to the Coptic Museum. We went to the uh, hanging church because it's literally on a it's literally sitting on a cliff and it's older than the Vatican. I you went, went there. Yeah, I went, you went there. In that I went in there and everything. You went you know, in there. I filmed everything with my hanging cliff. 
hang, it's a hanging church. It's on a, it's built on a cliff. Damn. You see what I'm saying? They had to rebuild it when an earthquake took place after the sixth century. So then we go down to uh we go to the uh the the cave where they said Mary hid. But right behind that, like eight hundred feet away, is where Moses hid in the well. And that's why I was like, hold on, everybody's hiding in the same place. You see what I'm saying? And this is uh -huh. about a quarter of a mile. Uh -huh. uh -huh. The pseudo, because Moses is hiding in the well behind the church where Mary hide in the cave. I went to both places and I did the filming and saying, what is the odds that everybody's hiding in the same holes? You see what I'm saying? Yes, of course. You're talking about the, the quarter of a genome of Jane, but it said that the baby was born in the Yes, sir, cave. right in the cave. Hey, I went hey, in there. Okay. I went exactly hey, to that location. Okay. There's it, it, a reason for that, though. The reason they do that. <laughs> Okay. No, hold on real quick. It is a reason for that. The reason they do that, and that's why we got divine goddamn ass. Divine, I got you, yo, on that bone shit, right? <laughs> all that all that whole lecture you did on the bones, people will come up with sites of pilgrimage, right? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like you develop a tourist attraction of the day. And so they had they'll say we have these spots, we have these bones. This is where Noah took a shit at. You know what I'm saying? And people will come, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so you know what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's basically, I mean, but that's basically and divine did a whole lecture on that, not not understanding the root of that. It's the way they could. So he talking about bones in, in uh, Belgium some damn way. You know what I mean? That's crazy as hell. Out, I mean, but hold on, boy. And so, but he don't show you the whole article. You know what I mean? So in, in my presentation, if I get a chance to do it, right? I'm going to show you where he made the same mistake. Let me, let me, I just want to say like, one quick thing about my brother Devon. I was waiting to bust you out about this. In that same presentation, he used to work with brother Jonathan. Now check this out. I quoted my professor from a class that I took at Emory University the transcripts aren't on the line, so Brother Devon had no way of checking the source I used. Mm -hmm. He simply stood on my work, which you could do, Devon, because I'm 100. Mm -hmm. But still, he didn't go. He proved that he did not go back to me to ever see if the source really said what I put forward. He has no access to that because I got it from the class transcripts. Mm -hmm. class. So I'm like, oh, wow. So now you're just showing me that you just go and say, oh, this scholar used it, so I'll use it. That's not how we do research. You have to first... Make sure the man really said that, because I could have made a typo. You know what I'm saying? I could have messed something up. Yeah. And so really, when seeing uh, you were you were real humble in using my work, and I appreciate that, uh -oh, how we share things sometimes like that. But you showed us as researchers that you did not even go behind what I put forward to verify if it was true. But I wanted to um, go. I wanted to ask, say a record for yeah, you say I'm right there. You yeah, that um, the quote evangelum of James, which somebody called Infancy Gospel of James, mentions that um, Jesus was born in a cave. So yeah. I'll bring you back to where you oh, are. No doubt, no doubt. All right. So yeah, so the camera, sorry. no doubt. So we in there, and I literally videotape the cave where they said Mary was hiding. Went out there, <laughs> went into the backyard. Stop. And filmed where they said Moses was in the well drinking mm -hmm. water when he was finding out about his mission and oh, everything. Tell them about right in the backyard. Oh, this right it's the backyard of the cave that Mary was chilling in at the church. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then we leave and I'm like, damn, when you here? And that's uh I had to walk down uh like I said, it's like less than a quarter mile from Ben Ezra, which is a church that the Jews try to portray as their synagogue since that they connect the Moses yeah, yeah, story got, to the well. Yeah, they do. But then they got their spot blown up because the you find out when you go there that it was a richest Jew on that side, Ben Ezra, and he purchased it from the Christians and and he posed that a uh, synagogue as his own. But prior to that, he purchased it from the Christians who stole it from the Muslims out there. And the Muslims were the Christians out there. They was just earlier Christians that were rebellious. You see what I'm saying? So they and to make a distinction amongst themselves, they call themselves cops. And this is true because well, if you I ask, ask real quick. any Egyptologists out there, and I, I, I not only talk to the Egyptologists out there, I spoke to Amir uh, Elhaway, who is the second most revered Egyptologist is native to Egypt. Not only does he break down that when you're talking about Egypt, you're talking about black civilization. He says that it goes all the way down to all the way up uh, towards Sudan, who has over 200 pyramids. And of course, Taharka there with his tomb there and everything. They're not biased by it. He'll let you know that Arabic has over 15,000 words that are loan from Medu Nature. You know, and he keeps it a buck. But I spoke to three different Egyptologists. Him, I'm, I'm quoting because he's the second most revered. When the number one is not in town, he's called number one. You know what I'm saying? And, he, and he's Muslim. But he don't, he, he hasn't said he nothing that you would disagree with about Kemet. It's relation to black people 
And I mean, he's he's just on point. He he just accepts it as it is what it is. So, and, and he was hyped to see black people. He was like, "Yo, I didn't know like the person I was about to meet was black because he heard about us because it was set up because the way my wife and everybody was going to get the research and the effort, and then the people that I'm related to from uh, Nigeria helped me plug me in over there because when I did my DNA test, right, I found right. out I had family in Nigeria. Right. So how can you know all this? To Egypt. How can he know all this information for like if he's a Muslim? <laughs> he's still a Muslim. Well, you got to understand this That's too. Cultural you know, context. Exactly what I was about to say. Yeah, if, but if, he believed in a lot. Listen to this though. Listen to this. If you live in a country, right? Mm -hmm. If there's anything that you can take that's of prestige, having living in a country, mm -hmm. that geographical context as, mm -hmm. uh, in retrospect to history is something that you're going to use to build you up or build an esteem or build pride. Now, maybe somebody in Iraq or Iran, they won't identify it as Muslims, but the Muslims in Egypt, they don't wear a uh, jala beard. Well, they don't, they don't say, they don't use jean, they use gin. So they don't say jala beard, they say gala beard. So they don't wear gala beard. I mean, jala beards. They wear gala beards. They don't use... Uh, P's, they put a B on everything that's a P. You see what I'm saying? So like pounds would be bounds. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't they don't wear beards. In fact, when my brother came out there, we try to be slick with kids and, and try uh uh huh. They wear pids. They, they don't wear beards. They wear pids. What's a beard? I don't know. He said they always put the uh, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's what he said. Right? Nah, nah, but well, they don't use P, so they put P's with B's. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so what happens is my man goes out there, he tries to put on a gala beard in their tongue, and he has his beard, right? And his name is Omar, so he's thinking that's gonna give him some love. You dig? <laughs> and and we found out like being black out there is, is excellent because they identify you as a former ruler of the throne. So everywhere my wife went, everyone, Muslims and the like, all say God is God is God. And I took a picture and video. I say it. I took yeah. I took a video. I got over twenty videos of recordings of people saying, "Can we take a picture with you doing this?" That was because we were black, yeah. and they seen. They, and they, I, I asked why they do this. I asked two Egyptologists why everyone's calling us royalty or cousins or brothers or sisters, and why are Muslims calling my wife goddess or throne holder? This is what everyone says. Not just one part of Egypt. Eight hours driving if you drove. We we flew from Cairo to Luxor, but it's eight hours if you drive from. Cairo to Luxor, which is an eight hour difference if you're on the road. Everyone calls us royal family when me, my wife, and my brother's walking. Royal family, cousin, when you coming back? From the Nubians to the native uh, Egyptians of present day that's pale or, or lighter skin, everybody says, we identify y'all as the Nubians that got kidnapped. We identify y'all as the people who sat on the throne. Everyone knows that y'all sat in the throne. This And I got it on camera, and I can show you everywhere we go. Whether it's other tourists or people native to the land, that anti-Africa stuff that they tell you people on in Egypt today, they see black people and they they even if they poor, they want to give you something. They want to give you food. They want to give you a drink. They have nothing and they want to give you whatever they have because they seen that you they it's the and we cried. I cried. My man cried. My wife cried. One night we just cried because it hit us on the fourth night, fourth or fifth, and I wrote it in my journal the night that it hit me. And I'm like, yo, I'm going back here. I wanted to live out there, and I still do, because it's the first time in my life Don't that I, it, on, yo. yo, you feel it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yo, now, on the real, because it's the first time in my life I didn't have to fight or convince people who I was. Wow. Mm. You know what I mean? Damn. It's like I came somewhere, yeah. and, they, tell you, and yeah. they told me, and I couldn't get it on the first, second, or the third day. It took a while for it to set in that people kept calling us royal family. So, you know, I'm just thinking, you know, right, we say, what up, God? Yeah, yeah, but then we don't treat each other like God. Right, right. Or we say, what up, sis? But we don't right. treat each other like sis. What's up, my brother? What's up, yeah. my brother? But then, you know, we'd be on some shady shit after that. But when I went there, everywhere you go, it was so common that I had to say, hold up, why everybody? I'm thinking maybe they want to get tourist money or something. Okay, so I'm okay, like, okay, but then even people who got money, it's like, yo, I'm so glad I didn't know that. And they don't call you black. They think it's offensive. Because they only know from what they see. So from what they know in English, black means something negative. So they call you Nubian instead. Because I was asking them, why y'all keep saying sorry when you say the word black? Or one time a Chinese man, I got that on camera, asked an Egyptologist that was around us. He was like, uh, are the Nubians black? Because he was looking at us. He's like, were the uh, people that ruled the kingdom? He said, I read they were Nubians. Are, are the original Nubians black? Chinese man was asking the Egyptologist because yeah. he was doing the tour. Mm. And the Egyptologist looked at us. And he was like, yo, he told the uh, Chinese guy, 
Yeah, come on, I, I'm going to talk nicely to you, but you're being extremely disrespectful. What's What's that, what? You see what I'm saying? And he said, don't ever yeah, use that language here because we, we don't do that when we come in the presence of royalty. And then so he, he he shunned the Chinese man, right? And the Chinese man was like, I'm sorry. He started saying sorry to my wife and I. So this is a very light-skinned Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he looks like an Arab. But he still looked like he got some black in him or something. But he looked like an Arab, right? Yeah. And so we asked him after. I got on camera. I said, yo, uh, why was you so offended when he called us or identified us as black? Because we do that a lot in America all the time. He said, y'all call each other black? He said, well, we just don't mean no disrespect to you. You know what I'm saying? Because we see that y'all was on the throne. We're going to call you by the name that you was on your throne. So he gave me like 12 different names. One of them was Nubian, though. You know what I'm saying? He said, we would rather call you what you was called. And you you know, native to this land before right. we call you black, because that's an this offensive is term. This is important. Take this call and yeah, go so that's right. Hello? Uh, Brother Jonathan and Hello? the Amara yeah. Squad team, do you think it's important? And I think y'all should do this. What's do a like? world tour. I don't think nobody could do it Sorry, like y'all. Not a world oh, tour. To do but I'm talking, about, I'm talking about I'm talking about a tour going to Egypt, Sorry. like oh, taking people good. to Egypt, going in. I think that would be powerful right there, brother. Uh, you know, Belai was out there making the way right now. Hopefully, I'll be able to be involved when yeah. he do his thing. Now, I'm Ross. Why we all we got plans to do a whole lot of things. The first you spoke on something to the extent of a world tour. I won't okay. say world, not but, world. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I mean to say, national. To say, um, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll touch on Egypt in one extent, but that's something uh, probably further down the line. Uh, or yeah, primarily, we're gonna try to do some national, uh, bringing this information to people. On some type of a uh, maybe a summer tour, mm -hmm. or possibly even a fall tour in 2015, but we just got to organize it. So, uh, as Nazi Yashabel told y'all at the debate last night, I ain't been to Egypt, and I still want I want to be a master when I get there, and so that's just something personal. I want to be able to sun everybody. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, but I think I you need to go there, man. Year. I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna try to go with like in the uh, fall. Oh yeah, so September. I'm going back. Go to the fall. And, and that's another thing people got to know. First of all, damn I'm coming right <laughs> back. Damn, man. Nah, I've been humble the whole time. You know that. Don't front. Did <laughs> you start that shit again? <laughs> <laughs> you got to be a body. No, I don't want to because you don't live out here, man. I was mad that St. Jenny and uh, Asar left, man. They the truth of that yeah, shit, they yo. go in, man. It, it feels so good to be around people who, who appreciate and indulge in the knowledge so much that it's hard to distract them. You know, with foolishness, you know. So I, I want to uh, definitely give thanks to those brothers for being here. But like I said, when we came out there, we went to Cairo. Then we went to Old Cairo. Old Cairo is where they have like the oldest mosque out there, and you see the comedic influence, influence. And then you also have the cops or the Christians, but they don't call them Christians out there. Like religiously, they won't call them Christians. They call them cops mm -hmm. or Coptic. You know what I'm saying? And uh, then if you go in the Coptic museum, everything is onked out. Everything, all their crosses. Jesus is even on an ankh in there. <laughs> what? He's on an ankh in there. How they put Jesus in there? I got it in, there, in my man. book. That's I'm saying, thing. how did they put Jesus in there? This happens around that's the six, white seven, man. Seven, that's that white man. Uh, uh, cops, yeah, you're gonna find the first cops in the threes, and then he yeah, yeah, added the Jesus. The first ankh is sixes. like in the two hundred, three hundred, yeah. and then when you start going to six, seven, you start seeing a transition. Then you're also going to see it, this Ethiopian art with a black woman at the top of it with a big oh, afro. Wow. I you know what I'm saying? Damn, you're that's not. Where yeah, the yeah, circle yeah. would be, it's like a circle going in, and then at the very top, to complete the circle, is a black woman with a big afro. And it's in the Coptic Museum because the cops in Egypt this also that, used to yeah. wear that as a cross. But it's a black woman with a big afro. I got it in my new book Damn. that I released. So then, uh, which like. the new book is called Comedic Arcana. And the Hebrew dialectic subterfuge. Yeah, so that's that's in old Cairo. <laughs> so now we go from old Cairo. Uh, we went to the Cairo Museum, and like I was explaining when he was out, that uh, the revolution that took place with the Egyptians that got people scared to go there is literally baseline to the. Uh, it's literally baseline to the Cairo Museum where the revolution took place. So after after that, we went to Memphis. We went to uh, Sakura at Sakura. Uh, uh, that was powerful because at Sakura is where you see what M Hotel built up, and you get to go by the step pyramid or the ziggurat. You dig what I'm saying? And and then you also have Netraket. You see what I'm saying? Which is who they call Zozar. But Netraket is a is a deep term. You know what I'm saying? Like how we call a black man God. You know what I'm saying? That's all within the confines of that word Netraket, right? And so 
And so rather than call him Zozar, we should call him Netrefek. It means God body. Exactly. And inside there, they got a statue of him enclosed in stone, but there's two holes like for his eyes to look out. And people think that the eyes are supposed you to look in, but that's for him uh, viewing the world from the inside on out and allowing the sun to come in. But it's crazy because when you look through the holes, you see him right there and it just gives you this, this feeling. And then also you have his family. I'm going to come back to you. Don't forget, they got a Oh, okay, yeah, cool, cool. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. No, you okay. can't, brother. <laughs> I can't. Okay, you won't be here. With I'll put down. Let me, so let me get them. Cool, so I'll just close right, up right. on this part. Well, and you know what? Can, oh, hold on, hold on. I'm going to press pause. You leave at, your, your flight leave at 4? Uh, 3.59. 3.59. So that means you got to be there at least before hour. 2.59, 1.59. 2.59. Yeah. Where you going, JK? I'm going up. I ain't going to go. No, I'm going to go out here. You going to JK? All right, so you good. Okay. All right. So, now, uh, uh, hold on. Um, oh. y'all taking them? You taking them? Huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, know. that's good because I was gonna give them cafe to go. But thank you, brother. Nah, nah, nah. my key. Give me the bag. I need to earn my key. I won't stop that. I need to earn my key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,
You gonna use them? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he's definitely right. And you know, we did with the primary. So what he's drawn from is the Elephantini papyri. I say Elephantini because I think that's how it's called. Oh, no, Shaw said, what's up? He's peace, here. peace, Shaw. Uh, yeah, and on this Elephantini papyri, we do find, that's why in my honest scholarship, I always say, yeah, about 500 BC, we could find some people who mm -hmm. call themselves Jews in a but uh you know that's after the story came out that's what i always got to tell them so after we after it came out we can find plenty of people uh attested to this but one thing that he pointed out about that papyri is a it's written in aramaic so we don't even find them caught talking in the so-called hebrew script at 500 bc uh secondly they don't show any uh knowledge of building they're requesting, I think it's Cambyses, or it's either a no, Darius. Darius, Darius. Yeah, it was either like Darius. So it was a Darius that it was there, Darius one, possibly, correct? I think they requested of Darius for help to rebuild the temple of Anayahu. And now here's something that's crazy because at 500 BC, we still find them venerating Anayahu. It ain't like Yahweh had not broke off and did his own thing yet. So when we start talking about uh, the development of Yahweh, the development of mono Yahwism, you know, to take away or not from Yahweh, let's just let it be one. It all come around this time we talk about this elephant chain papyri and what happened. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look. We lucky we ain't have enough time in that damn debate, man. Uh, Yashirel or Nazi and Hashar, they made a claim. And they was talking about the vultures and eating oh, um, and the cannibalism, and cannibalism the vultures eating, right? That's they said that, right? So, but they show no primary documentation of that. All right. So one thing <laughs> the Hebrew brothers had to learn is remember they polite. Remember, remember they made that claim about the vultures and eating bodies. Mm -hmm. they did that, remember they did that, right? And you show me the book. About okay, vultures, but why right I just there. let us? I never got a chance to show us in the big y'all luck, y'all niggas straight luck. Focus in on that. So let's really talk about the vultures. This magazine is called A Fool for the Vultures. Now, why it's called a uh, Ooh, for the vultures. So you got these alabasters right here, right? What these is, is these, uh, they constructed these boxes, okay? Shabby ass goddamn craftsmanship, <laughs> right? But they construct these boxes, and guess what they do? They lay the bodies in the ground and allow the vultures to eat the bodies. These, they're eating the Hebrews, the vultures. Oh, eat I never heard they that eat story. the bones off wow. the body. I okay? heard on drop that before. It's absolutely, they eat the bones off the body, and then they break the bones, right? Because the femur is too long to fit in that. And they put them in these boxes right here. So y'all talking that shit, but I'm not mad at this, but this is this, this is a practice, right? It's not even a Hebrew practice. The Hebrews borrowed this, this tradition, okay? But it's how they burn their dead. So why y'all talking shit without the real research? Here's the magazine, Bible Archaeology, Biblical Archaeology Review. It's right here. It's, it's right here. We ain't get to bring that shit in there. All I want to know is how did, how did Brother Aunt have that at the debate? That's what I'm trying to say about preparation. How did he have that sitting right there? We didn't know they was going to whip out some suit on us about some vultures. We just had all our work on the table. Oh, like, what they going to say? What book we going to whip out? Let me, tell, oh, oh, let me tell you my favorite part of the debate. One of my favorite parts. Because, first of all, they said, yo, when you come, we're going to call you up to the stand. Polite, we call you up to the stand to break down the metal right? Yeah. I ain't back down. I'm like, I'm going to come through. Now he's saying the best nigga on planet Earth. I right. But I got enough confidence in my shit. Stuff. So I, I came, and this is supposed to be first round. Everybody know this. Mm -hmm. One of their biggest things was y'all opposing as literate teachers of the metal yeah, And we're we going to call y'all up. We put that in their face. And, we, and they said, we're going to call y'all up. And we're going to see if you really can read this. So we come. And I'm like, okay, opening round doesn't happen. Doesn't I'm like, happen. the next round, it doesn't happen. Yeah. But then in the next round, you go off. I was mad. And you said, I can read it, and you go in Nazi's face, and to the point one of the moderators yeah. wanted to make sure it was, it was cool. You say, nah, this is my brother. But my man Jonathan said, I can read it. Try me. Put something up there. So he ain't getting nothing back. Now, everybody got to keep it real. With all the shit they've been talking throughout the course of all those weeks about how they can't really read Metanet, they made that the biggest thing. They don't have the right to talk about each other. They don't understand they can't read the Metanet. We're going to call you to the stand. No one called no one to the stand. So we then come to the stand like this. My man yeah. says, try me. I can read it. When, when he didn't get it, right? When he didn't get a response for them to try him, guess what my man does now? He asks Nasi, can you read it? And if you watch the tape, you're going to see him do this. He's stuck between <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> Yo, you saw that too. Oh, 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 wait. You're right. 
Yeah. He's like caught between. He's in purgatory. Oh, he's still alive. He's still alive. He's in purgatory. Yeah, we are. Hey, hold on for me. <laughs> that shit was funny. Hey, I'm about to buy you something, Sabetta. You know they got the dual camera. You can put yeah, two sure. batteries. I'm going to send you one, baby. Oh, oh, yeah. I'll work with the camera. Wow, that hey, is good. good. Hey, hey, hold on. And so the prosecution, <laughs> right? See, what they didn't understand, we do on the trial. And see, like, you know what I'm saying? And you smash, you understand. You understand what that means. Once you put a nigga on trial, you have the prosecution and the fucking defense. Yo, we had the motherfucking dream team in that motherfucker. Yo, it was really real. All right, it let's get that real. shit straight, man. It's real. And so, well, hold on. So when Divine young ass, because he's only two years in it, and I yeah. like Divine, yeah, because because he's like where we was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Divine All right. Sharp, he's man. sharp, right? But he he's just, gonna be like, I used to be. A I used to be. A <laughs> <laughs> Divine is sharp. Right. So, but well, hold on. But when, but when, but when Smash say, Hey, Divine. I say, oh, oh shit. shit. Get him. He's going down. Can you read that right there? The oh, mind looks up. Word, he said, oh, ooh, he said, get out of here. You can't read that. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he starts saying, well, the R the is R kind of like, uh, 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 I'm like, man, you almost got it. You got one of the letters to stop. Stop. Oh, explain it. Get the other two letters to say what it's saying. He tried. Yeah. Oh, man. He's like, well, the R is wrong, oh, man. I would have did that with no Hebrew. I would have been like, go to read, bro. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yo, you see. Don't give it back to black. Don't give it back to black. I'm just feeling the other way. No, I'm feeling the debate. I'm throwing it over here. No, you're right. No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? When he came in with the DNA information, showing that, because I'm. this is what I'm saying to people, because they don't really understand what's going on. When we did that debate, because they didn't want to give us uh exactly what we're being accused of which is yeah. the first video i started off when their own hebrew is like brother said there's something called discovery and he was a paralegal that, that a hebrew israelite right that we call the baby hebrew mm -hmm. that a hebrew israelite who's a certified paralegal in new york that made it clear that there's such a thing called discovery and fan y'all gotta turn over what the accusations so are so they can be prepared instead of defense right. now what we're saying is since we couldn't really get exactly what we wanted issued to us so we can prepare right. we prepared ourselves yeah. so part of the preparation was we just know all the accusations that they've been saying and since they want to specify which accusation they're going to come with we just took their accusations with us to court and right. said yo try us for this in addition to what you're saying and if you don't want to be clear we know what you've been saying anyway right. we're going to get you right. so one of the things that they were saying i can prove was that, but what's this? Aside from the Medunetra claims that they didn't want to attack us for when we came to court, right. one of the other claims was, y'all niggas ain't no real Egyptians. I wanted them to use the Igbo tribe so I could show them where the migration took place, because that's how I got access to the pyramids in Egypt from my family. Members out there are one of the protectors of the pyramids, and I'm going to show you something. When the videos go up, y'all ain't never seen the type of access to pyramids that you've seen me have so when they say you yeah. gotta pay for it or they're not gonna let you in when you see me in there yo, praying yo, yo, yo. chanting meditating I'm not just one you. pyramid on not just one pyramid you see i did this in giza i did this in sakura i did this in several pyramids for dolo with my wife right, let me tell the story B, yo you. so the point i was going to yeah. drive to um was another thing that they got called on is because they keep saying that y'all not egyptians but he showed you in his DNA yeah. that he got the right to argue for Kimmy. Exactly. I said I got the right and to argue for Kimmy. Yeah, man. so what I was saying and is you it. got him on that because he I showed his DNA. Go, I'll have you. I want to hey. remember that point. I got hey, see, that's that was important. Mad job. It was quiet as hell. They, man. The niggas with the monsters in there. And then I showed the Jewish DNA. My shit say N A N A N A N A. -A, -A. I can't be that. Like, but hold on. <laughs> <laughs> but hold on. I'm gonna do the access. The Magi. When you say the Magi, is that his name or is that like a title? Yeah, about to break it down. When you say the Magi, because I thought that was your I'm name, and now I hear Unc saying, yeah, we Magi, Magi the Magi up. Down. So what is the Magi? Well, let me just say one thing before he break it down. Magi is individual and plural. One person is a Magi, or we got Magi, oh, but the, a, a force was called the Magi, but he going to oh, break okay. down who the people were. So oh, that's geez. what he is. Benja. That's a big job, right? Benja, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, and it's just important. And, and, and see, I always fuck with ancestors, right? Now, the site I fucking with for my DNA, right? I got like the most expensive shit because the person donated. I'm be so honest. You got 300 about, people right? watching. Okay, this. person donated that, right? Now, 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 they routinely upgrade that shit, right? Listen to me. Now, the whole month leading to the bank, the site was down. They said, we working on it, working on I'm like, damn, I want to have that shit. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, by the time that shit went back online, y'all had more results because they went trial on people. 
my shit was like the man. I was like, damn. That was. Yeah. I got, I got, I got, I got, I hey, I promise you, my mother line, my father line, it was just there. You know what I'm saying? It, it was twelve percent for the blood, then. then it was fifty-four percent. You know what I'm saying? For the Nubian side, the Magi. I'm the Egyptians, Ethiopian. So, nigga, I tell niggas, every right to go get it. your. I that said, nigga, go get that DNA shit. They wouldn't. But then they bring my man from Demona in there. It was like they was falling all that. The nigga from Demona in there talking that bullshit. Then I had the Demona slide. Hey. Hey. I told him about the spider where once you get to it, I'm gonna go back to what Polite was talking about. So I'm just saying, right, man, right. you know, for real, when when, when, when we brought the spider for the truth, man, we're not trying to make it up. This Yo, nigga will up. tell you about the Hebrews. We tell him the truth here. We right. just saying if you can't prove it, it's not there, dog. Right. So we're not trying to fool the shipping nigga. We're not trying to fool y'all, man. At the end of the day, yo, we want the truth because we all want to be able to fight this racism, white goddamn supremacy, man. Right, so, right. so y'all be trying to make that shit up, man. That's why y'all stumbling, man. Come the fuck home, man. Real rap. Right, Come the fuck home, dude. Where they taught a nigga how to pray and what to pray to. Real rap. Right. Come on, man. Let me um, let me get it. I'm gonna give it back to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was um. When polite got up there, polite really crushed the whole shit too. For he ain't real no play the first round. My man said Shaka ended the debate. He said when Shaka, Shaka already done killed the debate. Yeah, I'm gonna say polite killed the motherfucking debate. Oh, yeah, I said he go the that, Yeah, put him up, man. Yeah, you have to give it <laughs> Yo, the way polite went in, man. Oh man, he just was. I like the shit when you What's saw the star bro? David, the way you was showing it. Oh, oh man, yeah. I was looking at Nazi face. Oh. So I'm gonna go on record <laughs> and I'm gonna say <laughs> that um of course the comedic family and the comedic crew they won this yeah, hands nigga, down you know we did. We every fucking you know. round. You know. Tassetti was up. Yo, peace, my brother <laughs> Sarah. Hey, go and say something to people. Yo. Peace, brother Setti. What's happening? Wait a minute, hold on. He gotta walk out that office. Oh, he in the office, he working. No, no, he's Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you <laughs> no, yeah, peace, brother Sara, Sarnetta. Peace, what's going on? Man, I was hoping you come through. It was a, I mean, it was a killer, hands down. Jam packed up in the yeah. building. I mean, the Amarad squad. I got you on live right now. So um, we live okay. streaming. Brother Polite, oh man, it was just a wrap. Brother um, Shaka. I mean, the whole Hebrew community just got tore down that last night, brother. Well, that, yeah, I'm glad. I'm proud of them, man. <laughs> Shit, I wish I could have been there. But, you know, I got so many things uh, ahead of me right now that this is the only week I got to prepare. So I couldn't, you know, do it this weekend. But, you know, soon. You yeah, know, hey, man. whatever. Um, Just give me a title. I got you coming in soon. So, you know, you could do your own lecture. Just give me a title. And we're going to blow that shit up. Hell yeah. All right, then. That's what's up. But yeah, man, I know that shit was big, man. I wish I could have been there. But hey, man, I salute y'all soldiers for uh, stepping up for the nation. You know what I'm saying? Right it takes courage and bravery to do that, man. And so y'all niggas go on and put them bars up on y'all chest. You know what I'm saying? Y'all go up. Go up and right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all niggas go up and right, get some more stars and bars on your chest, nigga. For real. <laughs> See, that's that's All right, right, my brother. Here go arm, um, here go arm. Um. Hey, yo, I'm going to hit you back when I get out of here, nigga. We yeah, hey, let me build on what I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm going to let you build on it. But what I was just saying, man, is that all right, all right, polite yeah. presentation surprised Please. me. It was awesome. I loved it. And uh, I mean, the way that he broke down the Star of David, that fucked him up right there. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and when he showed the, the part, fire. when he showed the part of Abraham with Zion Lex saying one thing, and then Zion um, the the oh, and they from the same God, camp. Damaging. And they from the, same, they from the same fucking camp. That was damaging right there. You know what he did? Brother, I had Hebrews coming up to me. Yo, man, damn, it don't look good for Israel on this one. Yeah. The <laughs> Hebrews was, I mean, all day yeah, they right. was walking up to me. Hebrews was telling me, man. You know, so um, I just want to congratulate y'all. I thought I was going to have to put on my garment, man. My, <laughs> my Hebrew. Right, you know, I thought I was going to put on my Hebrew this. garb in a minute. I was like, God damn, y'all fucking this up, man. <laughs> hey, um, smart. Hey, hey, look, polite smart, man. Y'all give me that damn mic, man. <laughs> that damn mic, man. Listen, man. Check it out, man. And, and, this, is, and this is African custom and tradition, man. 
Uh, I, I read the motherfucking prophecy to him. See, let me get this shit straight, nigga. If you want to know about some motherfucking prophecy, you got to go home, nigga. We got the book, right? The first hand goddamn account. Uh, I got a book, an archaeological survey, right? And it spoke of in the suit, right? Coming to get the goddamn magi to chase some fucking Asiatics about it. Did I not read that in that and video? And it was the helpless brother right? Atmos. The helpless brother Atmos out. I'm just right, come on, dog. Hey, dog. When right. I read that shit, hey, I put it. it it's on film, nigga. That's why I say, hey, take the white flag. It's over with, nigga. It's we see it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying, niggas ain't fuck. You know I mean, seriously. Arrows up, arrows up. I told him. And when Hashan was talking shit, we was putting out them videos. We wasn't trying to be mean. That's why he he threw that shit at Nazi before the debate, cause yeah. he ain't want to hurt him like that in the debate. Yeah. Cause that's our brother. But let me he shot that shit off. <laughs> I knew it was coming back. This nigga come right in the debate. Listen. Stepped out the arrow and said, choo, 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 choo. first round was over. I said, damn, you ain't saying nothing for it. Come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know how I knew how y'all had him? The way I knew how y'all had him. Oh, come on, man. You got this is, anyway. this is how I knew. This is how I knew y'all had him. When Polite finished his presentation. Hold up, Polite. This is how I knew they had him. Hold on. This is how I knew they had him. When Polite finished his um joint, his first opening, first they went first with the opening. Oh, and Polite cool. came with the opening. Killed them with the opening. This they got right. back up with their whole presentation. They started oh, talking about his damn sneakers. This damn and my, hey, like, hey, hold Yankee up. hats. Hold up. Kimmin is on trial. <laughs> and all y'all gotta do is talk about his damn sneakers. I looked at Tazoria. Tazoria looked at me. Yo, they started talking about some damn sneakers. So I said, yeah, I knew Polite had them there. Honestly, no disrespect, I saw you really good on the street corner, but bro, you the ain't no good said. with a mic in your head. You <laughs> was looking silly. You was, I couldn't even really hear you. It's all no, it. no. that's that's just not it for a scholastic debate, bro. I'm just giving you some pointers if you want to try to survive in this range. But everything, <laughs> I'm like, I was disenchanted. That's how I was having fun. Yo, but let me get back to what I was trying to say for the longest about my brother Belay going to Kimmy. Because if y'all don't know, we just really first met in real life when I got to the debate. That's right. But we've been building like brothers the on the research team like we got to have. We was basically putting too much pressure on Yo, ourselves. He, we was he, like, we got to know fighting, the whole kid. Fighting right? this shit blessed. Yeah. God damn, huh? Yeah. We were just, we were just, you know, that's, just we that's how the honor squad do it. Yo, we just, we just, we brought this nigga into the bowl of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, sure y'all everything why. is right. No, yeah, but that's the see, that's what people that. don't understand. Yo, the Amaral Ross squad are like a motherfucker. So lastly, that shit bullshit. She <laughs> do it. I hit him with it. He was like, what? Yeah, I said pseudo polite. What, nigga? Yeah, and he goes fix that up. shit. Yeah. And he steps up. Now, nigga, what? But but that's what we do. We critique each other. And that's, that's right. what the Hebrews don't have nobody to tell them the truth. See, we got they people all tell, got their own They shit. all got their own shit. But see, we can talk. This nigga say, um, that ain't right. This nigga say, come on, um. I mean, so we can actually critique shit. And that's, that's what makes it good strong. Let me say what I'm trying to say. So back yeah, about the beer, but he right. Back about the beer, man. So I'm talking to Polite. It was never going to oh. stop every round. And he like, oh, yo, I'm about to go to Egypt to do help for the real start research. First, we was talking about coming together, but I didn't have it. So I'm like, I can send you my wishes, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> but look, we like, no, let's start building. And so I said, I'm thinking to myself at my house, like, how valuable could this brother's trip actually really be for our debate? So I'm like, okay, let me pull out the best things I can have him do. He was sitting I was like, bro, I said, I'm going to test to see how raw you are. I'm like, you need to get into the pyramid of uh, Pepe and stand right here, you know what I'm saying, and right next to the door. And do the, dude, we go hey, back. He sent me the next day back. in the yo, pyramid, yo, right there, and turn, standing right, right next to the text, text that I'm looking at with my magnifying glass. And Reggie's I really, like, do you said, see that? He got some over. ancestors with yeah, him. He's like, yeah. that's when I knew. I was like, they really might be he with said, bro, He said, you know they let you do it. I'm like, they let me. Oh, real quick. He said, real quick, gang. He's like, nah, Jonathan is like, if they let you get there, at least. Take a picture, maybe even in front of the pyramid yeah. if you can. Nah, I'm like, yo, right there. I'm like, right there. I'm like All right, I got something. I told them, yo, I got the major hookup. My family's out here. Like, word up. So I said, I'm gonna show them something. So I came back. When you see it on camera, you're gonna see Reggie. Like, I said, look, I took pictures to it. Everything, every square foot. So I said, I showed them a zoom in picture, enlarging it. And then you hear Reggie, like, Jonathan, you see that? <laughs> so I'm like, That's it, Jonathan. <laughs> and he like, yo, Jay is like, Oh, it's fucking over. Like, uh, man, yeah, like, yeah. I'm really seeing this trip. Reggie, is crazy. Reggie looked a little scared, though. Hey, look, check this out. Hey, Saul. Reggie, okay. Hey, hey Saul, let me, 
that camera right now. This is my glorious son. Hey, it feel it feel good to be the king of goddamn New York, yo. As what he at? Understand it, yo, and to share that with my brothers, yo. The king up. sitting here, yo, that feel good. But when he showed when he showed that goddamn wall, right? And this man spent that goddamn two stacks, whatever the fuck it was, wow. to get that goddamn facsimile. See, I'm telling y'all, oh, right? See, 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 this is where y'all was fucked up at. This brother, he goes to the actual goddamn wall. Bam! This guy gets the facsimile off the wall. Bam! You can't beat that. Because as an Israelite, y'all can't do that. Well, y'all stuck in that book. Well, yeah, ain't no way, man. Look so, at y'all really know. We didn't even get to tell y'all what was at <laughs> the bottom of that. This is what it comes down oh, to. Man, the man. Europeans said that a term which y'all which i described the other day all right was on that wall but when i found out looking at the facsimile that portion is actually broken off right. so they had to choose the determinative so before i could bring that forward we needed somebody to go verify that that section was really broke out of the pyramid yes, and who did that <laughs> brother for life you know what i'm saying uh, he went to the wall and proved that that was not that so I mean, he went to that goddamn wall, man. Y'all need to go to the wall of your up oh, there and got it. Why don't y'all go to your up there and that? See how that game is? Yeah, See y'all got to try too hard, man. So <laughs> y'all wind up in the Holocaust Museum soon. Oh, <laughs> they got left. Hey, what happened to the curator? What happened to that curator? Oh, they, they was just talking. Man. They was talking. You know shit. what I realized? They was man? talking a lot of shit before that. You, you know, so so we've already hearing rumors about a rematch, right? Rematch? What rematch? Nah, ain't Go no, brother. Y'all could have beat <laughs> them without a pile. Y'all could have beat them off the head. Off the head. That's it. That's that's seen that, man. man that's Yankee hats. And sneakers. <laughs> and, and, hey, and sperm cartoons. Oh, man, I seen that. That was crazy. Which one? The sperm. sperm. The sperm cartoon. Some of the accusations come out of the worst research worst ever done. Hold on. I want to make this point, though, right? They always talk about uh, uh, Jonathan used white people shit. Uh, used right to unrest. We came with some thing. black power. Boy. We came with all black power, right? And all they used was white sources. Major. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Can I ask a question real quick? Why would Nazi complain about PhDs and use theorizers, right? Know who does who not one? know any person named Jew, yeah. Hebrew, or Israelite? I don't know. They killed their own. That's exactly. I mean, why would you bring up Herodotus? Why would you use Herodotus? Doesn't know Jews, Hebrews, or Israelites. That's they don't right. exist in his eyes at 486 BC yeah. when he wrote. That's so correct. why would you bring them up? That don't make no sense, bro. That don't make no yeah. sense. Yeah. See, it's unfair. They use that white. They use that. Yeah, yeah. Right. Speak about that white stuff, man. I don't care what nobody in the community say. I of a scholar who would use some white yeah. word. What is your problem? Yeah. You yeah. act like you go into any. Academy and academia, and, and you get to choose the color of the person of the book when you're doing some type of analysis. Right. That's silly. <laughs> now, the, we are qualified in understanding and identifying bias. Okay, so if you don't know how to identify bias, then yeah, you may have to go off of color at the beginning and be like, oh, I can't read nothing white. But that's so stupid. That's so silly. And we really going to be getting beat up. I'm positioning myself to yeah. defend chemology yeah, against these Europeans. So in order to discredit Paul Roberts, I had to read so much work. I had to read so much work. I, had, I read every book, every source that he sourced. I can tell you hey, stuff about the people. Don't right let's just get down to it. This is another thing they did not know. In 19, see that pyramid text that they always was hinging on, 1036. Pyramid text 1036 came forward in 1977 by Jean Luchon, who found a whole new chamber in the pyramid of Pepe the First and brought forth 2,000 new pyramid texts. So I'll be standing there with my mouth shut with everybody talking about how they examined the primary when you can't examine the primary if you got an old copy of the pyramid text. The only way you can examine the primary is if you're dealing with the French school of Egyptology, Egyptology, because Lushan, I got the book, and that was the big book with the primary that we held up yesterday. Yeah. Lushan basically did not even make that public for everybody. It's only in one of his, two of his books. So when they got this pyramid text, 1030, then if you go right now and type in J-E-A-N-L-E-C-L-A-N-T, Lushan, or whatever, You'll oh, see shit. exactly the zoo looking oh, like Versace. Oh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the one, what you he say? looking like uh, uh, Liberace. Hey, uh, what, what about that that claim that our brother uh, um, um, uh, Nazi uh, Yashmel did with the breast? Right? We, I, 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 I'm going to oh, make sure oh, over oh, the weeks. I mean, what was his point, though? Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> he was in a damn breast. Whatever shit, it is, it's about homosexuality. 
you know that part what, what was it uh see it was ct 700 what do you oh, oh no he's oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's real quick see i got all this work in my book man i got <laughs> a handbook for the conscious community this is why it came out february 8th right but for the people who pre-ordered it i'm only sending it to y'all everybody else gonna have to wait since y'all didn't want to pre-order you still say that's how it works but look <laughs> it's pyramid text 635 man i would have did that in under five words they look stupid they're them. talking about sodomy was right. a way to uh, gain power in pyramid tech That's 635 right but check this out four, two, the lady buried in that coffin yes the lady it was a woman's coffin so how if you propose that the coffin text said that this woman was supposed to sodomize somebody in the afterlife how was that to happen if she could not become if he huh see that was a problem it's silly. It's silly. yo um do you know how to do this the magi what um to do? make it come out of here like what the computer come out the projector what don't you just got one cord to plug into the side yeah, yeah. it's plugged in oh okay no it must be something else i think you gotta press f no, you gotta press, i don't know how to do this. no no leave that in i don't, I don't know how to do that because i don't i didn't know you had to press nothing yeah you gotta press something man it's yeah, on the computer this one. when i just plugged it in at the at the thing it just popped right on oh i'm about to buy me a projector when i get home though right that's, that's the point yeah yeah man we need to get that live live stream title what that was wrong the live stream oh he's relying on the hebrews to provide it oh, oh man you on, you on right now though still. oh man here. oh man yeah so, hey, so, so see how that stop because kabar said he had the internet and the israelite was a I fucking time keeper. did you know that too yeah, and they was a timekeeper so, and they're keeper. saying we messing with the time and that's yo, crazy and the timekeeper is part of Hebrew and he's the same timekeeper time. that's down with Ali Muhammad when Ali Muhammad said the timekeeper's messing with the time and he's part of Ali Muhammad too and then he kept so he's just against you basically yeah. you whole oh, atheist oh, they, 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 they keep saying we're manipulating the time and the timekeeper is always the part of the team of the other person yeah yeah right? I know oh, that, oh, the, oh, the oh, public don't be knowing that because they got us for like 15 minutes because they let the come in after Nazi and Hashar that was Time. Yeah, but we didn't get to do we that. that time, yeah, bro. we didn't get that time, yo. And and he called everybody. He called everybody. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. He called everybody. Hey, bro. 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 Hey, all right, they made the best. So, like I'm saying, so, oh, hold on, man. So we know the timekeeper was the guy that made the bus, right? <laughs> okay. Timekeeper was a Hebrew, right? Timekeeper time time was a Hebrew, goddamn, cheating over there. Gave them, gave them 20 minutes plus another uh, 10, 12 minutes. Remember, I kept saying that shit, dog. So that's all right, man. Y'all, y'all, all right, man. That bullshit. Man. We still ate those, man. Move forward. That's what I'm saying is this. Uh, let me show you. Let me show you how this thing works. Oh my God, Israel, I want to get on it. All right, hold on. Where you share that? Ish, get him on it. Get Ish on it. Ish, we hold on. We we'll get you live, yo. This how you do it, son. Yeah, yeah. Hold yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. oh, you gotta get him on that one too. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Ish. What's up, my man? Yo, he said, "What's up? Y'all gotta listen." <laughs> yeah, y'all gotta listen. Talk to him. Ish. Hey, please. What's going on, family? I got points. Yeah, it was a good one, Ishmael. You missed it, man. They they, they brought home the trophy, goddamn, the comedic trophy. Oh, no doubt, no doubt. I, you, you already know, son. They're going to be bringing the heads home, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I was holding things down on the online thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, y
Yeah, because um, what happened was our server got messed up. You're right. You had Polite had 700, and you know I also had like close to 700 yesterday too. There you go, because I was live streaming. Nah, we talking about the TV. Hey, we talking about the TV. No, we talking about the pay TV. No, listen, I'm trying to tell you that couldn't work. He keeps saying the TV. I'm telling Matt was shut nah, down. We nah, couldn't nah. use that. That's why we. Actually, why do you think we showing that? Why do you think we showing it on YouTube? Because the whole shit shut down, brother. You know what saying before it shut down, though, yo. No. We live. Yeah, we live right now. We live. <laughs> Let's keep it going. But that's what happened. So, family, this is what I want to tell my family out there. Because of the YouTube that shut down again, I don't know if I'm gonna ever trust that again, man. You this YouTube is why, the not the YouTube. I'm talking about <laughs> Town Zone. Every time you got a main event, yeah. Town Zone TV. Every time I have a main event, this should happen the last minute. So we humbly apologize, right. me, brother Sarnetta, and I'm quite sure, yeah. brother Polite. Every but what we did YouTube. was, Polite yeah. said, "Yo, let's throw this shit up on YouTube. Let's just give it to him like that." And that's what we had to do the last minute. And then so that's why we threw it all to quality. YouTube to let everybody we see it. Then. You know, uh, we, we had to we had to give it to you. But we're gonna give it to you even yeah, better when we put everything together and throw it up on YouTube. So we apologize for also our this, people on this, that. So for those of y'all that's tallying yes, and counting the money, that's what you gotta do though. Uh, you, you see 700 you to YouTube people, 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 and you see another YouTube channel having 700 plus people. And like, y'all adding you, up all the money it costs to pay for you. Know that when we put it on YouTube, 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 some people just got on like, like that. Don't think that that came from us selling a ticket you per you individual you see on YouTube. Like, I see nah, some of y'all. Nah, some of those people already started counting the money. Like, yo, they made sixty thousand dollars. Like, hold on, all those people you see on YouTube weren't paid customers. Let me say something about the money, man. Some of them just found out, and the link was shared to a friend or two. Yeah, I know. And that shit. When I woke up this morning, no matter of fact, when I got in the house. It was, you know how much it was up to when I got in the house? Mm -hmm. No bullshit. Now I could get screenshot it. 5,300 people. I turned that have watched the debate? Yo, when I got in the house from the debate, it was at 5,000, you heard? Mm -hmm. 5,300 plus. Oh, you, did, so you put, it on private, home, you put it on private? I put it on private. Sit down, sit I, I add my email to that so I can watch it on the airplane. Hey, hey, oh, okay, okay, okay. You add my email, you know. Hey, I can't that's... share it or nothing, but I'll be able to watch it. No, I got you. I hey, got look, you. let's get just a stab. 5,000, so you check this out. Hey, so I'll get that's that right. camera right, yo. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you heard stop. Hold on. When I came home. From the debate, it's uh, at five thousand. Hey, look, hey, look, check this out. This is the one thing I'm tired of people saying. Right? Damn. What's that? I'm tired of people talking about. Well, he made that money. He made that money. Look, you little son of a bitches, right? <laughs> All right. We live in a motherfucking universe, right? Yeah. And it's based off of food, clothing, shelter, fucking economics of that, right? So right. stop fucking hating. Stop hating and polite get his money on. You supposed to love that shit and support this nigga. Somebody Stop said hating if Sarnetta somebody, yeah. get his money on. Stop hating if Rap God smash. This nigga sacrifices his motherfucking career Everybody. for 20 motherfucking years of getting money to come over this side. This brother is sacrificing. Yeah, it's about getting song. motherfucking money. Yeah, he was cooking. You feel me? So I ain't trying to be, yeah, hold on, dude. I ain't trying to be motherfucking uh, hot, hot, I tank right now. But only broke ass black people start talking that. Oh, they get money, get money. You know what I'm saying? Like, how much, like, how much do the, pro, the fucking primaries of two thousand dollars to pay for? I yeah. bring that shit to y'all, man. Yeah, so I don't want to hear about y'all niggas make money. Niggas go to McDonald's. Niggas play bus fare, buy tennis shoes. Niggas spend yeah. all the money yeah. for yeah. white people, and then when the black man get it, it's a motherfucking problem. That's called PTSS. Post traumatic slave syndrome, syndrome, right? Where the victim acts like the goddamn victim minds. It's like you fucking tripping with that shit. So everybody, calm the fuck down. It's about yeah. money around this motherfucker. <laughs> Because you stay in an apartment, you stay in a house, you have to get gas, you have to feed your children. It's about money. I think niggas be hating because they got to go to work. And you, entrepreneurs right here. And see, check this out. But you I know what? Get, oh, Everybody so, that was there, they oh, loved that shit. They was loving it. Right, so the watch crowd this. crowd was involved, man. Right, but hold on. Nice let me get this straight. Let, let me get, let, let me man, get y'all understand nice what's really going around this motherfucker, yo. Niggas right here, yo, we sacrifice. Working a job, dog. Yeah. You can't work a it fucking job fucking and do here. like this and do all this shit, man. White man, you think a white man gonna let me work for him? He go to my Facebook pop. Oh, hell no, you better yeah. listen to this motherfucker. <laughs> like, you know I'm saying, how the fuck do you think we eat around this motherfucker? That's why they be mad we even got this thing. That's right. Motherfuckers be mad Teach to you that speak that skills, like my this. language. Cats sometimes will get mad that yep. you can even speak freely on your public platform. They be like, you said that on Facebook? I be like, I ain't got nobody to answer to. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But dudes with 
I, I'm no disrespect. We all got to have a job and yeah. way to feed our yeah. family. But you got to notice how that also, they socially engineer you into a little good boy. So, <laughs> the is we got a little bit more freedom. I just wanted to add that. Yeah. You know well, I Speak that this. economic piece, Doug, because I'm oh, tired of hearing niggas well, talking about, well, you, you yeah. got this money. I was a right. sign he robbed me. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I'm going to tell you this. this. If you want to talk about money being made, first of all, when, as a promoter of the event as well, I got to be responsible for cutting the checks to everybody participating. So this means I'm not the only one making money. It's a collective effort. This so you, means that so the Hebrews were part of a collective effort for them to be paid. So you feed black people. Feeding black people. Say that again. Say it again, black. Because last feeding. time I checked, say and we with, did and what? And with the money we're feeding them, they're going to buy clothing and or, or sustain their okay. shelter or purchase food okay. for their family. So right. Nasi, <coughs> he got paid. You see what I'm saying? He got paid. Four <laughs> digits. <laughs> My team was getting less and was making money from different things. My team was like, look, we're going to come out with products. Exactly. We're going to do crowdfunding. We're going to do, we did creative things to generate revenue. But what we did, we made concessions to the Hebrews so they didn't feel away. Yeah, we so, made sure them niggas ate. See, hold on. Yeah, we ain't give up no thousand nah, dollars or two thousand dollars. We ain't give up that. Nah, nah, just said, I came on the strength of the spirit of the, of the lot of the knowledge. I'm going to be there, and I'm, he, he came to support his brother immediately. He came to support myself. And in the spirit of truth, he, he just was elated at the fact that this was going down. So he was coming any damn way. But guess what? He he didn't get paid like how Hashar was on contract, how Daniela, who got paid, was on contract, how Nasi got paid. So listen, my brothers got paid. They're not going to go back and say I didn't get paid. And they got paid exactly what we was mandated to pay. Let me speak to Nazi saying something about how much and, I was getting paid after that. And uh, Smash here, with that. He, he wasn't even paid before Nazi was completely paid, one. Exactly. He wasn't getting paid the amount Nazi got paid, two, because we decided we was going to be creative in our endeavors to get paid. He said, Polite, I don't want to put the burden on you yeah. to have to pay all these things out because if, you know, if worse come to worse, too much snow or what have you, that's the investment out the window because the venue costs $2,000. You dig what I'm saying? The venue cost two thousand dollars. I petitioned to the custodians of the venue because the owners of the venue, Black Business, wanted us out. So we raised funds at the venue. Six hundred dollars. I needed eight hundred. We raised six hundred dollars. I don't know how you did that. Hashar <laughs> was with me when I raised it. Hashar was with me when I petitioned to have an extension of time because mm -hmm. the Hebrews was making it like it was a setup oh, okay. to like stop them. And I'm like, yo. We want more rounds. We want to really yeah, just keep that. nailing them. When you yeah, see what I have for the next one, you would be like, yo, why would we back down? And then I, I put this on my life. Words of everything I love. Sinjetti, a, a, a Saul Tep, brother, um, I put it on my life. I never felt so confident. I'm thinking, damn, I'm always do team debates. Because though I, I, I like rocking out, mm -hmm. this was new. So we I had to learn how to share time and uh, build with people. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you some real, real serious shit. You guys... Who are lucky that we ain't go full length because of Saul oh, Tech. Man. Jetty, oh, man. And Unk, the way we had it designed oh. was uh, we oh. was doing our rounds together and we was going to dig. But I think the Let us know why we started late. GOCC, they didn't have nothing planned. Yeah. Let me tell right. <laughs> GOCC, they couldn't even set up their camera. They didn't, I mean, not the camera. The, uh, they wasn't prepared. Hey, hey, like, they wasn't oh, prepared. Yeah. GOCC wasn't prepared, so they started like two hours late, man. Yeah, One so thing I'm gonna give credit to ISUBK and to Zoriak, brother. Hold on. He always get props. One thing we gotta that. give props to is, is our brother to Zoriak, ISUBK, yeah. because once they know they are in a debate, they are involved in it from the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. They come to the site, they want to set up everything to make sure everything is running right. See, them brothers is organized. They, they call me and polite. We gotta go all the way out into the boondocks to drive them brothers. They don't wait at the minute of the debate. They check on the sound system. They check on the computers. They, they check that. on everything. They did everything. Let me speak. To Whereas that. these really? brothers, they, they, they didn't do none of that, man. They waited <laughs> to the last minute and they relied on us to come with the computer, to come with the thing. And that's when that's everything not, went haywire. That's when it went haywire. But my fault is, and I'm going to admit that my fault is that I relied on them oh, to supply yeah. us. With the goddamn wild I don't know why you they didn't want us to have access. This is what they said. I think they set us up, man. Yeah, they. I think they set us up. They didn't want us on the internet because this was the thing. Cabal all week was telling me, brother, don't worry about it. We got the Wi-Fi. Don't worry about it. We got internet. Even brother Divine was in the dark on that. 
Because the Vine people was tuned in. So I was like, damn, Polite came in and said, yo, what's up with the Wi-Fi? I just looked at him and said, yo, brother, they coming up with some shit. The Vine ain't no damn server. So I'm like, oh, my yeah, God. Sure. I was mad. I was, like, stressed <coughs> on that. I said, well, this people is what we got to do. Me and Polite said, yo, we came up let's with just shit. throw this shit on YouTube. We yeah, got to yeah, give yeah, it to the people. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, got to yeah. give it all to them. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm putting me and Polite just went to work. He did it on his channel. channel. I did it on my channel. But I don't understand why so you know, said, hey, hey, plus, you know, you set the YouTube, uh, uh, next time you live stream, just do it over YouTube. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, but, this yeah. was the, but this was the yeah. issue. This was the issue, though. Because they can buy the, the, the primary issue was one, and this is why I didn't feel good when I found out that Gabar was supposed to do the internet. Now, let me say this. Gabar may not have been part of a conspiracy to make impede on our ability to have access to the internet. But what I would say is this. A big issue in the debate was that they did not want us to be able to use the internet, which we were okay with, yeah, aside from the fact that his slides were on the internet. Right. So it came to the point where it was agreed upon we, so we use the use, internet to access our slides. Yeah, so we didn't let them let them know we did not use we yeah. had we did not use. Let them they know. We didn't shit. use it. So now but the thing was this, it was still this thing like, but well, are y'all gonna try to sneak and use the internet? So wow, what yeah. made it look suspect, but I don't know this to be true, but what made it look suspect is when uh, I find out that we're going to be using Gabar's internet to provide our stream service. So when I find out we're going to use Gabar internet to provide our stream, I'm like the same person as part of the group that want to make sure there's no access to the internet. That might impact us on the business end as far as providing pay per views. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yeah. all right, fuck it. We go with it. So then I come in because my wife is like, yo, what's up? People are calling. I'm like, so I go to Saab and he's like, yo. Shit ain't working out. So I'm like, oh man. So I had to go home, get my uh iPad so we can use it as a hotspot no, to provide right. internet. So we right. did that. Now here's another thing that Sock touched on that was very important because the Hebrews are making it seem like we and this I told people this. I, I told Divine this on the couch. I said, my brother, y'all gonna complain because this is what happens at the end of these debates. There's the other side that feels real bad about the outcome. And they start post debating and going crazy. When I end the debate, I end as a professional and I told everybody on the Hebrew side, I love you guys. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for participating. And then I told my brothers, thank you for participating. It was a wonderful event. The people on both sides, man, enjoyed that debate, man. I hate when people leave the debate and try to create this idea that everybody's angry. The, if when you watch this debate, y'all, and you really see it online, there's a point where Sonetta asked the people, oh, can we just cut to an intermission uh, so we can patronize the vendors? It was like, who wants to stop right now? The whole, yo, you could, the roof almost blew off. I'm telling the people on the balcony. <laughs> yo, they're like, no, it's going crazy, man. They wanted to go crazy. The energy was powerful, man. Right. It was powerful. It was like being oh, in a, uh, let me tell a, a rap battle or something. Right. This is why we always tell you. It is always the better. Function and the F5 key to make your presentation. Function and F5. Which function? All right, and this is why we always tell you, man, it's better yeah, you when y'all come to feel that song. goddamn energy, no, man. man. <laughs> energy is better when you come there and you feel the energy. What's, now, I want to say to my brother oh, Unk and the Amara oh, squad. Oh, no, no, no. Hold on, polite. I need you to listen to this while I ask them this question. Yes, oh, that's fine. Right? Did they say F5? Uh, uh, come on, John. Then take a seat real quick. Did they quick. say F5 or F1? I can't remember. Then. You said F5. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. This is what I want to ask my brother, <laughs> the Army Rod Squad. Because, yeah, come on, brother. Oh, yeah, I, I want to ask my brothers this the Army Rod Squad, the Magi, brother Unk, brother Jonathan. It was a good debate, brother. Overall, we did good. We shouldn't get on radio and try to bash our own debate that we was a part of. Y'all did good. Let's not try to crash that. Did we bash it? I don't think so. Because I was on the phone with y'all, but I heard other people call you me. You bashed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't bash oh, it. Oh, shit, I'm on, I'm on the radio? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, didn't, I would never bash it. But well, he didn't no, know no. he was on the air. Yeah, no, I, I don't bash it. Listen, I listen, here's the thing. I, I it was a good debate. We was a part of that shit. We made history. The only one that I would see trying to um, bash it is the Hebrew. Yeah, yeah. Because they got their ass with it. We went on damage control. control. Now, listen, That's damage I got to keep it real. When the Hebrews won, I said, yo, the Hebrews bust that ass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, I got to keep it real. Yeah. This debate right here 
they well, got their ass from the opening. From the, from the opening. What's this though? What's this though? I think I think even Shaka Shaka did his thing. I was surprised. Shaka did his thing. Keep it real. They wasn't talking during my shit. That's how upset they was getting. Oh yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, hold on. Said, Here's I, the I rule. It, Here's, it against Here's the rule. Whenever people start responding to you and can't hold back, you know you got him. Yeah. He did the whole first round. Yeah. He come right in, niggas start oh, 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 the incest I shit. So so listen, what I want to say is yo, to, to be honest with you, yo. I mean the brothers took care of me. I ain't had to pay for my flight and all that shit. I might not took them straight up pain, but they made sure I was straight. Back the magic I research for hey, 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 people don't. Hey, 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 the magic I research for <laughs> that's some real shit right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. hey, hey so I never stop saying, God damn. Right the fuck? Niggas start saying that, but but we knew that the people would help us. And hey, I'm gonna give a shout out to Brother Reggie right. right now, yo. yo hey, so hey, too. day one, yo, Brother Reggie came in and got I was late. You know, saw you late with saw you done. Yo, that's yo, it. like man, shit, I got my son out. It's his business though. But Reggie stepped the fuck up, yo. Reggie. The first day, second day, and I appreciate that, Reggie. You know what I'm saying? You might get some shit I ain't like, but that shit over with, and you have a minute for that. That's so right. I want you to say that, yo. So it's good. People but how the fuck you miss your flight, though? That's crazy, man. Yahweh stuff did that shit, man. See, Yahweh, <laughs> hey, listen, Yahweh good for making you miss flights and shit. And fuck <laughs> up the internet. That's all he good for, right? When Yahweh was not in the building, he did not show oh, up. Man, man. Was horrible, man. Oh, he, he did sure not did. show Actually, up. Actually, no, I tell him, no, I take that back. I keep telling uh, Yahweh was in the building. He just was on the side of truth. God yeah, killer. He was on the <laughs> side of truth. What's this though? <laughs> yeah, that's God killer. You know? If he was there in the beginning, the way he was going off on Shaka, he almost felt like the whole building was populated Hebrew. What? Because Shaka has it different demeanor, and his demeanor is great. Yeah. You know, Shaka's like, yo, I'm just doing the information. Can't play around. But we told Shaka, look, mm -hmm. the energy you got to have for this type of atmosphere, you got to be careful with that. Delivery. Y'all was there for Shaka? Now, yeah, if, when you watch oh, the beginning, man. you're going to feel like, oh, shit, because they came out hard on Shaka. Um, right. Now, what's up? We came yeah. out talking about the yeah, lock, got there, yeah, got the lock and saying that, you know, this is you supposed to have that when you're going through puberty. So, so you're a little boy. Nah, that. you're right. You're right. But it's always but about But Shaka came back with a good rebuttal exactly. on that. Did he it's show the rebuttal. primary? No, he just said it. No, he showed it. He showed a picture of a grown man with the lock? No, he showed it. Oh, the one that he did no. show it. Oh, okay. And he exactly. showed where, he, where they were talking about this is a lock for the boys, for the, for the little yeah. boys. Yeah, so yeah, he yeah. did show it. I got grown men killing people with the lock on. I got yeah, it. I yeah. can give it to Shaka. He can make it but so know. that's why I was saying, like, it started yeah, off yeah, yeah, yeah. with the energy and the support. But anybody that was in that building can tell you that the wind was taken out of them. Like, if you see how it started, yeah. when they was dealing with Shaka, uh -huh. you're like, oh, shit, it's going to be a long night for kids. The mad people's looking at me like, yo. But what happened was, hold on. I seen you edging them on. And then I was also at the, go ahead, Shaka, go ahead, Shaka. And then I seen Polite, yo, go in there. Yeah, What's yeah, that yeah. Hold on, Polite. So that pump them up. up. Like, yeah. Hold on, give me that. Give me that real quick. Hold on. This was the fuck I was Shaka saying. did a good job. Hold on, hold on. When we walked through that motherfucking door and that crowd stood up, yo, and started saying, I'm a raw squad, I was like, yo, damn. <laughs> I was like, what? You ain't never seen those shit like that. Yeah, I got yeah, fucked. Yeah, I was fucked up. Quivering. Yo, I was like, oh, oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, what? They I stood up in the middle. Oh, we fucked the debate up in the middle of the debate. That's right. We shot the mic. I was the goddamn mic. Like, I'm a raw squad the fuck up. Yo, <laughs> that shit had me hype. I was like, yeah, we. I say, you people. That's see, this saying. time, right? The people showed up. That's what's up. And I'm telling y'all, y'all showed up with that love, yo. And, yeah, and, man. And when this nigga come out, the first round knockout, I was like, why you doing? That's yeah, exactly <laughs> what he said. Too. I say, what's well, up? I was mad. I say, damn, you supposed to dance or something? Bah bah bah. This nigga come out. Yeah. out. <laughs> he was he was right over there like this. Who? <laughs> I was like, damn, yo, yo. Did That's you see at? Hold on. Did you see at the end of the soccer see. presentation? When he showed the motherfucker getting knocked out, boom! Yeah, that was, who yeah. was that? Who was that? Who was show? I don't know. I, I walked in right on it. It seemed like Tyson or something. I didn't see it. Yeah, that was bad. And I like that. Yeah, I was like, God, said, hey. don't fuck with me now. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, you know, you know what's interesting though? They debating niggas that write books. Yo, everybody's writing yeah. books. See, Shaka like, writing books, right? Blake got books, right? Got I released one actually. And they write on. You got yeah, hey, 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 hold on. What's that book again, yo? Get it it's called oh, man, Mad it's called John, Change. a handbook for the conscious community. Really, because all of these claims that y'all can refute, now they're going to be all in one place with all the sources. Yeah. And that's So why you can I, take it back to your teacher because it's going to be a sourceable book. But the, thing, the interesting part about the book is for white academia. 
See, the book is for white academics, for the conscious community to be able to stand strong against white academics. That's the kind of scholarship we produce. The sword never was developed to beat up the Hebrews. Y'all yeah. just fell into that shit. If Seti would have came in that building, I oh, tried man, to that shit would have been yeah, Seti crazy. Right. Nice, this was the walk there, ride with us. But we did that for the general. You know what I'm saying? We made sure we ain't got that for the general. You yeah, know, that, that shit would have been crazy. If he would have walked in, how do you think the crowd would have been right there after that? When they seen y'all come in and then he came down yeah, after that, yeah, had on the hood, yeah, nobody yeah. see him, and then he pulled the shit off yeah, like there to the stand. Yeah. That's it when it just brought the house down. Like. Y'all feel you want to say something? And um, for the first time, <laughs> for the sick. first time, I feel that the crowd was somewhat even at this time. Yeah, it was. The crowd, it wasn't like the Hebrews nah. over overtook us. Because the Hebrews, it was right. like on the right left side. Kind of yeah. seemed like that, right? They was on the right side. Yeah. Yeah. And all the command people was on the right side. And I was like, oh, but yo, I own that balcony. I right, think that balcony was kept. Yeah, we had the balcony. Yeah, that balcony. shit was good. Yeah, That's why I said it was going on. It ain't nothing like being there and feeling that energy, man. People was from all over the world. So that was, up so in was that the best video? That, that was the best. That, uh, that was the best. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was, was a great shit. I, I was going to say one of the best things, though, yep. was the fact yeah, that we learned a lot from the city. The city debate with Nazi. I was a like, lot of the pseudo no, stuff that he said, go get that polite, could, right. could not be challenged. And what happened Bill, is, when they threw up all this stuff about incest, it's not like right. Teddy right. debate where he could yeah. run with the information like, and Jonathan had to respond like, you know, two months later or whatever. The, the, the debate yeah. was yeah. able, we was able to respond at the same time about the incest, about all these silly charges that they brought. And they were shot that we was quicker than mine, or you already had the information on you, or polite had it. So when they said the incest, they had it. I was in between a, was a, a Hebrew Israelite from Chicago and a brother that was a Hebrew Israelite, but now fallen committed. So I'm in between these dudes arguing. I'm like, damn, the minute you brought out the um the stuff about the DNA, I'm sorry, you brought out the stuff about, about the, the incest, incest yeah. right? The he king. said, he said, what about the DNA? I'm like a Hebrew Israelite. Is is is, is a proponent for DNA now? Yeah, all then you guys. brought this and, and slammed it with the yeah. DNA and said that Nazi lied. All of a sudden, I saw a Nazi missing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I said. I Nazi, said, you lied, Nazi. You said and that's what he lied. had. That's what he had to be the fight. I'm like, hold up. This is the problem with the whole thing, walking, man. No, like, when you hear, walking, when you hear one side and you don't hear the other side, and you like, my 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 thing to the Hebrews, stick to the Bible if you're gonna believe it. Yeah, leave archaeology and history alone, because it don't add up. Archaeology and history do not add up. Don't with, that, with that book at all. Don't look good for you. Hold on, man. And Shaka, let me give you a shout out, man. Yeah, I don't want to cut Shaka not here, whatever. I don't know how his schedule is, but let me tell you something, man. So thing, bring man. that brother back here. Let him do another presentation of what he did because let me tell you something. He brought us some information. <laughs> I can't wait to see that video. I'll yeah. buy three copies just to see what Shaka did. Shaka did a great job, man. All right, yo. <laughs> Back, back to the God. Team. Hey, look, we can get out of here, man. We can get on that plane, man. That's you know, quick. I, I appreciate all the love. I'm telling you, I appreciate that. all the celebration, man. I, I, and I really appreciate that support, <laughs> man. Right there. You know the people. Oh, he said we're gonna be there real quick. And let, let, listen, I just appreciate the dance. I wish I would have seen my presentation some kind of way. So I never moved me out. Yeah, we're about to do it. We're about to do but it. But what I'm saying is, we're gonna be in your town. That's what we doing. We coming around, we're yo. Hang out, your presentation. Uh, okay, but I'm yeah, just, yeah. I appreciate we, that shit, man. We I, give I, a New York one without Hebrew, so we can do one without misinformation. Okay, yeah. all right. That's okay. what we gotta do. That's what we gotta major do. Hey, hey, yeah. but I want y'all to know, man. Listen, this, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this, I, I'm gonna say this right now. I never seen a young brother work before, right? But I have a new respect for you, young brother. Yo, I appreciate. I you mean, that, but I had, I had the respect I'm talking about is that yo, you took criticism, man. I'm a critical motherfucker, yo. <laughs> I ain't got to tell me. Damn, nigga, the fuck. But I'm a critical nigga, you know what I'm saying? Cause I see, I see a nigga, and I want to, I want to be great. Cause I want to be great. No doubt. You know what I'm saying? And so when I hit him with shit, he responded like he's supposed to. I mean, I can't be around a nigga that can't handle me barking. Hell yeah. Cause I ain't gonna cut it short. First day we saw this nigga barking me. First day I say, that's a real man. I like that. Yeah. He gonna tell me the truth. <laughs> yeah, he's like, no, I'm for this. I said, oh okay, that's my type of nigga. Right. And when I found you to be that type of nigga, I said, I fuck with that nigga. So whatever y'all saying about polite, yo. Nigga, that's a real nigga right there, yo. Cause I appreciate, appreciate it, young brother. brother. And we all growing our scholarship, yo. You're ready? So I'm gonna give you that. I'm gonna give you that, yo. Hey, hey. so the base smash. Hey, what y'all don't know about smash? Yo? This nigga shit <laughs> is fucking incredible, yo. I appreciate you on the squad, man. I mean, yo, come on, yo. I'm look, I'm saying some shit. Listen, yo. Hey, hey, listen, check this out. I'm gonna see if y'all get this. This was last night at the after party.
Oh, them niggas is drunk on that fuck. Is he rapping? He's all of this for the beatdown. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all call me Tom King. <laughs> SUPK, no AOC, but your brother Sarnetta, who a lot of y'all try to sit on. Mm, I'm the brother Sarnetta that really brought Israel together. Yep, so and I'm not saying that in mockery. I'm saying that that's real shit right there. Real you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, right, right, right. I brought our brothers together. So the spirit of the most high put that spirit in your brother Sarnetta. He didn't put it in Nasi. He didn't put it in our Nasi. No. Nope. He didn't put it in um no, he, like he didn't put that spirit yeah. in to Zoria. Yeah, right. He put it in your brother Sarnetta, who y'all call a Dom King. And look at Israel today. Y'all all stand united right there, which was a powerful scene last night. That's why I had to go. It was a powerful after party. I enjoyed myself. The brothers had food. Y'all could have came there and got some food and all that. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> we want that. No, 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 no. No, it was good. No, it was powerful. It was a powerful thing. But what I want to say is the spirit of the most high put that spirit in your brother to bring Israel together. And that's real talk. That's beautiful. Let me close it. Let me close this out. You know, I appreciate my Hebrew brothers, man. It gives us something to do. Right? Oh man, you know what I mean, but but at the end of the day, man, check this out, man. Yo, we, we got racism, white supremacy, we gotta fight, man. I don't want to keep going back over. Maybe we'll have a lecture where we just let y'all do y'all lecture shit. We do our shit. But that back and forth shit, man, it, it takes me to a book, uh, Destruction of Black Civilization by Chance of Waiters. And what he says in the book is he said they were so busy fighting each other back and forth that they couldn't see the impending doom coming. Uh Okay, and so I'm saying this in this position, yo. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that yeah, we, we get, get our slaughtered. shit off. You know what I mean? Boom, we, we good now. We good, man. We got our shit off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, so we got our shit off. We good now, man. I ain't fucking with y'all no more with that shit, man. Because, you know what I'm saying? I don't debate people, yo. It's not my equal, yo. I teach them, yo. Yeah, that's fucking real rap, man. Yo, I just got to say, man, love you brothers. You know what I mean? And uh, it was definitely a growing experience. My man had me all over Kimmit. I had to fly from one place to the next just to get the information that he wanted. Mm -hmm. But I, he could tell you. I was like hitting him back on the email. God, what else you want? Yeah, you All right, it. so polite, you got to be able to read this. So he's showing me some shit in the glyphs. All humility, King. Mm -hmm. He's right. showing me some stuff. And I'm right. like, yo, this man times you can tell you. I'll be smiling like, yo. Yeah. And he have to tell me, I fly, I'm going to bed. Now, mm -hmm. mind you, man, I'm seven hour difference right. or I'm in America. It doesn't matter. Like, he, he he's three hours earlier if I'm in America. You right. did? But well, he be like, yo, first Reggie shut down, then I go over to him, then he shut down. He's like, still sleep. Like, I wake up, he's still, like, still on Google Hangouts. I'm like, bro, you still up? He's like, man, I have no eyelids. <laughs> you no, know? oh, bro. Like, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it was wonderful in my clothes and I say, I mean, I was, I, it was yo, a pleasure to do, meet you. We're going to keep on working. Dude. What I'm going to do is get polite out on the West Coast, or probably up in the Oakland area, and see if I can bring y'all some of that. You know, we got the nice building up in Oakland, and so we can already start yeah, doing that. Way, I got the Wayne Wiggins online. He got the two fat warehouses. Like, we can really just, Yo. and there's a lot of people in the community. I can show y'all how Omar come back was in doing. New York and do some major exactly. medical work. So, we're going to get it on the West Coast, but I'd just like to thank Kevin for standing up yesterday, and even our Hebrew brother for uh, being out there to put their head on the chopping block. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so. Yeah, that's hey, so. Hey, 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 we'd like to give a shout out to all of Israel, Judah and Israel, right? For putting their you know, head on the chopping block. No one. You know what I'm saying? Because they got to be crazy as hell. I'm fucking on the raw squad. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah, what is real love? Oh, you know what else? Last thing. Uh, Zarya, 
Ashar, all the dudes I've been communicating with through the computer is at least good to actually put a presence with that. You know what I'm saying? With the hey, good niggas, avatars. Yeah, y'all some cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. hey y'all yeah. some good niggas, man. Them niggas like six five though. Yo, what the fuck niggas be eating, man? <laughs> six five range of outfits and shit to make me go like that, yo. Uh, yo, they felt that you ducked them, that you purposely missed your flight. Because ISUPK was out there Saturday deep. Yeah, it was right. hoping y'all two was going to come through. I knew we was going to massacre them. We're going to massacre them out there. It don't matter how <laughs> like deep y'all is. Y'all like got the same information. Y'all got the same. No matter how many people Pick, pick 30 of y'all. Which one of y'all yeah. know the right information? Yeah. I told you y'all would make Mr. Cash. Yeah, you you not with that shit. Apartment, yeah, I'm about to do it. Uh, Dang, this is the whack part of this whole shit. Well, you got to go. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Hey, Sauce, so, can you put um polite shoes on the on the thing so they, they love to talk about the shoes? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, these are the shoes. They the real that distracted them from the debate. <laughs> hey, the real joy. Hey, 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 uh, I'm talking about Versace. 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 I can't. I was, huh. I was in there. They don't get mad at my little shit. I fucked with them. Don't you guys have a college in? I got all kinds of Hey, can I make a quick announcement real quick? Right? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, you get them, man, yo. I, I, I give it oh, yeah, real quick, though. The psychology of that debate yeah. was that I was in there. Number six. I was in there. Six hundred. Doing custodial work in there, <laughs> cleaning the floor, organizing the chairs, and setting things up. So what happened is just before I came up, I left and put on some street clothes right. like I was going out for a club. Right. But I only did that in front of them, right. not the crowd. Uh, then I changed into my new cabinet wear. Right. So when they started putting up, he's wearing these shoes, he's wearing that. Most people didn't know what the fuck they was talking about. Because I knew on some female shit, they were sizing me up. Yeah. And then they're going to try to talk about what I'm wearing. Right. And now that to me, it's like you're just trying to defer people's attention away from the subject matter. Right. Y'all chanting Kim in on trial, but you going up talking about I wear Yankee fitted caps. Right. Now what you just did is disconnected yourself from everybody in there. That's what it is. Because they always was wearing Yankee caps. Yeah. people was wearing baseball caps in there. <laughs> and you just made it like a cardinal sin. Because I went, look, he's wearing a Yankee cap. And they start breaking down who created this shit. I love this shit. I'm like, yo. And show you crazy. That was the worst thing oh, he could have possibly Then they, pull up, then they pull up some sneakers. And I'm like, hold on, you want to look at that Kim in on trial? Like, and they didn't put up things. Those look like boots that they had. And that's why since Jetty or a uh, saw hotel, they was like, yo. When I spoke to them this morning, he was like, yo, that debate was about you. They just wanted to use Kim as an excuse to attack you. They're like, yo, Nazi was going in on you. I thought there was no attacks on business. Right. Uh, they going in on your. But how does it feel? Was it on your sneakers? Was it any surprise that are you are you surprised that they didn't even bring up Dr. York? I thought that was gonna come. Oh, they, they brought his name up. They brought his name up. Yeah, I see. But this is the point. Like when I had the Divine Prospect right here, I you gotta go back and remember. I told him, no matter what you do, I'm going to get into you niggas' head. I said, and y'all can say yourself. Life's playing against my mind. Life's playing against my mind. Don't do it. I said that's as a mantra. Remember? Yeah, I said you can say it as a mantra. Right. But when I come in there, I'm gonna be all in your mind. And if you and if you're watching the song, she said the same thing to me this morning. She said polite. Every round was about you. They didn't want to debate shit. Something happened and they lost their focus. They was they was talking about your beliefs. They got a videotape uh of you talking about something that had nothing to do with the debate. Uh so they play videos on you, they talk about your hat, they talk about your chain, they talk about your sneakers, and they got slides on this and created a doctrine around this. So they so they was like, man, that debate is about you. They just wanted to use Kim as an excuse. All right, family, I want y'all to stay tuned. Um oh, the brother what, Polite, an what Polite is getting ready to do, he's gonna go into the not all of it. Not all of it, but we're going to get into some PowerPoint post. presentation. Plus, that I wanna I he wasn't able to he show. He won't be the deal. Hold on, <laughs> yo. He wasn't able to show um, a, a lot of his sheep. presentation yesterday. Sheep, so he's going to give it to you show. now. 
Tomorrow, I'm having a very important show on my Block Star Reader show, and the brother's going to be there. It's actually about economics. We're going to have a, a, a hedge fund manager that's going to talk about how raising um, 200K. Um, over 700 I'm score. I'm do this so tomorrow at Block Talk Radio slash It's Real Talk Live. Like check it out at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Shit. We got my brothers on. I'm invite Polite too. Yeah. The head fund manager should talk about raising 200k with over 700 score. The government is freeing up now more than than ever before. Before pre Bush time, Bush 06 time. So money is easier to get now. If you get 200k, we know what my brother Sanella would do. He'd probably build a, a house in Africa immediately. You know? Yes, sir. All right. With and polite games. too. And we all would do that. Hey, and man, hey, hey, tell him respect the goddamn shrine, yo. Let them live his That's right. If you don't need you, you can cover my face. I'll let no shit. camera like that, B. Hey, right. <laughs> I'm not no, I'm not no I, I don't know. No they want, hey, hey, respect the red, the black, and the green, man. The red is for the blood, man, that we went through. You know what I'm saying? The black is for the goddamn people, yo. And the green is for the fucking land, yo. So we was in there fighting on that real shit last night. Hey, let me they tell you something. Saying, we was dead serious about this because we want to bring this motherfucker back. It ain't went right. nowhere, but the perception was it was some goddamn way. That's right. Have, All right? You, have, you, have you ever seen the Palestinians take out their dead when they die in, in, in <laughs> Palestine? That coffee you brought up, bro? <laughs> let me tell you something. I ain't like the way poster. he did that. Nah, I I wanted, to nah, he was supposed to put that on a poster and, and, and put the burial of the Hebrew Israelite doctrine. That's it. Bro. You were supposed right. to do it right, man. I'm glad right. you didn't do it. Like, like, come in. Like, like, right. you come in. Black oh, African man. power. Y'all know how we do it. I'm looking at myself on TV. You know what I'm saying? You got to watch the tape back. I'm a Ra squad. February 8th, you learned I'm a Ra's guy. The last 20 years, I've been rhyming quite hard with the Hyper Star. All right, yo, y'all stay tuned. We're going to show um something powerful about the light. Just a little bit. Yeah. 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 All right, we're we'll doing this thing. Man. I want us to go and, and really just without come on, polite, who get who could join up? Polite, who could join up, brother? Let's see who could join up. Like two months from now, I got one. Two months. Because I'm telling you, the people wide for this kid. Wide. Who could join up, polite? Who could join up? Let's get it in. When you see, yo, when you see the. I already got a promo for it. Watch me. I'm gonna get a date and just get in. Yo, this man, you go visit Atlanta, bro. Let's go visit him out there. Oh, we gotta do that too. Let's go outside. I went already. He ain't gone. Yeah, he ain't right? going. I was there. Yeah, we was there, yo. R.I.P. He was. Yeah. Nah, I don't know. That's not it. Not. What you just gave? I'm fucked. All right, then. Hey, son, it's in my arm. All right, all right. Great. Yeah, I can't have to get that. What's the excuse? Okay. Hey, yo. What's up? Nah, man. Okay, what's this? Yo, okay. Call Shaka and Reggie, see if they come. I call Shaka, man. Reggie and Gordon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Reggie and Gordon. Not Clinton. Oh, I'm staring after the court or something. Yo, man. Hard, yo, I'm going to get on the block. Oh, it's the court, huh? Right here, I got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's your code at, oh, It's outside. Oh, okay. I got on the no, I'm gonna bring Teddy in, man. Maybe you want to come with him. You know what? That thing we talking about when you get all the comedic people come and just drop some shit, man. Right? Put us all in one fucking thing. Call us. Tell them too much. I ain't even tell them too much. Got that fire. No, come on, get on this because the thing is running. Tell them too much. Hey, we got that fire. You know what? Yeah. Yo, you got that fire. Yo, come from the metal guy. Yo, speak, keep forgetting. Yo, listen, word up. I'm the last one. Let him know something. Let him look the fuck out. Tell him. No, 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 where you at? Bathroom? All right. All right, family. So as you can see, this joint is over with the debate. But now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to come on in with Polite, and I'm going to see if I can get Shaka Upmost over here. This is what we do. We try to give y'all people, our people out there some knowledge and information and inspiration. This is what we do on our time. You see, we work for you. That's all y'all need to understand. So, so what if y'all donate a couple of dollars to Brother Sardinetta TV? Come on, family. I deserve that. You don't think we deserve that? 
we need to get some better technology, some better equipment, because they keep coming out with more and more every time. But um, yeah, this is what we got to do. All right, family. So what we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna right. bring on brother Polite. Go ahead, start setting your stuff up, brother. I got you. And uh, what he wasn't able to do, what I would like for you to do, brother, is go over that again, though, because that's what was wow. That? When you showed that, yeah. shit, right? <laughs> you like Woo! that shit. I love that shit. The crowd went Yo. crazy on that. You could, it felt like the walls were shaking. Yo, man, shit. I know they heard us. We was on the sixth floor. So I know they heard us outside like, yo, is that a party going on in there? Yo, the people were fucking. And the way you led up to it was when you showed Dr. Ben. <laughs> and, oh, man, I know Zion Lex was mad as a motherfucker when you said, yeah, King you know. Who's that? King Son. Yeah, say what's up. Hey, what up, brother? What's up? Yeah, we get ready to go in. What, what you sent me? This is going to be one you don't want to miss. So I'm going to just say my Hebrew brothers, man, oh, that nah, was powerful. Even, you know what? I didn't even have It brought us mind. closer together now that the baby's over. You You're you going to see us working yeah. together more. And the yeah, first yeah, one so up, we got Brother Tazoriak on February the 23rd. Sorry, I'll see because I'm going to throw up a video. I did an interview yeah. with him, so I'm going to make sure okay, we get that cool. date right. If I'm wrong, yeah, I'm going to get it right. I'm going to throw that video up for date for y'all, family. And Tazoriak, I asked you BK in the family. They dealing with... um. Cause you know the momentum. What they dealing with? They dealing with uh, with some shit. That's that's very important. Yeah, let's try to get it. It's very important. It ain't got nothing to do with no religion. It ain't got nothing to do with none of that. So segregation, right? They dealing with segregation. Was that bad for us? Good for us? Or something like that? Was it harmful for us as a people? Word. The segregation. Go for it. So we're going to deal with some of that right there with Brother Tazoria. It's going to be live stream as well. Yeah. Uh, and um, you see? What just stay tuned. Look for time. that. We just had a good time. I had a beautiful time yesterday. I loved it. On a Sunday. I loved it. It wasn't no gang shit. See, that's what we be telling y'all. Stop trying to make it look like it was about gang. It wasn't no bloods yeah. and crips in the building. And hold up. No, I'm going to take that back. There was bloods and crips in the building. But there was an audience sitting down getting that information. Yeah, let's do it. Brother Marcus, Supernova stop. came up in there and did his thing. I know Supernova. That's uh, Queen of Four's oldest son, I, I believe it is. Yeah, that was her oldest son. He went up in there and he did it. He had the yeah, Lopes up in there. And the Lopes was learning. So it was all love, man. People came from all over, from Cleveland, from Texas. I mean, you name Word. it, man. It was awesome. Brother Polite, let's get it set up, man. People waiting for you, brother. Cause you're about to go in. You're about to uh, show them some real shit right now. I'm gonna... Let's see. What you said, bro? <laughs> okay. So I'm looking for it. Didn't you buy one of those Mac converters? Yes. Let me get it. All right. All right, brother. So we talking about April 19th, most so like in a bigger spot. Where at? Some may sign a call where they had savings. With SETI. I, I don't know if SETI went there, but um, it's bigger. Which one? It's best. This, this one is good. Okay. Yeah, that shit was fun, though. That shit. You can use this, too, man, because I keep telling your PC got that, too. Yeah, but that, I don't know. I mean, nah, I'm going to just go with what I know. Fuck it. All right. Go with what I know so we can kill it. Yo, I gotta call Shaka. Come on, the people still there. You got 340 up in there. I'm waiting on you to deliver the call. Yeah. I'm so used to my daughter doing this. Shit. Yeah, see? I'll never be doing this.
and I got seven for you. So you do the deduction. You heard? Mm -hmm. You do the deduction on whatever we got. Oh, you, I know you're going to be hitting me with money anyway, so I already know that. Yeah, we're going to talk it. about that. Right? <clears throat> we're going to figure that out. That's what I was calling this morning for. I, uh, you probably busy for it. You ain't do it? You ain't do it? What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Nah, I just got up. They called me, said, well, we had about side. You need to come through. I said, well, yeah. so I said, all right, I'm going to pull up. So. Um, they got me hype. Only thing I was mad at is fucking Shaka broke out, man. Yeah, and he was being kind of negative at one point, man. At the time. That's one thing, man. When people work with you, everybody thinks conspiracy to stop them from shopping. Like, damn, black people be fucking tripping sometimes, man. King Simon is a funny motherfucker. Well, yo, whole tip, brother Saw. Ask polite if I'm supposed to get my 20% for my street yeah, promotion. Yeah, no. Come on, man. He got it. He ain't walking away without getting this shit. You know that. Okay. Come on, King. Right now, family. Let's see how this is. Come on, polite. You gotta know how to do your shit, man. Yeah, look who's talking. Oh, it's up. Okay. Just trying to get the, the sides so right. Shit. Too big. It's right here. It's right here. This here. You just turn that down. Like this is... Oh, yours is wide. That's why. You got your joint wide. Let me see something. Move it up. Move the thing. Up. Move the table up. That's how you do that. Yeah, see? Oh, I got you. Let's move the table up. Move the table up some more. The table. Keep going. Keep going. There you go. Now, now, pump it up some. Pump it up. Hey, yo, um, What's up? please do this before you leave. You going to leave town any soon or what? Yeah, I got to let you right. save it. This is what I need you to do. This is what I need you to do. I need your, um, your thing, your this. For the, for, the, um, for the film, I ain't got. Oh no, nah, I'm going in. I got mad stuff. No, I'm talking about the debate yesterday. Oh, you need I that need too? To okay, cool, cool. Because you want to cross What happened was, I had my thing inside and I didn't cut it on, so I got the debate, but no fucking sound. Word is bomb, bro. For the first part, not your half, wow. but Unc and everybody else and Jonathan, because I, I remember Did you get we took a break. Uh, audio? No, I cut the thing off. You know, like the mic I had up top. I cut the mic off, but the shit was still plugged in. Oh, shit. You understand? So yeah. that means you ain't getting no sound coming what through. What to your guy that did his thing? I got to wait. I'm going to see what's up with him. I got but, you, though. What, you but know? he broke the fuck out, too, man. Because, uh, yeah, what up? Just a small portion of Divine Journey's mission. I want to make sure we got his. Yeah, what's up? <clears throat> yeah, so we getting ready to do this. What's happening? Talk to me. Hey, hey, right Hey, right here. Hello? Hello? Hey, what's up? 
Hello? Yeah, yeah, we good now. Thanks. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we good. We good. I'm about to go in right now. Tell everybody watch. Yeah, tell the family about it. Hey, that. Uh, hey, baby. Hey, we miss you, baby. I'm coming right back. Okay. I'm coming right back. They're about to do a presentation. Okay. All right, I love you, girl. You know that. Okay, Inubu. Yeah. Now, how does this thing work? How you turn this on, sir? Um, did you plug it in? Nah, but I just use the the red light. That's no, you got to plug the thing in, so that way you can move it on your own. Like, let me see something. Where where you plug it in at? On the side. I don't got it. I gave it to you. I gave you the piece to plug in your computer, you bro. That's to one of the other brothers. Uh oh. Don't tell me he walked off with my shit. But let me use the laser. No, hold on, brother. This I think you bad. added an aux computer. No, man. I gave it you to you. You didn't give it to me because I don't know what it's for. Brother, hey, I'm go right here, bro. Say, come on, man. I don't know what it's for. Look Put like it me. inside your joint. Yeah. And it's going to move. That way you ain't got to have somebody to move it for you. All right, let me see something. You got it in there? Yes, sir. Nah, you can't have it in there, man. See if you can move it with your um with your right um uh, buttons over there. With your forward and back button. Right. See? It right. ain't hooked up. Yeah, what up? Yes. I need to call him again. That shit messing me up, bro. I'm gonna take this out. Nah, man, it ain't that, man. Yeah. For what? For what? <laughs> there you go. I'm gonna say, yo, I need to speak to Polite. I'm like, for what? Man, put my man on the phone. Yeah, all right, I'm in that. Hello? All right, now I got it. Huh? What's up? All right, now put that back in there. Put that back in there now. Nah, what he said, my phone did it. All right, let me see something. Leave on your see, there you go. There you go. What's today? Okay. That's cool. Okay, we ready. We ready. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Let's do it in cost. In cash? How much cash? All right, do it in cash. I like it. Peace. Somebody calling you right now. All right, I'm trying right now. Yeah, go ahead. It's on. It's working. I tried it already. How you forward the app right there. Yeah, that's going back. No, you gotta go forward. Why you no, put it I'm, back? I'm just checking it, my brother. I'm checking it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yo, you want me to um hook up the speaker to it? Oh yeah, you're gonna need to do that. Okay.
All right, so when you gonna give me the arm um, the thing? I can get it today before you leave. Yo, let's go over today. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the um the, yeah, 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 the yeah. disc. I need the disc so I can oh, make the, the video. Yeah. All right, let me run back over there. You know I'm a few blocks away. Yeah, I'm gonna go with you. All right, your ass get it. <laughs> Shit, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna be able to catch you for the, you Yo, know. I tell him that come over here and drop the disc. All right, here. You know Put that I mean? inside your arm, um, your sound, and we ready to go. Cause I'm over here, so you know. Yeah, tell him that. All right, cool. All right, everybody. About to drop the lost tapes for <laughs> the last presentation. Hold on, real quick. Cut this on. Make sure everything is ready. Okay, we good. Yeah, so you can hear that. Yeah, that's what I hear all the time. Press stop. Call right at one by somebody else. Uh, I can't see that. Do you use the same call I use? Probably. Because I could plug yours up so you yeah, get see, some on. You see? Oh, I'm calling me. No, you don't. That's Let me call him. Yeah. I thought you had a number in here. I do. Let me show you. I don't put her name. I just put your name because, you know, that's who I'm trying to call. Right, cool. See, this is your phone right here on the top. Yeah. And this is her phone right here, Polite Armanette. Okay, gotcha. All right, let's go away. And it's still chilling. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, do me a favor. When you get a chance, just come through with the footage from yesterday so we can also share it with Sa because he's. Yeah, I can take it right out in that way. It could go right back with you. Yo. Okay, we do that. All right, peace. What's his name? Oh, are you coming? She's coming, but I'm just double checking. Just bear with us, family. We gonna come on. Let's get started, man. She gonna come. We gonna we gonna get. Now that should be tricky. She probably gonna call back. All right, let's get it in. Hold on. All right. Let me put this under here. All right, now you can do your presentation over. That way it'll be clearer right here. Oh, right, cut it on. Last night. Cut it on. No, I'm talking about from here. Cut yeah. it on. It's on? No, because you still see the background. I just wanted to promote my book, my brother. Oh, all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, hold this up, is hold up, book. hold up. Oh, okay. Let's go. This is the new book that I came out with, Kemetic Arcana, uh, or Arcana and the Hebrew Dialectic Subterfuge. The explanation for this particular piece, which is a, it's going to be a four-part publication, and one of them is going to be a magazine, right? And the reason why I have to put it in magazine form is because I'm going to be presenting primaries that have never been Back up, given to our people. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. I'm going to be presenting primaries that's never been given to our people before uh, for my trip in Kemet. So, of course, that's my wife and I on the Giza Pyramid. Uh, it's extremely important, the material that I'm putting forth, because, again, I can guarantee that the data that you're going to see, I can guarantee you've never seen it before because I've been given special access to get into a lot of the tombs, tombs, right, and the pyramids. So with that being said, the footage is very, very important and it's very pertinent to our community that we start sourcing the material I brought so we can have more explanations and so we can expound and we can build amongst each other and, and continue uh, exercising our comedic history and exercising our comedic information. So, yeah, I know this is big talk. Like, man, I got primaries that people never seen before, but it's really real. I really did get access to information that hasn't been presented to us yet. Does this make me the king of all kings in terms of Kemet? No, I'm saying humbly that I, I went out there, got the information, I want to share it back with our people. Oftentimes, uh, people are not given as much as access to the information to be able to document it or record it, video record it, and bring the information back and share it with the people so we can scrutinize it and access another paramount aspect of our 
uh, legacy. So I'm telling you that it's going to be very important. So this, the way the book is written, is written in biography form, right? It's, it's like a biographical sketch, whilst at the same time it's written in a journalistic type of disposition as well, because I'm chronicalizing everything that's taking place from day to day standpoint, everything from the food, the way the environment is and all. So I'm going I'm to put out some of those videos for Sunnetta TV. You're going to get one tomorrow if you don't get one tonight. And I'm going to guarantee you it's going to make you feel good and it's it's going to make you appreciate the, the drive for somebody to go get information. The drive. You're going to love it. And, and the fact that I was able to go on this sojourn with one of my brothers and my wife. You're going to love it. You're going to see us through the, through the town on a tote tote which is like a three-wheel car. You're going to see us being uh, driven from one place to the next by a horse and people carrying chicken in their hands and crossing the street. <laughs> it's going to be so much stuff. You're going to be like, yo, this is cool, man. And I was in like deep in the environment. And it, this type of information we just share with people, like how it looks today in retrospect to what was taking place then, and also to diffuse some of the momentum of the stereotypes that we have about Africa or communities that are in Africa. Because sometimes you think, that the way the comedic community is going hard about Kemet, that after a while they probably are sensationalizing about some of these things. But I'm going to tell you, when you go to Egypt present day, not only do they share the same stance that these are black civilizations, they share the stance that we have as far as what nature means. I got an interview that I did with Sarnetta that I'm going to cross edit where I was breaking down what nature means and how I said it's not God, it's different capacities coming from a source. Because when you see Ankenantin, and you thinking that he came out with this one God monotheistic belief. I'm going to show you in this presentation how that, that concept of one God, how early it was, or how one principle and several capacities that made manifest for you to bear witness to that one divine essence. I'm going to show you how the origins of that idea. I'm going to show you something that pre-exists that. And I'll also confirm that when you're talking about Ankenantin, that there's more like a unique it meant more unique than it meant one God in principle. So, or, or one deity in principle. So you're gonna see the second most revered Egyptologist native to Egypt say the same thing I said before I left. And I met him when I was out there, you know, and it was great that he afforded himself the opportunity to build with us so we could connect. So you're gonna hear people from other religious perspectives and cultural paradigms bear witness to Kemet in the same or similar capacity that we bear witness to, people that are Muslim, people that are Coptic, you're gonna hear them who are native to Egypt still revere us, people of my complexion and my features, my phenotype, they're gonna identify us as the rulers. And that is gonna be powerful, man. And y'all gonna really like it, man. So it's, it's really to share it. So I've seen somebody already say, oh man, we're gonna have to hear about this Egypt trip for years. But uh, we've been hearing about Egypt for years anyway. All I'm doing is bringing some more information to the table. So that's disingenuous because we can talk about police brutality every damn day and we can talk about the Bible every day and keep reading the same verses every day. But if somebody goes to Kemet and they have something new to share with the people or a newer perspective or footage that you've never seen before in places that you keep reading about, now it's, oh my gosh, when, he, when are we going to yeah. stop hearing about it? But what's not fair is that people can challenge you to go somewhere. You go somewhere, and not even because of the challenge, because of the spiritual oh merit of it. People will say that you just do this for money, but then you spend yeah. the money to go somewhere to bring back information. And it's like, you know what? It's as though you can't never make these de uh, detractors happy. So we don't do this for the haters. We don't do it. So I didn't go out there because a hater asked me to go. I was the intention was already to go, and the video happened to be made the day that I was heading out. So all I'm saying is, this is for who appreciates it. If you don't appreciate this information, then don't watch the information. This is to share it with the community that has been making subscriptions to the comedic paradigm for the longest. I guarantee you brothers and you sisters out there that you would love this information, okay? So, though you're gonna get this. No, no, we put it up there for free. We did that. You're gonna get this information, right? Yeah, we was doing it because what happened. Uh, was, this is something from yesterday's you know, presentation that, that I was playing. For their money, so we said we gotta throw it on YouTube. I'm gonna give you a, a, a better one. Yeah, we had to do that. Right, I'm gonna give you a better joint, but uh, let me just put this here. 
right? Right. This was something that was real nice for the community yesterday. I was I went to Dr. Ben to get some blessings from him. I'm going to play the actual interview at another right. time. At the debate, All right. Thanks a lot. I was just referencing the fact that uh, Lex video went up on the same day that I actually left for Kenneth. So normally with the mic drops, they say Yahweh did that. Yahweh dropped the mic. So what I'm saying is, what was the odds that he would speak about it? And that's my wife holding the ticket. I was holding my tickets and my brother Omar. And it was a long flight, so the brother fell asleep. So I was just showing, showing that. And then this is when, you know what? We're missing the volume, actually. I think we're missing the volume. So, or maybe we're not. Hold on. Let me see if we're missing the volume. No, I don't think so. Uh, let's see. Okay, we're not missing the volume. I was supposed to do a narrative. Okay, cool. Yeah, that joint was hot right there. The crowd went crazy when you did when you saw that. But go back to that. Yeah, go in. You want that part? Break that down again. Yeah, so I know his accent for this one. He like this shit. <laughs> you see, one thing I'll give Dr. Ben credit for is this thing that he sent. Dr. Ben sent. You see, one thing I'll give Dr. Ben credit for is this thing that he sent. Dr. Ben said, and I quote, I don't respect any Egyptologist who goes into Egypt in thought and attempts to give you an interpretation of Egypt, Egyptians in our Kenneth's doctrine without having any field work in Kenneth. So contrary to what y'all may think, y'all may look at Polite and, and be moved by the scholarship and be moved by the language, but he has no field work. I'm going to say it again. So. Contrary to what y'all may think, y'all may look at Polite and, and be moved by the scholarship and be moved by the language, but he has no field work. Okay, so what we see here is he used Dr. Ben. He used Dr. Ben to make his point, all right? And the point that he was trying to make wasn't that he really has Dr. Ben in high esteem in his consciousness but he was only giving Dr. Ben credit for saying something that may have worked to our disadvantage. And so the one thing he gives Dr. Ben or what he commends Dr. Ben for was that he says, for us to really experience Egypt, and we should be out there in the field, not just have Egypt in our mind. And it's a point well taken. So Lex is not wrong in a sense of sharing something that was a conviction of Dr. Ben. I just felt it was disingenuous his approach to cite something Dr. Ben said amongst many things, amongst his body of works, and, and commend him for saying something that may have worked to our disadvantage more than it would be something he appreciates in scholarship. Nonetheless, as the Hebrews always see things as, that's God that did that. So there must have been a force that orchestrated this deliberation, because when he made this deliberation on the 21st, I was actually getting prepared to leave to Kemet, but I did it secretly because I didn't want nobody to know, of course. And I was out to, I was leaving for Kemet to stay for almost two weeks. And then when he says, Doc, he's using Dr. Ben to discredit me because even if I got good scholarship, I didn't do the field work. So now I go on to the next slide. And this is, this is the art of debate that I told people, this is where I'm really good at. It's about anticipation. Some things fall in your lap, but you got to know how to, how to catch it if it uh -huh. falls in your lap. So, you know, and even Hashal would tell he said, man, yeah, that shit, that shit worked. <laughs> you know and the bar prospect had to tell me like, yo, you know, it was a, it was a strong move. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to go too far into what they say because I don't want to uh, keep talking, speak too much to what other people were saying on other team. It was just a lot of love nonetheless. So my brother, you know, he's taking up the camera. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. And <clears throat> what I was saying to the family was. It's a shame that when people say things and they're wrong, they say things to get at you. Hi, I just got a point at you, polite. You ain't going to Egypt, and I'm going to use Dr. Ben to substantiate my claim. That's not legitimate yet. Yeah, because you could be a scholar, but Dr. Ben said he ain't even going to acknowledge you until you do that. So when you say that and then you get proven wrong, for Hebrews to be like, man, we don't care, that's being ignorant. Say, you know what? That was a good move. It's chess. You don't get mad at every single move a person makes in response to your move. 
But when you're playing chess and someone make a good move, you say, "Man, damn, that was a, that good, was a good move." I say it all the time. That's how. That's how it is. Yep. So stop taking everything so personal, because then what people will do, they won't take nothing you say serious if you can't give credit when a good move is made. Right. It was a great move. That's it. If you if you actually contend it's a great move, everybody will move forward. But if you fight it, now everybody's gonna be on your heels. So what you do, you just you submit and you say, you know what? That was an excellent move, my brother. And then that's how we move, and we just move forward. Now we can't keep talking about it. So the next the next situation, where's that thing you gave me? Okay, the next I got used to using this. This is nice. So now here it is with me and Dr. Ben. As I'm getting my blessings from Dr. Ben, it's going in the documentary. Right where I talked to him about the Hebrew Israelites, I talked to him about the uh, the movement as it relates to today. Uh, the documentary you're gonna really like it, man. It's a real cool one. All right, it's, it's not personally driven to attack anybody. It's just there to punctuate what we have to offer in the comedic community. So here we'll play this right here. So I'm talking to Dr. Ben and building about Kemet, and it was it was real powerful because he smiled so hard, man. To just know that's the movie making. So here. I just cited the video. This, of course, was the video that just was played. And that was on January 22nd that this video went up. And on January 22nd, I was in the airport heading on out. And then, of course, it's my brother Omar. That's uh, uh, what's Jimmy Cliff's son, Red Gay Legend. That's one of his sons. And, of course, my wife. And then here goes my brother right here. Fell asleep because it's a long trip. And then this is me. We took some video footage of Egypt from an aerial view. Now, this was kind of hard to put together because I had to take all those days of footage and try to do something real quick to make a point in the debate. And then, of course, I was out on visa to Egypt, so this is my stand when I came back to America, right? So, but the point was, yeah, this is my passport right here. You know, I'm going in. Like, man, but it don't stop. Mm -hmm. So, I, and, you know, I'm going in, I jazzed it up at the debate, like, oh, so, okay, what Dr. Ben said. So I said, he's giving me blessings for something. Then I show you the flight, so I was like, oh, where am I going? You know, <laughs> and then I show you Egypt from an aerial view, and I show you the plane landing. And the crowd went crazy. The crowd went crazy. They like, oh shit, uh oh. And from that point forward, we's gonna be going in. So, uh, you know, you we, ain't never ride a camel before, huh? How that felt? Camel, that shit was fly. Was How fly. that felt? Let me take my time. Let me eat my leaf. Look a lot of my leaf. Yeah. God damn. I mean, sure. Yeah, we could come here to be the friend of these parents. Take a look at how it looks on the inside. Go in there and go down there. If I call some phone, I'll be like, get me the fuck out of here. How far was it down there? Oh, deep. Wow. You got to have good legs. Damn. So, and that's my brother, O. He was doing a little something ritual and giving thanks to the ancestors. And he was leaving something. He left an apple there, some water. It was all symbolic. And we was able to uh, plant it in places that we wanted in the Great Pyramid. Uh, Cause what what the people don't know is that when I trace my bloodline back to find out that I was of the Evo tribe, and I know people say Evo, Evo, Hebo, Hebrew, and they do all of that. Well, my family that's of the Evo tribe, they trace their lineage back from Egypt, from their migration from Egypt on into Nigeria. So what happened was I've been planning the chip to go to Egypt, but first I went to Nigeria because that's where my DNA said I was from, and when I went there. They gave me the knowledge on the migration from Egypt to Nigeria, only to find out that I have family that's their job is to protect the pyramid sciences. And because of that, there's an order there where some people have access to the pyramids on scholarship paths and also for security of the pyramids. So it was I was able to get immediate access because of the people that I'm related to based on being of the Kemet stock having migrated down to Nigeria. So you'll see this on documentary. So when you see the type of footage that I'll be bringing back, the resources I'll be bringing back, the sources, you're gonna say no scholars ever giving you that access. And when I say access, I mean from top to bottom, every square foot of the pyramid I've chronicalized, I've taken a picture of everything. 
videotaped every square foot, not of one pyramid, not of two pyramids, not of three pyramids, temples, all assets. And then I went to some tourist locations. But this is going to be backed up when you see it. When you see it, you're going to be like, oh, shoot, it's real. I mean, there's no sneaking around taking place. I mean, when when's the last time you've seen somebody go in the Great Pyramid and pray and chant at their leisure? I'm in there with my wife, and those are snippets of what we was doing. Those are snippets. And like I said, if you are not down with this information, don't be stressed out on the chat right now and, and, and talking. Leave. This is for my family that subscribes to the Comedic Science and anybody that has an interest in it. So this is not here so you can kind of look at it. Hopefully we can find something else wrong. With the no, this is something for our community to say, look, it's always been held against us. Oh, they ain't going to allow you in the pyramids. Oh, y'all can't go back in there. And y'all ain't got no bodies. Then when we find the bodies, but why y'all trying to see dead bodies? You see, it, this is the corny stuff about people when they make arguments. They challenge you, and then next thing you know, you give them the proof, and they get upset. So what I'm telling you is all access. And that's why in, in September, we're heading out. And if anybody is interested in going to Egypt in September, we're heading out. We, we making a mass exodus there because it's a powerful place and it's the first time I ever went somewhere in this world on this planet where I didn't have to convince people that we sat on the throne and I'm of the same genetic stock. When they see you there, this is word to everything I love. You come with us, whether we are in Cairo, in Memphis, or we fly, uh, or Giza, old Cairo, or we fly to Luxor and we stay in Karnak, or you go to Aswan, or Elephantine Island, Nubia, Philae. It doesn't matter where you go, Koomba, it doesn't matter where you go. I guarantee you it will be a recurring theme of people being excited that you are there and they identify you as their family members. These are even the pale Arabs. They will look at you and they will tell you that they know you sat on the throne and they have respect for you. They don't admonish you. They have found it within themselves to appreciate you as the predecessors of that land. They acknowledge it. It's the first time I've been anywhere where black people have been acknowledged as reigning supreme. In America, all the damn movies is whitewashed. And you're going to see footage when I tell them I, 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 how amazed I am at their convictions and their acknowledgments of black civilization, particularly early black civilization. And when, I, and when they ask me, why are you acting like this is a big thing? You're going to see it on video. They're going to say, when I tell them that the movies are full of Europeans, when they portray the Egyptians, they look nothing like me. You're going to see them laugh hard as hell on the camera. And they're going to look amazed, like, what the hell is going on in America? Their curriculum out there stipulates that it was all black people, the black people that are kidnapped that's living in America today. That's what they teach out there, that we are the kings and queens. And when you see the video, it's going to have you stressed out, like, what the hell is everybody else talking about? It's the only place I've ever been. This is why I said, yo, I cried. My man cried, Omar, and my wife cried. And guess what? Even today, I had to tell me, yo, pull it together, brother. Because I was about to cry again. I ain't going <laughs> to cry. He said, pull it together, brother, because you don't know what it is. Even if I, I, I didn't even have it in me to do the debate when I came back. I didn't even have it in me. The brothers had to get me back on. You see, when I did that gang video, I did that because I know people would talk about it once. I mean, I also did it because I was mad as a motherfucker about niggas threatening my life. Let them know you did that before you left. They don't know. Exactly. It's chess. So I, I did the gang video for two things. One, GMS was threatening to murder me and murder my baby. That's one. They threatened to murder me and my baby. And I was hot. And we was about to go out at lunch. And Cats was like, yo, like you about to go to Kimmit, man. Yo, relax it, homies. The gang homies is like, yo, we got it. I'm like, man, you know what? I'm y'all leaders. I can't be doing that. You know what I mean? Like, these brothers is walking well, with hold me, on, hold and on. they appreciate me. I can't send them that road. But make no mistake about that shit. It was nothing fake about that. This is real talk. It was real. All right? That's the only reason why them brothers ain't pop off. Y'all better, because of this man right here, that wasn't no fake shit. That was real. Word up. So, you know, brothers was hot and they was ready to go off, but they was like, polite, you about to go to Kevin. Don't even be involved with nothing like that. We got it. Then I'm like, you know what? I don't want y'all brothers to know. They say you do this all the time. But like, you be mad as hell. Somebody in that conscious community, if somebody say something, you be mad, and then you turn around and say, leave it alone. I'm like, yep. man, just leave it alone. 
Our gods are stronger than those those guys, man. Our deities, our nature, I should say more appropriately, our nature is the force that influences the hand. So you know what? It is what it is, man. If they it'll get their justice, I'll leave it alone. I I because I am going to Kemet after all. When I was in Kemet and I started experiencing all these things, word of my life, man, word to everything I love. I didn't even want to do a debate when I came back. I was somewhere else spiritually. Like I was able to pray in the pyramids, man. I was able to chant in the pyramids at my leisure with my wife to celebrate our 17th anniversary just a little bit earlier. Because as I was saying earlier but in, uh, in the show, when I first learned about Kemet, it was through Dr. York. He had at, at Eatonton, Georgia, 404 Shady Dale Road, 476 acres of land where he erected a uh, pyramidal culture, right? Or a stylized Egyptian culture over there. So we had pyramidal structures or pyramids. We had the obelisk or tech, and we we, uh, we had sphinx blowing water out their mouths from both sides of a bridge that you walk by. The sphinx are blowing water out their mouths. Museums, black people just walking around feeding you food for free, children running around, nobody's worried about their children gonna be kidnapped, and everybody's just positive, and it was thousands of people on the land. And I didn't even know I was going to that land. I know I was going to see what New Orleans do, but I wasn't too sure what I was really going for. It was a trip to get out of the state, and for me that was big, because I was a dude, I normally just stay in my state and hustle and do what I do. So when I started getting in tune with the knowledge, I just took the trip because I thought these people were some positive people, and I, I was thinking about making a change in my life. When I got to Tamaray, man, I came back home. I told my wife, she tried to feed me some lo mein and sausage, and I said, I don't eat that no more. She looked at me like, nigga, like the way my wife attitude was back then, I just cooked all this food, all the time I put in, and you telling me, I said, that's poison. Now, I didn't read nothing in particular that told me that at that time. It was, or if I did, I wasn't really impacted by it. It was when I went on that land, it's the first time I seen black people in that kind of glory. And it was in present day. And I ain't know nothing about a pyramid. I didn't really care about pyramids. So maybe I've seen it or heard about it before, but you know, in the public school system, I ain't never really learned about no damn pyramids or Egypt like that. So I, I, I'm, in, I'm in my teens, having gone on the land and I'm like, yo, what is this? And I'm meeting people telling me about Egypt I'm not too sure what's going on. I really didn't know much about Egypt at all. I ain't know much. So being on that land was a huge experience. And when I got back, I told my wife, yo, I don't drink soda no more. I'm not chewing no gum. You know, she's like, what's this about? I'm like, I don't even know. I'm just trying to do the right thing. I'm not too sure why I'm doing anything I'm doing. I just know I just don't want to do this no more. To do what? Whatever, the way I was living, I just want to live different. I can't explain it, but I'm, I'm going to take you there. So the next time they had an event for people to go on the land, I got my wife and I brought her there. She had a similar experience. When we left, suddenly she just didn't want to perm her hair no more. I mean, she read a good book, it was fly. But being on that land did something for her and it brought us closer. We used to argue a whole lot, man. We used to get real violent and shit. And she's very violent. She she wanna hit you when she mad. That's what my wife used to be. You know what I'm saying? I used to be threatening her and everything, man. I'll kill you, bitch. You better stop this. This how <laughs> this how we used to be, man. We was young, we was dumb, we was crazy so when we got on that land i swear to you we never had an argument like that again till this day we never had an argument like that again we went on that land and something just conditioned you to say i'm better than this because we seeing the statues and everything we got to ask everybody about everything we didn't know shit about kimmy the first kimmy i ever went to was in georgia you know what i'm saying so with my wife and i we come back we just start changing our life like yo we got to start studying because if we feel like we changing we know our change is right but we need some more uh, impetus for thought. So we're going to start studying. So it's through Dr. Yo, we start studying about Kemet. You dig what I'm saying? So when the land got taken and they bulldozed, bulldozed over the pyramids and everything, a part of Aminette and our relationship was taken from us. You see what I'm saying? That shit hurt. You know what I'm saying? And then you see people gloating that's black, happy that a black man's land been overthrown because that black man disagreed with their culture or wrote books about their culture and said they don't like it. But you see the evil and wickedness in black people. Because they'll tell you the white man is the devil all the time. And then when the white man make an accusation against the black man, suddenly he can tell the truth. But in the previous lectures, he, there is no truth in him. He's a liar. Everybody that's black in prison is a political prisoner of conscience. They tell you all this shit. But when that black man who was against your doctrine or disagreed with your doctrine and did it scholastically, when he gets incarcerated, even when the FBI lead witnesses, over 10 lead witnesses recant their testimony and said they was called us by the government 
to make false testimonials and they do video testimonials, this still isn't enough for our people to say that maybe he is innocent. I'm not saying he is, I'm saying I believe he's innocent, but I never was in his bed. I don't know if it's true or it's false, but I contend that I believe that he's innocent. I reserve the right to, to feel like Dr. York is innocent because I've never seen a case where over 10 people that took a stand did video recording saying that he didn't do it. And FBI people uh, coerced them into making false testimonials, including the number one lead witness, Habiba Washington. So that kind of got me like, yo, she said she can't sleep at night knowing that an innocent man has gone to prison because of, of a lie that she has made, but she was called us. So I, when I saw that, I'm like, yo, because I'm like, yo, if it was me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't turn around and say I did something like that. I, but it's easy for us to say that. But I don't know what the terms and conditions was until Dr. York told me. So nonetheless, so I don't digress. When I had to make this trip to Kemet for research, it was happening around the time where they commemorate their revolution. <clears throat> so they commemorate their revolution. You know, when you go on TV and you see CNN, you see people wilding out in Egypt. It's not like that every day. But when it was moving out, moved by wreck out of out of office, they wanted him out. The people organized, got a million and a half people to come at Tahrir Square. The Tahrir Square is adjacent to the Cairo Museum, which is where I had to go on the first day. So I was telling my wife, like, I just got to bring two homies with me because I want to do research. I got to carry a lot of equipment around. I got to load this material up. I got to edit it. I got to chronicleize everything, itemize all the information. And I got to be on point day to day. Otherwise, it's going to be too much information that we're recording. We got to conserve space. We got to edit it down. We got to do this day to day after our findings because I'm working on books here to let people know what I'm finding, what I'm seeing. So because it was like that, I'm like, baby, you got to fall back. This, then my wife told me, like, nah, listen, when Tamaray got taken, when that land got taken, that's the first time we ever saw a pyramid. It's the first time we ever started to really respect each other as king and queen or as a god and a goddess. It's the first time. It's the first time that we ever, ever really appreciated each other and, and took ourselves out of the gender-specific war that we engaged in. So she's like, look, I'm down for the research, baby. I want to know everything that I could possibly know as you know it too, so we can grow together. So I don't care how volatile the situation is. I'm by your side and we know that nature ain't going to put us in a compromising position because something is compelling your spirit to go and something's comparing my spirit to go. So I just feel internally that that's a place we need to both go to. And when that land got taken, they took a part of us, but that land was not the original archetype. Kemet is where it's at. The black land is where it's at. So you know what? She like, that's still there. So we got to go over there, baby. This was this my wife telling me like, yo, if you go, that's fucked up. That's exactly what she told me. She's mad. She like, just thinking that I was about to go, she wasn't going to go. She like, yo, you don't know how significant that is to go to. And when she put it in that perspective, I wasn't even thinking. I'm like, yo, that would be fly for my wife and I to go. So we had to now organize our funds and do things differently to make sure we can get out there. I made sure my wife go because that, that's real. My wife, she's like, our anniversary is coming up in March 9th. She like, this will be an early anniversary gift. You know, let's go out there and let's celebrate our 17th anniversary. Because it's really when we went to the Kemet in America that we really got together. It's really when we went to the Kemet in America where we really, really started to appreciate each other. When we was teenagers. I like, I can't, I can't. You know, women convincing, man. And I mean, it ain't like she asked me for a jacket. It ain't like she asked me for some new shoes. It ain't like she's saying, baby, you go to Kim and I stay back here. I'm gonna be doing my thing. She's like, she felt the way if I went out there and she didn't go. So I had to make a part of the research team. She'd be helping me out anyway when I'm putting out my books and everything, whether it's typing on the graphic and designs or posting on the websites and everything. So I'm like, yo, baby, let's get it. <clears throat> so she, she left with me, she came with me and my brother Omar. You know, and he was just feeling good. Like he couldn't believe that I even asked him to come with me. Like, so the experience is ill. So his his testimony is fly too. He gonna do something on the couch too and build with the people. So that's that's what it is, a love story. This is miss a debate. But when we got out there, man, I was so overwhelmed by the, re the receptivity of the people having embraced us for who and what we are historically. And they Muslims and they're Christians and they deeply embedded into that psychology of religion. But they acknowledge, like, yo, y'all, it ain't not only acknowledges as the kings, not, oh, pagan kings, 
They acknowledge us as great people when Egypt is great, because right now, Egypt is not in the same place, and they look at us as the people who have the intellectual property to put it back where it needs to be. How I know this, because this is what I'm being told by Egyptologists, licensed Egyptologists, one of which is the second most revered, or revered, Ahmed, or Amr, Amr Elway. This guy's the second most revered Egyptologist out there, and, and alongside commoners or locals, in addition to other Egyptologists that we've been confronted by, and as we just start building with them, and then they sink into day three or day four, where we realize, like, yo, the reason why, because we ask, like, how come y'all keep calling us royal family? How come everybody keep calling us cousin? We done travel eight hours apart distance from one place in Egypt to the next. We flew one hour, it's eight hours if you're driving, uh, we flew one hour from Cairo on into Luxor, only to hear the same approach. What's up, cousin? What's up, brother? We go to Nubia, <clears throat> and at the time, I totally forgot. I heard it a couple times. I didn't even know Dr. Ben had a village out there in Nubia. Mm. You dig? Like, shit slipped me. I mentioned Dr. Ben when I'm in Nubia, and you go see the Nubians, I swear, mad at them look like Sarnetta, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. shit crazy. I'm going to show you some people that look like they're related to you. They look like us. Probably their teeth structure just a little different. And that's based on diet and all that other stuff. But if you look, I swear, the way your haircut is right now, mm-hmm. you'd be like, yo, he do look like you're a family member. He just looked a little darker, the brother that I saw. I mean, that, and I was like, that looks like Sarnetta. Haircuts and all that? Haircuts just like your head right now. Who cut their hair? They yo, they ain't like that. They the Egyptians don't cut their hair in the first place. Uh-huh. So those Muslims, like when we was out there, my man thought him having a beard would have him looking like a Muslim and everything. And that shit was like uh, being a terrorist out there. They look at, like that shit is like being black in America. If you got a bid, they pull you to the side and want to talk to you. Uh. I'm not bullshitting. Like they see terrorists, that's a trademark of terrorists. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so him having that bid and his name was Omar, it was like, yo, they don't need to. They took him off the plane and took him in the back. I mean, when y'all get off the plane. Yeah, not because he black, because he had Omar. a bid. And then because uh, his name was Omar and he had a bid and he was trying to wear a jolly beard. Well, they say Galabir because they don't use the gene, they use gin, right? So they say Galabir. And in Egypt, they cut their beards off because they follow after their ancestors, right? Right. Because their ancestors oftentimes didn't wear beards or long hair because they felt like it could be used against you military-wise. That's where the military get their idea from. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's why you can see them holding their hair. <clears> right at the, every temple, you see that before you go in the temple. They're uh-huh. holding someone's hair. You dig what I'm saying? So him going out there wearing a Galabir and beard, he was at the, the uh, Great Pyramid of Giza. I got some of the footage. He did this. He was trying to do something for like the prayer system of Kenya, uh-huh. right? Like how Aminette and I was doing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? With your left foot forward, because that's the side of your heart, so you want to get off on the right, right step. You know, all this military stuff, left, left, right, left, and all that, that come from Kimmy, man. But anyway, he liked this, but they thought he did this. See how my finger is? Uh-huh. And he, he was doing some, some praying and everything, so they was kind of looking at him. He had a galabir on, and it was a little bit shorter. And he had a beard. So it wasn't that he was black, it's because he had a beard with a gala beard and he was doing this at the pyramid. So out there, this means I'm gonna bust all you motherfuckers ass. I'm calling war on you because there's a group called the Brotherhood out there. And this was on the 25th and on January 25th is when the revolution began out there for them to try to get Mubarak out of there. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So the Brotherhood is a terrorist group to them out there. And this is their symbol. So when he's on the pyramid doing this with that beard, Yo, security, everybody ran. The people was out there like, yo. So, you know, and then yeah. he don't speak no Arabic, nothing. So I had to come clean the shit up. He gonna tell his crazy story. But everybody started laughing after that because he thought wearing the gala beer and the big bed was being Muslim because, you know, we from out here. So he's like, yo, I'm gonna fit in. You know what I'm saying? So now they looked at it like this nigga's wearing a gala beer. He got this bed and he's putting his hand up like this. Oh, yeah, he terrorist. So there's, they had to surround that nigga. They're like, where you from? We had to go to the embassy and all this shit. Yo, it was funny, though, because when they found out that he thought he was trying to look like a Muslim, they're like, oh, we're not, we not extremists. We don't believe we have to wear all of that. And we don't grow our beards here in Egypt. We do it just like the Egypt of old. Your ancestors was cleaning their cleaning they joints off. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. why would you think that this is Islam? He's like, yo, in America, the Muslims grow their beds. He's breaking it down. So they was like, what's going on? That's not Muslim. That's not Islam. We don't. We wear jeans and shit over here. Like, you know what I'm saying? You'll see it. Then we start looking, and we're like, damn. Our, pers- our perspective is Islam crazy. And they really are. Yo, people need to travel, because their version of Islam, Talk about the club. they embrace Kemet. 
talk about the club. Y'all went out <laughs> of the town. Oh man, we gonna go. We gonna kill that. We gonna kill that because I'd rather have the pitches whip it. You know okay. what I'm saying? I'm gonna give you that. But Kimmy had hospitals. It had a club. It, it had uh, schools. We went to all of them. Like when I say hospital, we see M Hotel right there. We see the tongs. We see the the sink where they gotta wash their hands first. We see the joint to hit a heartbeat stethoscope. Yo, this shit have it'll fuck you up. Part of my language. But that that's like the that's the way I could best express it to the niggas in the hood. Like this shit will fuck you up when you see an actual hospital, right? That people go to to get their eyes checked for cataracts. Cause this was for uh, for Horace, right? Who's like Horace, but he was the brother of Nephi's and Arset. So this temple was consecrated for him and also uh Sobek at Koombo. So Beck, the the deity, the alligator deity or nature. Uh, they was they were seen as extremely fertile, and the waters was filled with alligators. So, in representation of Sobek, they set up a fertility clinic there. So, anybody that was having either menstrual problems or having uh, problems with birth, they went over there to help fix the problem. So that was their fertility fertility clinic and eye doctor. Because Horus, right? This is Horus, who's the brother of Nephi's and Arset. His symbol is the falcon, and the falcon can see from a far distance for his prey, right? So they associated that for the eye. So anybody that had eye problems also went over there. And all this is on the walls, you're gonna see it. So I'm like, yo, what the freak? You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, eye doctor, fertility clinic, for people having pregnancy issues and anything, and then we going into the offices and everything in there. I'm like, yo, I was, I was just somewhere else. I didn't wanna do no damn debate when I got back. Cause I'm like, this debate is a damn disgrace. To have people talk so negative about African culture, it's the fact. I'm not saying Egypt is perfect, but what I'm saying is the fact that it's proven and it's clear that black people created a civilization like this thousands of years ago, we shouldn't step on that. We shouldn't shit on that. I don't mind my brothers having a Hebrew culture, but don't try to denigrate uh, Kemetic figures or destroy the legacy of, of Kemet, because when you're talking about Nile Valley civilization, it's not limited to just Kemet alone. You're talking about Nubia. You know, Aswan is the marketplace. So you got to understand this. Like, whenever they build the stones and temples out there, there's three types of things they either use. And now they're using sandstone, limestone, or granite. Aswan is the marketplace. Everyone throughout the course of Africa over there goes to Aswan to get their materials or their resources. So any anything you see that's granite, that's from Kemet, it didn't come from Kemet. Kemet left to Nubia to go to Aswan to get the granite from there. Why did they use these things? Sandstone is nice because you could build something real fast. But when you're dealing with the neck of statues, it can fall off. It's susceptible to uh, being weathered down quicker. So they wouldn't want to use sandstone because it could build fast. You can build with it fast, but it'll break down quicker. Then they would use limestone. Now, limestone is uh, good. It's a medium. I'm going to go back to that. Then you got granite. Granite is real durable, but it takes a long time to cut and break it down to mold. So limestone was the medium it don't take too long to cut and it's more durable than uh sandstone so it's more durable than sandstone and it's quicker to cut than granite so they used to they made a lot of limestone structures and that's based on the sciences oh, i'm going on a trip I'm, you just learn this shit just going around and visiting places so i'm like whoa this is deep because you know and then even when you go to the pyramids you see there's a lot of smooth places right and whenever they have a bunch of glyphs all over a wall, but then they leave a place smooth, like for instance, the Tekken, right? The obelisk. People keep saying, yo, that represents penis. That represents penis. No, you got to listen to this. The smooth obelisk, you'll notice that the smooth surface on the top is less smooth for a reason, because they will cover that with copper or silver or gold. Why? They cover it with copper, silver, or gold because they will use the obelisk as a landmarker as a lighthouse or as a sundial. So anywhere you see a bunch of glyphs, you'll wind up seeing a smooth layer with no glyphs on it. Why they do that? Because when the gold is wrapped around that smooth part of the obelisk, it refracts, it refracts light, it redirects light, it bends light. So what would happen is if you was out in Kemet in the nighttime, it would be a landmarker. You would know if you was uh, heading in the right direction towards the temple. It was also a lighthouse because it was giving light for people to see what was going on in the area. But it was also a sundown, especially when it's daytime, because the shadow would be cast during different times in the day. So they used it as a clock. But all brothers say is it's a penis. And technically, or obelisk in, in metal nature just means needle. 
it, it, it takes on that idea through certain stories for symbolic reasons because of its shape. But it wasn't exclusive to being a penis. They used it as a sundial. They used it as a landmarker. And they used it as a lighthouse. And it means needle. So this is why I began frustrated when I hear people just looking for anything gay. And that's how I start feeling about the Israelites. It's like everything's gay to them. They see the world through homosexual eyes whenever it's something dealing with Kemet and you can't be like that. That's being, you can't, you can be whatever way you want to be. Let me correct that. It's biased to be one, to want to be taken serious in scholarship. You can't reduce everything you see from hindsight to being homosexual. Cause now no one's going to be able to appreciate your arguments. And then whenever you speak, now you're going to wonder why Kemet people just be like, man, we don't want to hear nothing you say because you're being immature about your argument. Keep it real. So I'm giving you the information. So if ever you see a smooth surface on those structures, it's real. If you go to the West, that's where they bury their dead because it's symbolic of the sun setting. If you go to the East, that's where all the temples are and society is at. So you go to the Valley of the Kings, it's in the West. And then when you go to Hatshef's temple, what you're going to see, she put her temple in the middle because they had the Valley of the Kings, they had the Valley of the Queens, they had the Valley of the Nobles, and they had the Valley of the Workers. So they bury people in uh, different places strategically. Yet, if you're going down the Nile Valley and you and you and you're going through Nubia, then what you're going to find is you're going to have the one of the earlier Valley of the Kings, or Valley of the Nobles, where they also buried their governors, and that's at the West Bank of the Sahara Desert. And if you cut through the Sahara Desert right there, you'll wind up in Libya. So when we talking about Nile Valley civilization, like to be there, it's like, oh, that's just right down the block and to the left and to the right. So to be there, it's like I actually got a visual for everything that I've ever been studying. So when you read it in the words, it's one thing. But then when you're actually seeing it, some places is closer than you conceptualize. And that's why I see why Dr. Ben was saying what he was saying, because the information being brought to life. And it's not like there's a little bit of information. Like we deal with the Bible, we're going to have to review the Bible every day, every day, every day. Same verse, same verse, same verse, same verse. When you go to Kemet, any one of you can go to Kemet and come back here and present an idea to us that is fairly unique or has been undermined because it's so much that you have to travel and visit. Like in Cairo, we went to Old Cairo, went to Memphis, went to Giza, okay, and we went to Saqqara, right? And then to go down, we had went to, uh, when we flew, we went to Luxor, went to Karnak, Aswan, Nubia, Nile Valley, Elephantine Island, Kon Ombo, and Filet. And the beauty about Filet is that the, the, the island was about to sink. 200 meters away, they took 40,000 stones and recreated the island. So I'll show you where the old island was, and this is where they erected all, the Temple of Osset. Why is that important? Because this is where it was said that Osset found one of the 14 parts, which was the left leg of Osiris. So the Temple of Osset was erected at the Temple of Filet. Filet is also the last place that they found hieroglyphics. So the, the last place they found hieroglyphics was also at Filet, the island of Filet. So you see, like this, I'm telling you, that trip just got me on a whole nother vibe. So I, when I was time, when it was time to come back, I didn't want to do the debate because I felt it would be disrespectful to share the stage with people that would embark upon a deliberation that would be saturated in anachronisms, which means they'd be misappropriating dates and times to conform to their ideology. That's what an anachronism is, one. So I felt it was going to be disingenuous. You know, it's one thing to deal with people dealing with hardcore issues. That would be a powerful debate. But after having but after having that experience, I had to be talked back into doing the debate, man. Because I was like, I'm coming from somewhere else, and I didn't want to be reduced to nothing too aggressive. When I left, I put out that gang video. One of the other reasons I put it out, aside from people threatening me, that I left one like, yo, wait till I get back. Because they was like, yo, bro, you about to go to Kimmit. Don't get yourself involved with that. You going to Kemet for a reason. Look at Kemet's right there, and you about to get into this. Just go to Kemet, bro. Don't 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 sacrifice that. So I said, man, you're right, man. And then the second reason is I wanted them to contemplate on that while I'm gone because when people watch the video, they'll be thinking about that gang stuff so much they would never think that I'm in Africa while they watching the video. So it was a it was a great setup because whenever someone see the videos, as though it just happened that day. And when you talk about it, you're still reliving it. So that whole time, your mind be preoccupied with that gang thing, not knowing I'm over here praying inside of a temple. It's the last thing you're going to know or think of. You wouldn't be able to conceive that this guy's probably in the Great Pyramid, praying with his wife, uh, celebrating uh, their relationship for their 17th yeah. year anniversary, a little bit earlier than March 9th. That's the last thing people was going to think about. So it was all chess, too. It was chess, but the energy and emotion was very real.
and the trip came in right in time and, and it really codified my wife and I's relationship. So this is just personal. I'm sharing this for those who appreciate it because if you can, when we go out September, try to bring somebody in your family, especially your child. I got, I felt bad. I didn't uh, bring my daughter, man. But you know, I was there really for research and the research incentive got larger when we got there. And I was able to really appreciate the culture, man. It, it, like I said, man, it's the first place I've ever gone to in my life where I didn't have to struggle with people about who and what we are in, the, in our inception. When you hear in America, your history starts in school from slavery, and then you work your way up to the greatest martyrs, Malcolm X and Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King. So this person was great. He was great. What happened? He got shot. This person was great. He was great. What happened? He got shot. So this becomes a legacy that we have to fight against. Then you see movies and the Egyptians are white. So after a while, it's like, yo, <clears throat> damn. And then you got to have debates with Hebrew Israelites about who the Egyptians are. Then they're going to tell you nobody believes what you're saying. Everybody else in the world don't believe that. And after a while, right. it's like, man, let me get over there and let's see what's going on. But I ain't really going there thinking the pale Arab. I ain't really going there thinking the pale Arab is going to identify with the situation. I ain't really thinking I'm going to go over there and just the regular people who were native to the land today are going to conceptualize on Egypt in similar capacity. So when I went there and I didn't have to put up a fight, when I'm like, I'm not even going to talk to people about black greatness out here and there's African civilization. I'm just going to come here and do my research. I know it's us. It's the first time I know it's us and the people that occupy the land as well know that it's us. First time that's ever happened to me. And if you're not a scholar or a committed person when it comes to research, you wouldn't understand where I'm coming from. But the reason why I want to cry every time I bring this up because we're fighting to establish who and what we are in history, even amongst our own brothers. So to finally see this conviction shared with people native to a land that can easily say, I was born in Egypt, that's my ancestors. For them to turn around and say, that is y'all. Y'all are the original kings and queens. And not that is y'all, and we detest those guys. That is y'all, and we can't believe you have come back home. And when you see the videos from several people saying it, you're going to be in shock. I took videos of every person that was taking pictures that kept asking, yo, can, can we get a picture with you? People rubbing our skin to see if it's really us. Come on, man. Y'all have no idea that. Yo, I'm telling you, man, if you into this knowledge, if you into this research, after putting up fights with your, your Christian family and putting up fights with your Catholic family and your Muslim family and putting up fights with brothers in the conscious community or, uh, pardon me, in the religious community, trying to take away everything that we say that we had and you finally go somewhere and I'm still on my guard everywhere I go I'm on my guard because I know someone's trying to take away our comedic legacy someone's trying to disassociate me from Kevin everywhere I go I'm binding myself to this great African civilization that is not just limited to Kemet but abroad as far as the Nile Valley is concerned I always have a defense mechanism when I'm in America but for the first time I could travel anywhere throughout this land, this geographical locale called Kemet or called Egypt to date. And I ain't need a defense mechanism. And it took four or five days for me to take it down because I couldn't believe when they kept calling me brother and kept calling my wife goddess and kept calling the three of us royal family. I thought they just wanted tourist bucks. That's the state of mind I was in. Like these niggas just want me to spend money. But then even the Egyptologists, Everyone by those temples bear witness to us and, and wondered why we wasn't having our, tres, our chest protruding because we have every right. This will freak you out when you see people that you identify as white or pale Arabs teaching that these were great black civilizations and this is in their curriculum. This would freak you out. This is like if you ever saw a movie called with John Travolta, it's called... Uh, Damn, what's this movie called? You need to see this movie. I'm gonna think about it. It's a movie with John Travolta, where John Travolta, where the the races have been switched. Do you know this movie? It's a good movie. The black people are in the white position, the white people are in the black people's position in society. So white people kept being pulled over for police uh, racial profiling, and they was getting beat up by <laughs> yo. It's so deep. And in the beginning, the movie starts off 
with, with black people with Afros sitting at a table in locks and they're dark skinned and they say, man, why do you suppose those white people uh, just go through crime and, and do so much crime all the time? And then the, the lady with the Afro was like, you know, she's talking to the lady with the locks and it's like, you know, well, they was put in poverty, you know, by people in the center. So that created, but then you had another person say, uh, don't white people just lazy. And that's, that's how they was created. You know what I'm saying? A Chinese man wrote this movie, all right? And it's so deep because you even have a part of the movie where John Travolta is, is going on hardships and he, and his son for his birthday wants to buy a toy. He's always watching TV. And when he, when he watches TV, White Man's Burden, that's the name of the movie. You gotta see it. It's called White Man's Burden. It's a real cool way to teach about our social political disposition because they, they switched the places and showed the world through a different scope of eyes as it relates to race. It's called White Man's Burden. If you've never seen the movie, you will love it. And you got the white boy watching TV. Cause I, 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 give this, I gave that video to my daughter, Renente, who's running the New Covenant uh, Youth Party. And it's, it's mandated that the youth watch that as part of their material for, for assimilating more progressive thoughts and political ideas so they can come up with some unique political ideas to execute in this day for their generation. So White Man's Burn is a good movie. You have the little white boy, whenever he watches TV, it's nothing being said. The father comes in the room, his son is watching TV, and he keeps seeing different black images being projected is great. And all the toys is black and everything. And the white man is just like this, looking like, damn, they ain't the white man is like, they ain't gonna show no white people on TV, are they? He just got this face like, damn, and my son like watching TV, shit. Then for that little boy's birthday, he wants a toy. <coughs> the toy is too expensive for John. So John is like, come on, you can't get a cheaper toy? But he said, daddy, the, the only cheaper toy, the cheapest toy they got is this one, and I don't want that. The cheapest toy was the white toy. So psychologically, they put less value on that doll and it's, and it's intimated that that doll is worthless and you know that's associated that's a mental game where they're associating value with race or complexion so they express that through the artistry of that movie and that's why i really like the movie because it was saying a lot of things without saying it but through the sentiment of what was taking place by a perception you actually can assimilate the data easier. It was easier to digest than if someone just said it to you that, that likes to fight and be combative about the issues of today. <clears throat> White man burden is good. They just said, can you go through a few more slides? All right, cool. No doubt. So I will go through some of the slides, man. But yo, you know, I'm just sharing right now with the family, man. Uh, it's not always about attacking and going in hard. So, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm gonna go through some of these slides, man. So, yo, so this is another one right here. But, I, you know, I just don't want to do no in just disservice to the people because I'm about to have uh, some powerful stuff come out for you. Tomorrow, I guarantee, I'm going to share some nice stuff. It's going to be a nice uh, promo for the documentary. And you're going to be like, my goodness, that documentary is going to be fire when it come out. You know, Hidden Colors is a great situation. We're looking to do something like that with Kimmy. So this is my, this of course is me, my brother Omar, and my wife Aminette. You know, it's weird, you're in the desert, but these clothes are really more conducive for the desert, which again makes me come back to America and say, man, why the hell y'all wear these clothes? It's, you would think that wearing this scarf is not good for the desert or that headdress, but sometimes the sand is blown and you don't want that stuff to go in your eyes. So I take the scarf off and I wrap it a certain way and it just breaks the wind a certain way where the sand doesn't go in your eyes. You dig what I'm saying? And then when you're going into these pyramids and everything, it's good to cover your head. So when you out there and you're in the desert, where's the stores at? Again? When you out there and you're <laughs> in the desert, where's the stores at? Like say you want to get a snack or something. What, what do you do at night? Where, where you go? Well, the whole the whole community is in the desert, but what's interesting is, is when you're driving, which I'll show you, you can actually see the pyramids. So what it is, is a lot of vacant buildings that's out there because the so many different religions have, it, Egypt is like the floodgates for religion. So because Egypt is like the floodgates for religion, like, let me give you an example. If you go to uh, the temple at Luxor, right? Or even Karnak, or even in Philae, you, anywhere you see plaster, that was the Christians who, who Coptic out there, they call them Coptic. 
the Christians came in, they didn't know how to build buildings. So when those temples were vacant, they moved in and they was cooking and using fire to keep themselves warm in, inside of these vacant comedic temples. And in turn, it caused the ceiling to get black. So it blackened some of the, the, the context of the words or the inscriptions that was on the ceiling and some of the wall because fire caused damage because there's other ways to stay heated and sustain yourself. But of course, they didn't know how to do that and other places to cook. So they, they, they inhabited the vacated temples. And anyway, you see plaster on the walls. That's the Christians because they was trying to cover up the things that's on the wall. Now, did, which did, they also, give, did they give an explanation of the pagan gods over there? This <coughs> is a question that came in. Uh, explanation for the pagan gods? Yeah. Well, what happened was the cultures that were coming in were adopting their old ideas with the new ideas. And uh, what you'll see is also crosses that have been embedded into the architecture, meaning you'll see glyphs one minute, and then the next minute you see the wall cut out so they can press a cross in there. But what I'm saying is they, they was creating churches inside of the temples. They didn't create churches of their own. And what you got to understand is Egypt is no stranger to what they call God. Everybody and anybody who's anyone has to let you know that their Messiah or their God has come to Egypt. So because this is the precedence that Egypt has, everybody comes there and sets up. So we can show you that when you out there and you, you fly out to Luxor, we can show you masjids. They don't say mosque out there. They'd rather say masjids. Right. We show you masjids that well put inside of the temple, uh, damn near where the columns are, some feet high. We, we can show you where they inserted masjids in the temple. And anywhere there's plaster that was Christians that was just trying to cover up some of the artwork. But what you'll always see is this. No matter how much statues they try to rub out, they always left the sun because the sun represented God to early Christians and Muslims. So anything that you see, you can see the presence of the Muslims and you can see the presence of the Christians, but they never had rubbed out the sun. Every temple still has the sun in unique and perfect form. It was never cut out. Everything was rubbed out or ripped up or plastered, but the sun disc on any deity's head always stayed the same. So there's not one sun disc you're going to see rubbed out when you go to Kemet. Another thing that you should know, every temple was created from the inside out. So if it appears the temple is incomplete, that's because that's outside of the temple because they build the temple. So the temple is always finished. And the floors go up and the ceilings go down. Therefore, it looks like you're zooming in and the, and the entrance is the exit. So you can always go straight through. You can always see straight through when you go into a temple and it gives the uh, the sentiment of homing in close and going in a straight light form like God directly to Nisu. But from the Nisu view on out, it's outward and it grows outward. The architecture tells you again that these people are phenomenal people. You know, I'm gonna go back to over here. But it's just things you learn from the ex firsthand experience. So this is myself and my brother Omar and this is my wife right here. Uh, and we crouch it low. When you're going inside of this pyramid, man, uh, this is a great pyramid. It was cool too, cause we got to see the shaft where the light is allowed to come in. It was that was real hot, cause we got we stayed in there until the light seeped into the Giza pyramid, and that was real fly. How the light comes in, because then there's a sarcophagus right over there, uh, adjacent to where the shaft is. That light is allowed to come in through the Giza or the Great Pyramid of Khufu, or what they call Cheops. So right here, you see the narrow spacing. Walking up and down those stairs, it's, it's like you can tell these people is uh, shorter. Because us tall brothers, <laughs> we had to like bend to climb up, bend to climb up, bend to climb up. You know, and we kept going up, 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 up. You know what I'm saying? And then we stop, we think that's it. But if we want to go more further, be like, we're going to go further. We keep going up. And this is where they used to uh, bury their family as well, and the, and the, they buried their family strategically where light will come in and shine on the body so that light could be refracted. It was real deep what they was doing. So uh, and this is my brother right here. 
he was just going in. We was praying in one corner, he's over here in this corner, he's going in. And he put the apple on the floor, like I said, it was for symbolism. And he had some water and he he wanted to leave it in the pyramid. This actually is the sarcophagus right here. And uh, you know, uh, he was just doing his thing. My man Omar, he was doing some serious prayer work. We wasn't about to go in there and not put it down. So ah, can't wait to show that stuff, man. Y'all gonna be loving that. And then of course, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> turn it up. And then this, going on there. <laughs> this is the brother Gabar, and I, I shared his sentiment. Every I, what I did was everything that I've heard any of these guys say because we wasn't too sure what exactly they're going to say. So I was taking their accusations and saying I'm going to respond to their accusations, and I'm have presentations for whatever else they say, which is what I did when people see the debate and everybody else on the squad. So. Here was an accusation that I also made sure I went to commit to debunk because a lot of people share this from different religions that it's only four or five bodies out there. And when, so we're going to the list. There's only been a very a handful of pharaohs that have been discovered. In certain places, they have found only a, a numb, a, a thumb, a foot. This, the bodies have not been found. There's not so much body uh, with, with these pharaohs that have been found. I think maybe five or six. So. Right here, he was saying there's only five or six bodies. And I said, man, he reduced him to five or six. And I'm like, this brother shouldn't have the right to complain about us having five or six bodies. And then turns around and says, they can't find none. So I'm like, this is not fair how you have no bodies. And your Bible mentions over 3,000 personalities. You introduced to us 3,000 plus personalities. What is the odds that out of 3,000 plus personalities, we can't find a body? Mm. That's not fair. It's not fair. So I'm like, you know what? So you get at us because there's only five or six. So I'm like, okay, and let me get, and the ones that he does identify with, he claims that they have Asiatic features and it's a conspiracy to stop people from knowing that those are actually Jews. So the five or six bodies we can find out of the three, well, oh, pardon me, you have 3,000 plus personalities that you can't find that you introduced to us. Out of the five or six you believe exist in Kemet, which is rumored there's only five or six. Out of those five or six, four or five of them happen to be Jews or Hebrews. You see, you just say anything. I'm like, you just take and you take and you take without credible sources. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna deal with that issue. So here, <clears throat> I said, I'll see your six bodies and raise you 12 bodies. This is Hatshep Soot's body right here. Room 56, last row. Okay? Room 56, last row. Hopefully it's coming out as clear as it can for you. It'll be clear on the video. Cool, because I got I got the original footage, so, you know, we good. Okay? Now, this is the, most the third, room 56, last row. Hatshep Soot's nephew. My nephew, that's clear, should be clear for y'all. And that's me right there, pointing at it. And of course, you see, we gotta go back, because this is what I also want to tell people. What do it smell like in there? <coughs> oh, it don't smell. Oh, these things are so preserved. The hair's still growing. This shit is crazy. When we saw Queen Ty, their hair was like down to the shoulders. They're like, yo, this shit's so crazy. They they was in there like, look, we had a body here, the hair's still growing. When they opened up the tomb, the shit was full of fucking hair. Damn. Yeah, and they said in the beginning, people was taking the hair and actually selling it. If you go to Ramses II, there's information there that lets you know people was cutting the hair and selling that shit because shit was growing still. So technically, it's part of it was still alive. This is ill, mad ill. You know what I'm saying? Like, this shit is crazy. But I wanted to show you this. And of course, that's me by Hatshif Soot. <clears throat> what I want to show you is that as I'm walking, note that this body's behind me. I had to edit this video so I could get through with my presentation and also share. But if you look behind me, you're going to also see bodies behind. So this is Marin Fatah that's behind this body right here. And you're also going to see King Seti I, who's the father of Ramses II. And they don't let everybody in there. They don't let everybody in. Yeah, uh, either they, they created an event for Taurus. Oh, you gotta be there on scholarship pass. But they don't damn sure let you be over there like this, taking pictures. Yeah, you go over. And this is Thutmose the first. Okay, room 56. 
the most the first is the father of Hatshepsut. So we got her nephew, we got her, and we got her father. Now this is Ankenanton's body. But like I said, I had to edit this shit in a way just so people could see it. It's clear in this, you see the skull and all of that. All right? And like I said, you're not allowed to go in there and be going in like this. This was on the strength that my family knew somebody in there to let me rock out. Cause they don't, they not rocking this like they rock the pyramids. This is Ankenanton's mom. So you see Queen Ty was just there. Yeah, Ankenanton, yeah, Queen Ty and Ankenanton's are white. <laughs> now I go back into 156. And this is King Sekenere, Kyle II. Now this is also Ramses II, the one that they say, some, most Israelites say that Moses encountered. And this is Ramses III. And this is in the Royal Mummies Hall. So this is another room, King Ramses III. And this one, I had better light and I was able to really show you these tags. This is Ramses IV in the Royal Mummies House. Okay, you can look at the shape of the skulls and the bones to see what it is. This is Ramses V in the Royal Mummies House. I damn they got every Ramses in the dynasties. This is Ramses the Ninth. And I also was able to go to his tomb, Ramses the Ninth. And then I zoom in, it, it's gonna be clear. I give you the original footage. And then this is one of the high priests of Amun, whose body was also there. So, and of course that was 12 bodies plus one, but that's not all the bodies. And what I was showing people is that there's bodies behind me in the video, but mm -hmm. for the sake of time, so I don't consume too much time, I wanted to make sure that I just got my point across and I kind of exhaust the point a little. Like, if you give me six, hopefully if I double up, people can understand what I'm doing here, you know? So this, I mean, you can see this stuff at the debate. I could go into some of the stuff that I didn't get to go into because I wanted to let my team eat. And they was like, polite, man. They was like real proud of the work I already did for a round and a half round because I did the other round with Brother Jonathan. And they was like, yo, polite. Let, let us showcase our joint. I was like, damn, yo. <laughs> He's like, yo, man, I'm what you did that for, man. Just jab him a little. So I was like, yo, they like, yo, let us eat. We good. You good. You killed it. So I'm like, yo, I'm fall back. I fell back the rest of the uh, debate. And I let them do what they do, man. Them brothers, yo, them brothers was extra prepared, man. And like I said, coming back from Kim, I didn't even want to do the debate. I'm like, yeah, I can have it. Because I don't even want to hear nobody disrespecting our ancestors. Cause I established a real personal connection with the information, man, going out there that it just felt wrong to let people get an opportunity to misrepresent it because their argument wasn't rooted in, in the genuine nature of man and it's in him uh, embarking upon a plan or having a mission to learn more. It was disingenuous, it was it, disingenuous. It was more about insecurity about one's own doctrine and to defer people's attention to another person's doctrine. And, and with that, I'm like, come on, man. That's, I don't wanna put the ancestors through that. But I did anyway, because brother was like, yo, you can't stop now. I'm like, brother, I don't care what nobody say, man. I know what I've seen. I can show people what I've seen. This could be the proof why I didn't want y'all to have an opportunity to talk that dumb shit. But then they're like, yo, Pete, if you're going to fall back, do that for another situation. Don't do it for now. I, I got back in it. I felt good. I felt good. Here's the other joint. But yeah, so there's cities. There's a city in there. But the desert's right there. And it's clear the city's built into the desert because everything seems sandy, even when the streets is there. Everything's like sandy, <laughs> you know what I mean? So even when you're looking from an aerial view, because I've taped a lot of the aerial view, I had to make sure I got that camera seat. You know what I'm saying? I had my man in the camera seat too at one of those rides because we was like, yo, we want to catch everything, man. See how I look from an aerial view. So we look at it. So the beauty about this trip, we recorded and documented everything. And like I said, in my book, I got a journal. It's now 855. I'm about to head out. I'm going to this place. Oh, the fruit tastes different. The fruit is extra fresh. People scared me about the food, but it was actually better than I thought. And now I'm questioning America's fruit because the fruit was smaller. Look at their okra. Their okra is this size. <clears throat> it's like their okra doesn't go past two notches on my pointer finger. I told them how big our okra is. They're like, what the hell? I'm like, yo, why your okra so small? The average okra is the first notch. The second size would probably be two notches. Tasting mad good and it wasn't as gooey. So I'm like, yo, what the heck? I'm like, this is different. So the food thing was was wild because people were like, yo, don't eat in Africa. They know shit is crazy. It could be weird. 
But then I'm eating the fruits and I'm like, yo, every I was just dealing with the fresh fruits every time. They always selling it everywhere. So I had that most all the time. Most is banana and Arabic. And then we would have uh fool, which is a form of beans, uh with tahir, or tahir, or tamir. So you had fool, wa tamir, uh uh ma uh bamia, and that's like and ma what they call it hummus. So we would have like these special beans press with falafel, some some bamia, which is okra, and then uh had some hummus and yo's. That's what we was eating every time, man. So it was nice. <laughs> that's when we in Cairo. Yeah, it, it was off the chain, man. So I was always going in the hood to get the food because the commercial stuff by the hotel was like the food in the hood was real nice because it's fresh. Like if you was eating meat, you probably would like it because they they make their own they have they grow their own animals and they're killing it and they're cooking it right there on the spot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They got fruit, it's, it's grown right there, they make it on the spot. And they also showed us how to make paper out of papyrus. That shit was fly. I got that on video. They showed us how to make paper out of papyrus. And I'm like, that's crazy how they hammer the papyrus and everything soaking in water for like six hours, three hours, depending on what you want. So the darker the papyrus, the longer it took for it to be uh in water. And it hardens to such a point it's super durable so that's why it lasted for so long because papyrus has a lot of water and so you have to hammer the water out of it to compress it <coughs> yeah so <clears throat> you learned a lot so this right here man i i, I don't be wanting to share this stuff man you go to I, the um to the part you say you had gms oh uh, man, man nah you ain't gotta go to them fuck them so, yeah, I was gonna tell them. Yeah, don't show them, don't show them, man. Yeah, so it would have been good for you to do that on the debate. Oh, it's gonna be over. We gotta stop giving them sign now. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. That's yeah. why I ain't been fucking with them, man. <laughs> Fuck them, man. Listen, anybody that was at the debate could tell you every time I spoke, I was going in. If I would have spoke again for this round, yeah, another case closed. I kept building, so I'm telling you, I had some stuff for this round. But what I, the, in essence. I won't share the whole round because, but I just want to, I'm going to share some of the slide work that I had. <clears throat> and of course, my slide presentation would have been subject to change based on what the argument was at hand. And I would have found out what to take out and what to put in. That's how I construct my rounds now. And so far, so good. Since I've been doing it that way, I was really, really given the listener a more intimate detail of what it is that I'm conveying. <clears throat> so we have comedic instability. And Kemet, Kemet was struggling internally. Monarchy was weakened and, and uh, let's see, internal states had more power. Foreigners began migrating peacefully into Kemet during this period for building and other projects. However, with them brought a criminal element. 11th and 12th dynasty, important Canaanite populations first appeared in Egypt between 11th and 12th dynasty, 1800 BC, and either around that time or C, 1720 BC, formed an independent realm in eastern now Delta. Okay, we all go forward. The political situation in Egypt during the second intermediate period, uh, period was 1800 to 1550 BC. These are just certain things that you have to know. And this, of course, the information is coming here from Copenhagen Museum, uh, Tuscan. Uh, Press 1997. Mentuotep first and second began the struggle to unify Kemet and bring order to Kemet and control the foreigners by exile. 13th Dynasty, Senwarset begins foreign expansion and external preemptive strikes from Kemet to Greece. And then here we have Emenhet III, carried out extensive building works and mining, and, and Gaia Calendar notes that the large intake of Asiatics which seems to have occurred partly in order to subsidize the extensive building work, may have encouraged the so-called Hyksos to settle in the Delta, thus leading eventually to the collapse of native Egyptian rule. Kalender guided the Middle Kingdom Renaissance and Ayn Shaw E.D., the Oxford History of Ancient Egypt, Oxford University Press, 2003, ISBN 978-0-19-280458-7, page 157. Just uh, sourcing the material. I don't like to go into all these wordy things, but if you notice from debate to debate, I have to do it at some point, and that's because we have to set the tone for what we're about to present. 
I, I like to run through the information, but only after the right stage has been set. So I am building with Reggie, man. And he'll tell you, because he some nights he had to tap out. I'm like, yo, this has to be put in such a way that a person who has a zealousness for the knowledge can appreciate the manner in which it was presented. So the purpose of this, right, <clears throat> which best express what this whole thing is about, as we're establishing chronology, and we're talking about 11, 12 dynasty, because that's when the Hyksos came in, and we're talking about Asiatics, of course, we're talking about Hyksos. In this particular case, the large intake of Asiatics, which seems to have occurred partly in order to subsidize the extensive building work, may have encouraged the so-called Hyksos to settle in the Delta. Why is this important? Because when you hear about those homosexual accusations, you must ask who are the people that were inhabiting the land or who was ruling during that time. Now, what's interesting to note is that the name of the game was, if you can't read Meta Netsha, then you don't know what's going on. No, the name of the game is this, and this is what I'm about to show you. And you should learn the language. That's if you really uh, intend to embrace Egypt, right? So let me show you what the name of the game is. Kemet or Israel is where I start off, right? But the name of the game, when analyzing the contendings of Horus and Seth, and anything else in Egypt, this is what I use, but there's a standard for what I call the order of succession of primary sources for my field research, right? When embark upon in research in general or field research in this particular case, my goal was, and in analyzing the contingents of Horus and Set, I wanted to primarily check the major temple walls, see the Nisut decrees, check out any Nisut funerary items, check out priestly items, check out moral and ethical texts, and see about administrative texts, and then lastly, general society literature. Oftentimes when people make their claims, you don't realize that they're making claims based on general society literature. That's a problem because if I pick up Sarnetta's wife's diary, that doesn't speak for the whole community or the laws of that particular land. So if we come a thousand years later, our children read his diary, it may give you an idea about the times and the conditions, but it certainly doesn't attest to the society at large because that doesn't speak for the whole community. If we listen to hip hop music today, it doesn't speak for the inception of hip hop. And if we spoke about hip hop in the 1960s, you would know that that would be an anachronism. We would be misappropriating dates and times to conform to our agenda because anybody present day could tell you that there was no hip hop in 1960s. Why am I saying this? Because the things that they're accusing Kemet of always doing did not always exist in Kemet. And when it started taking place in Kemet, they are not properly identifying the date, the time, and the people, the acquisitions. They're not doing that. And that's a problem. So I cannot go into a diatribe about the destructive message of hip hop as it relates to the 1900s if hip hop never existed in the 1900s. How can I use destructive hip hop music in the year 2014 to reflect its impression on the people that lived in 1905? Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we talk about the Horace and Seth story, yo, and it says this in Metal Nature, that is not how we do research. You don't tell me I gotta read the document in Metal Nature and then defend it because it says that in Metal Nature. That is not logical. And I told you, you need to start studying Robert's Rules of Conversation and Sentential Calculus. These are very good books and approaches towards logic. Mathematical deductions can be made so you can make sure the doubt that you are inferring is a practical doubt. It's a sensible doubt. So I'm gonna say this again. Because you read a story that may come out of Egypt that is written in the Egyptian language, doesn't mean that that is the conviction of the Egyptian people. The first thing you must do is cite when in time this document existed, or primarily tell me where you got the document from. 
Now I understand you ain't do the field research, but where does the facsimile come from if it's a facsimile? I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> so when I see the setup, because I'm really studying and doing my best to become better and better at what we call scholarship. And if you are a scholar, you can see the trick that someone is trying to play when they tell you, I found this, it's from Egypt, and it's in Metal Netcher. I translated it, and this is what it's saying. So not only are you mistranslating the text, but the number one thing you must do, I'm going to repeat it, is ask where it comes from. Why? Because I want to know, did it come from a major temple wall? Because that which is on the temple wall is primary to the account that took place in Kemet. What's on the wall is primary to a papyrus. It's priority to a papyrus, in my opinion. But this is just my opinion. Papyrus is nice too. But I want to know, does it come off a temple wall? I want to know if it's a Nisut's decree. I want to know if it's a ruler's decree. Or is this just someone's child? Or is this a slave or a servant or somebody from some place? But what we also need to do is put a date on the accusations. Because when you talk about 19th and 20th dynasty information, you can't condemn a whole civilization backwards for something that just arrived. But now we got to see who's occupying the land. So even though this stuff was wordy that I was showing you, it's very important. So I'm showing you how to set up a structure for argument's sake in an intelligible manner. You cannot come to the intelligent and say, hey, this says this in Metal Nature. Look what you're practicing. I want to know, does it come off a wall? I want to know if it's a Nisus decree. I want to know if it comes from any funerary items. I want to know if it comes from the priest, because the priest did a great deal of recording on behalf of the Nisu. And if it's from the Nisu, it should probably be put on the walls, some aspect of the content. So where are you getting this, this data from, one? Because it doesn't matter what language is written in first. It matters when it was presented and where it was presented. When was it presented and where it's presented is the question. Not if we translate it, look what it says. That is for fools. So when they present stuff like that to you in the community, the next time, brothers and sisters, first thing you do is ask, bro, what's the year, what's the date on that document? And where does that document come from? Does it come off the walls? Is it an Asus decree? Is it a funerary text? Does it come from a priest? Is it at least uh, from a moral or ethical text? Is it from an administration? Does it come from general society literature? Where are you getting it from? When was it supported? And who used it? During what time? And after that, if I find it behooves me to afford some attention to this document, to scrutinize it, then I can rest assured I'm not wasting my time because you've already convinced me that it's necessary for me to engage in a perusal of that knowledge. Yo, the people in the chat <clears throat> is concerned about you, brother. They said, man, saw send polite home, let them go get some rest, brother. Because <laughs> they know you be up all night, brother. <laughs> So wind it down, man. So, we, so we can wind it down. Man, I gotta go home, man. I'm about to go in. Don't nah, worry. Yeah. When, the, when you slept, man. You ain't sleep last night, brother. Nah, we going in, man. God, I, I was actually studying when I came home because I was so wired up from what my brothers was talking about. It was true. Uh and we just started sharing more info with each other, man, afterwards. I wait till you finish uh, switching that battery up. So I'm gonna show you what I had to do. Because we talking about the contendants of Horus and Set. Yo, listen, man. I really got a so-called good rest. I've been having a great living experience, so it's been hard to get a good rest. I've been having great living experiences, so it's been hard to get a good rest, especially from that trip. But I, when we talk about horses set, <clears throat> this was what I was going to use for the debate. If you're talking about horses set, guess what I went to do? Everything that I heard these brothers talk about, I made sure that we went to that particular place. So 
they said Horace and said how to fight, right? Right. So this was going to be in the next round. Well, guess what? I went there to the place where the fight so-called took place. So this is the Temple of Edfu, erected for Horus, where it said that he won. This is the Temple of Edfu right here. And this is me standing right in the place where they said the fight took place, literally. <laughs> Temple of Edfu. How was the weather out there? Hot? Oh, it was pretty good. It was like 75 degrees, 80 degrees. Oh, that's it? Yeah, I was thinking, you see, I was thinking it was going to be hot as hell, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> I thought it was going to be hot too, yo. So what I'm showing you is, and of course I have to edit it in short form because you want to get the point across and be conscientious of the time. So this is the Temple of Edfu right here, you know, and uh, it was erected for Horus. This is how it looks out in the front, and you see Horus right here, and then that's uh, Hero behind him. And then this is where they said the fight actually took place. This is just outside the temple. The temple's right there. This is when the fight takes place. And they said that uh, Set transformed into an alligator. And then Horus used a sphere to kill Set. And that sphere, in essence, winds up becoming with the, the terminology Edfu. And so this is the temple of Edfu. And this is the place of victory when Horus and Set had those that, that those contenders. So the reason why I went here is because if you're talking about the battle of Horus and Set, I'm like, you know what? I'm going there. And my wife's like, yo, you got to go everywhere they talked about. You ain't going to have enough time to show that information. It's for it's just for personal gain, you know, and I'll share it with other people who have an interest. So I'm, I'm going there. She's like, you're going to go everywhere they complain about? I'm going everywhere I'm interested in, everywhere that they complain about. So I'm looking for the primary. So I'm looking on the walls. I took a picture of everything on every single wall in Edfu. I'm telling you, my files is crazy because I want to know what was written on the walls because the walls is primary to other documents that these people is presenting because then the suit is there. So I'm like, boom, catching all pictures on the walls. I'm going in, 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 videotaping everything, going in. I'm talking to the Egyptologists out there and I'm like, yo, what's up, this homosexual thing going on with Horace and Set? they like, Horace and Set. then guess what happened? <clears throat> I, that's where I met the uh, one of the Egyptologists out there that got mad steam, crazy steam, mad momentum out there. So he said, well, he told me, something. I learned this from somebody. He said, oh, you got to understand. Uh, Horace has said, they didn't always have uh, a beef, one. And two, they said that didn't start up, that homosexuality didn't start up for Horace and said. So I'm like, where you get this from? So he said, what you got to do, you got to hit this museum down the block. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is where you're going to get the information from. So I go to the museum down the block, and I find out the original story don't even begin with Horace and Set. The original, first of all, the original story is with Horace and Set, and it's it, it intimates the same thing, but minus the homosexuality. That's first. And that's what you're going to go to when you go to Edfu. But this gay shit that's going on with Horace and Set, first of all, Set wasn't even there. It was Anak, an Asiatic Canaanite deity. Okay, it's an Asiatic Canaanite deity. Mm -hmm. So this homosexual, it, Horace and Set had a, a negative dialogue. You talking about during about fourth dynasty, this is recorded. You dig? But what you gotta do now, you go later, this shit is homosexualized but it has this inception with Horus and Aneth. And Aneth is an Asiatic deity, not a Kemetic deity. When the Asiatics came in with their influence, that's why I was reading about the 11th, 12th dynasties when the Hyksos come in. And we also have to understand the latter of their influence later on too, when we start getting around the, the 20th dynasty or so. So first of all, the story is compromised when Aneth is introduced. And she was androgynous, or she made up two genders, or hermaphrodite, so to speak. But so how could one with less someone who's female in nature that had masculine properties? So the story was different, first of all. And it was a Canaanite deity, Asiatic deity involved. I found this when I go there because the Egyptologist was looking at me like, yo, hold on. It was like, that's not an original comedic story. It's like... Set, set is not even in that story. That's added. You go to that museum. Now. So I go and I'm doing research. And that happened because I went to the place where they said this took place. 
And these people deal with this day to day. So I show humility, like, yo, tell me something about this. I'm trying to figure this out. I'm gonna keep it real. If it's real, I'll tell my brothers, like, yo, that shit so far seeming real. They like, man, that's from Asiatic influence. So now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna take you here. <clears throat> but this is what I learned when I went and started doing research. And then connecting with the brothers, they was cooperating all this information through research where they was at in America, and then we bust this whole thing up. So you gotta go to Construction of Homosexuality by David F. Greenberg, page 124. None of early legal codes in Mesopotamia, the laws of uh, uh, Uruk, Agena, the laws of Ornamu, one of the best kings that, uh, according to Nazi, this is one of the best kings that existed in the video that I played. The laws of Ishuna and the laws of Hammurabi prohibit sexual, sex, homosexual acts. So we're not saying they support it, we're just saying they don't have no laws that prohibit it. You see what I'm saying? The only possible reference to homosexuality is a provision in the Hammurabi Code concerning sons adopted by palace eunuchs. And it is not certain that all of the latter, latter engaged in homosexuality. The Hittite laws dating from the second millennia make father-son incest a capital offense along with the father, daughter, and mother, son incest, but do not mention mother, daughter, incest. In addition, they classify. Let's go to the next one. And now you have homosexuality and the Canaanite Hicksops. And these are references. Below page 53, Nisinen, page 27, Greenberg, page 1 to 26 and 127. This is very important. Pictorial literacy references in ancient Mesopotamia show acceptance of some forms of homosexuality but wariness towards others. Anal intercourse was freely pictured in figurative art in the ancient cities of Uruk, Assur, Babylon, and Susa from the 3rd millennium BC on, and images show that it was practiced as part of religious ritual. Now, I just want to tell the people right now, real quick, uh, I don't, don't particularly feel like I need to show homosexual pictures to reinforce an idea, so I don't have no homosexual pictures to uh, cooperate this right. testimony, because right. I don't like it, and it puts, I, it puts images into your head that wasn't there. And then you have to contemplate on it at some point or the other. And I, it's, too much of those pictures is promulgated into this community. So I'm, I, I believe we're intelligent enough at this moment. We can just read this information, and we know what homosexuality means and represents. So I don't have no pictures to follow it up. I just can't have that in my slides. Uh, yeah, your homeboy likes to put that in the slide. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was really bothering him for so long <laughs> that he had to go hard. Uh, you see, part of my terminology. But... Uh, the almanac of incantations contain praise favoring on an equal basis the love of a man for a woman and a woman for a man and a man for a man. Lesbian love is not mentioned probably because of low status in women in ancient times when women were basically considered property and adultery was considered a trespass against the husband's property. A husband was, a free, was free to fornicate, but a wife could be put to death for the same thing. The Summa Alu, a man will use to predict the future sought to do this in some cases on the basis of sexual acts, five of which are homosexual. If a man copulates with this equal from the rare, he becomes a leader among his peers and brothers. This is from Asiatic people, the people that these brothers is claiming to descend from. Okay, if a man yearns to express his manhood while in prison and thus like a male cult prostitute may in with men becomes his desire, he will experience evil. If a man copulates with a, a senu, male cult prostitute, trouble will leave him. If a man copulates with a uh, girl set coup, a male quarter or courtier or royal attendant, worry will possess him for a whole year, but will then leave him. If a man copulates with a houseborn slave, a hard destiny will befall him. <laughs> so these are, uh, and of course I got the source. So what was following up here is Anif dated to Hyksos dynasty. This is according to Encyclopedia Judaica, volume two, edited by Fred Skolnick and Michael Berenbaum. This is very important because when I started coming across the truth out there, investigating this, this uh, Horus and Set information, I have to now ask the research team, do me a favor, look up Anif. Do me a favor, look up Anif's connection with the Hyksos. Do me a favor, I'm learning that this stuff has its inception with Anif, not Horus and Set. So let's look at this. And the research team, Reggie, provided me with this data right here to corroborate everything that I was coming up with. So we're going to read it. And he gave me the source, Encyclopedia Judaica, Volume 2. And this is not the only source. So Anif, Hebrew, okay, a, a major goddess of the Western Semitics, right, worshipped over a wide area of Near East and Mesopotamia, Syria, 
Erez Israel, Anatolia, and Egypt. The earliest evidence of a cult devoted to Aneth comes from the literary remains of the Amorites and Mari of the Euphrates near the beginning of the second millennia, millennium BCE. Cult. The cult of Aneth had considered vote was had considerable vogue in Egypt. I read it again. The cult of Aneth had considerable vogue in Egypt, where yeah. it was introduced, where it was introduced at least as early as the Hyksos period. Since it attested as the uh, Theophis element in a few Hyksos names, some rulers of the New Kingdom were apparently devotees of the goddess. An Egyptian magical papyrus relates the sexual assault of Aneth by Set, Baal, who copulated with her in fire and devoured her with a chisel or deflowered her with a chisel. Her character is vividly revealed in the mythological text of Ugarit from the middle of the second millennium. So I'm about to close out. I just want to finish this last point. Okay, right. cool. During the 12th to the 18th dynasty, many variant texts are written. Egyptian mythology by Wilhelm, uh, Wilhelm Max Muller, <laughs> Sir James George Scott, chapter uh, 8, Foreign Gods. The Egyptians of the earlier period did not feel it necessary to bring foreign gods to their country. When they went to Syria and Nubia, they temporarily worshipped the local divinities of those lands without abandoning their own deities. It is true that concepts of Asiatic mythology constantly pass freely into the religion of Egypt, and in particular the fairy stories of the new empire not only employed Asiatic motifs very liberally, but often placed their scenes in Asia, thus frankly confessing their dependence on Asiatic material. Accordingly, the story of the two brothers, note 106, is laid largely on the, cent uh, the cedar mountain of the Syrian coast and the story of the haunted prince makes the hero wanderer as a hunter of the remote east, the country of Nahrina, corresponding approximately to Mesopotamia, to win the princess there. This prince who was doomed to be killed by his. So here it is. You see where the story has evolved, okay, and how it's starting to be amalgamated or fixed to what we know as the so-called contenders of Horus and Set. So where we go to marry, uh, many variant texts are written continued. The Egyptian mythology by Willem, Marx, Max Muller, Sir James George Scott, page 154, 157. In the new empire, however, after 1600 BC, when Egypt underwent great changes and wished to appear as a military state and a conquering empire on Asiatic models, and when the customs and the language of Canaan thus spread throughout the now land, the worship of Asiatic deities became fashionable being propagated by many immigrants, mercenaries, merchants, etc., from Assyria. The warlike character of the gods of Asia and the rich mythology attached to them made them especially attractive to the Egyptian mind. Baal, Semitic Lord, is described as the god of thunder dwelling on mountains on or in the sky and terrible in battle, so that the Egyptians often identified them with their warlike god, Seth. See the next divinity, Rashef or Reshpu, Semitic lightning. Seth, who had conflicts with Horus beginning in the pyramid text, age transforms in the pyramid in the period from 12th to 18th dynasty. Texts now illuminate on his character in detail, and texts emerge that he is a rapist and has the Canaanite Hyksos value system of force and homosexual. So at this point <clears throat> is when I then went back, I went to the pyramid of Titi, and in the Pyramid of Titi, okay, this was also described. So I'm telling you, I was doing some serious research to get this information. So this is the Pyramid Test. Okay, if you go to PT 1036, you will clearly see that the contenders of all has been misinterpreted. So if you go to PT uh, 1036, you're going to see that the words that they're using for penetration, gay, and the words that they're using for and all right, you're gonna see that those are clearly English translations. The pyramid text is right here, right before us, right now. Remember that uh, over 2,000 new pyramid texts came through over the bill in 1977. So you gotta remember that as well. And you know that these texts are found in Hunis, Cesar, uh, yeah. first text. So keep that in mind. So we are actually here. No one ever take it to the point to bring you to this point. All right. So here it is. I'm in there. I'm looking for data. 
I'm getting every image of every glyph. This is a TT pyramid. You see what I'm saying? So I'm even inside this. I'm I'm getting light on things. I'm taking an image of everything because you know it's dark in there. But anywhere I found any metal nature, I was going in. I was making sure we get all these pictures. You know, I'm doing my best to de uh, decode the hieroglyphics. And if there was any unique uh, metal nature there, I was forwarding it to the team and circling and highlighting it and saying, yo, if you Y'all can decode this in real time for me. I need to stay in tune because I'm here for X amount of days. I got to come back for the debate. And I'm telling you, we was overloaded with information because the things we was finding out and some of the misinterpretations or the assumptions about what was being written because of how things look, we was able to really take things to a whole nother level. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> I want to go in. Of course, I was going to have Danny Boy featured again after that, but it's good. Cause Leave I, my man Danielle alone, man. I don't want to wage war, but you know, him saying that Israel, um, they was practicing homosexuality in the land of Israel. That's what they was doing. I'm like, how are you going to take us to trial if you can admit in a class that you had prior that not only was y'all homosexuals, but you was practicing homosexuality in the man, land you of Israel? Let me go. <laughs> so that's what it is, man. I, I hope y'all enjoyed it. But uh, I had some stuff. I was going to exhaust a certain point and just slam them from what I found in TT because TT has something on the wall that would take that horse's set contending somewhere totally different. It was a primary source. My source, my research, got it myself, not no white man, brought it back to my black scholars and brothers who are credible enough to break down the metal nature as well. And the combination of us as a team, what we was bringing to the table, our goal for the debate was to show people that we did not need white scholarship to conduct any form of scholarship. So that's what we was bringing to the table. We didn't use all the white sources you're using to identify African civilization. We are using our own primary sources, literally. So even if we could have got a picture of something on that wall from another source, I made sure it was the source so we couldn't hear that shit no more. So that's what it was about, man. Let me ask you, um, will you still be in town by February the 22nd? Uh, maybe the thing is, I'm supposed to go to Doctor. I'm supposed to do a lecture with Doctor Sebi on March first. Right. Okay. What's because going on well, you know, my brother just sent me um, a note right quick. You know, and I want to let the people know that um, yeah, the work is going to begin now, family. You know, the Hebrew Israelite <laughs> brothers, they are yeah. out there in the community Word now. Up. They are coming out to work. They are doing a PowerPoint presentation, brother Tazaria. I ask you, BK, no cowards, and this is going down, family. Um. February the 22nd, and the topic is, did integration kill Eric Gardner? That's going to be interesting, because I know we got a lot of Martin Luther King ass niggas out there. A lot of Martin Luther King ass niggas out there. Man, when I saw that goddamn movie, where is that? I got a crystal clear copy. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, I got I want to watch it, yo. Oh, man, I can't find it. Hold on. I got to go, gonna I gotta go and look in the... Um, they did some shit in there? Yeah, I don't have it right here. It's probably in the bedroom. But I got a copy of that. Selma, I think it's called. <clears throat> Selma, right? Yeah. Man, if you when you see that movie, they made Martin Luther King look like a straight up faggot, a bitch. How you figure? You got to see it. Oprah Winfrey playing one of the civil rights activists. She's screaming, ah, and, and Martin Luther King is standing right where you at. She's right here. With a group of white boys just choking her out, beating her down, and he's standing there just looking like, and they outnumber the the police, oh, so they making black people look like they were some straight up motherfucking cowards. Wow. Then they show a clip in there where Martin Luther King goes over to meet with Coretta Scott King and talking to her because he want to get the um talk to Martin Luther King like, yo nigga, what the fuck is you doing? You putting our people in the line of fire. That's what like she said? That. No, this is what Martin Luther, I mean, oh, Martin oh, Rex, I, I got he went over to try to meet with him. Oh, okay. And they then they that? had him in, yeah, they had him in the picture like, yo, why are you meeting with them? What you trying to do? You trying to meet with uh, Malcolm X? Fuck you meet with Malcolm X for? Quote, unquote. And, you know, I'm just paraphrasing. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Because you can see through it. This is what's going on. Oh, I got to see that. So by even looking at that picture, black people, Chris Rock came out and said, oh, that was one of the greatest movies. Oh, shit. Uh, Will Smith even came out at the awards and said that was a great movie. That wasn't no great movie. Y'all crazy as hell. They had, they had our people looking like some straight up motherfucking bitches. Damn. Man. You got to see because it's going to get you mad. 
not mad, not mad in the sense where the cracker is. Yeah, Tazoriak yeah. made a good point. And the point that, that Tazoriak made was yeah. they came out with that movie just to remind black folks in their subconsciousness when we snatch, run man. down on you niggas, this is what this fall, is how y'all supposed to be. Fall back and let us beat y'all ass, sick the dogs on you. The good old days. You know what I mean? And I'm looking at this bitch ass nigga King, man. I know a lot of y'all say, man, oh, we love him. I used to say I was gonna give him some respect and problems. You think he was really that passive? But after yes, he was, brother. Because you don't hear nothing about this him is, this fighting. That's what I want to say. You don't hear nothing about King fighting. Show me in the history All right, let me where you see this nigga standing something. up. Go ahead. If we gotta have this talk. Maybe we gotta have this another yeah, day. Yeah. Let's stop the king ass. That's okay. hell yeah. I don't think he was ass. No, nah, that nigga was ass. Man. I, well, I got research, right? That would lead me to believe otherwise. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't part of the boulets and all that. That's another conversation. Yes. But what I'm telling you is, any black man <laughs> that would show how intelligent he was, I had something here that was going to be very powerful. If we could talk about it at a different date of time. I'm actually kind of glad I didn't pull it up and maybe it needs another form. But in my opinion, for my research, he still had to have a certain level of go to go out there and, ex and show how intellectually inferior the white man's concept of racism is. See, just challenging a, an oppressive race on their intellect and their moral system, that can get you killed as a black man. Whether you say the white man's the devil or not, inspiring other people to raise their literacy and, and inspiring people to be against a certain war. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Going against governmental policies on a large scale is way different from freedom fighting in the streets where you you, you may only be heard by a few. Not everyone that freedom fights in the street is heard by a few. I'm talking about the person who only getting heard by a few people, like 10 or 12. Whoa. For him to do it on a big stage and be revered as a man that black people can look up to, that can articulate himself during a time when black people is just starting to really get into books and starting to read, I'm like, I still got to say the onus is on the person that's against Dr. King to show me that he definitely was a coward because I think that it took some heart to even speak during a time where, you know, even black people want to bust his ass. You know what I'm saying? Like it is today. If you say a certain comment that you disagree with about the politics of the black nation, you have your own people right up against you. So the paranoia that might set in, damn, black people want to kill me. White people mad at me because I'm looking like a leader and they want to kill me. Nobody fucking like me. So I, I, I think he has some heart. I don't know how much heart, but I think we got to say the brother has some heart right. to show how smart he was. Let me tell you this. There was a scene in the movie. Don't let that you movie stand, fuck hold me up. Hold on, hold on, Back up. You stay, No, that movie did fuck me up. <laughs> you standing right there. You got your security around you. Yeah. About five or six dudes around you. Yeah, yeah. So as soon as King walked into the lobby, you see this punk-ass white boy, skinny little motherfucker, punk-ass white boy, walked up on him and looked at him and walked right to his face and punched him in his face, dude. And King went down like this, holding his face, and get back up, and his bodyguards is holding King like, oh, man, what's the matter with them? What's the... I mean, like, dude, what you see? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. You got to see the movie. Oh, man. I, yo, I, think, I think what happened was I threw that shit in the garbage <laughs> because I didn't want my children Hell to see yeah. that Hell yeah, I agree, I agree. You see what I'm saying? I agree. Putting the fear, like you used to always say yeah. out there, putting that fear in their mind, yeah. their subconscious mind. I agree Striking with that. into something like, yo, Fear these motherfucking crackers. You gotta fear these white people. I guess they're showing that as a positive message. Yeah, so I threw that shit in the garbage, I think. That's why I couldn't find it over there. Now I remember me taking it out Damn. and throwing it in the garbage. I don't agree with that shit. You know, come on, I, man, I that's think they're selling a yeah. story. Yeah, it's crazy. It's kind of like a Christian story of Jesus almost. That yeah. He'll willing sacrifice. Yep. And that, that there would keep us passive. And then look, if you look at the timing, right? Or when that Dr. King movie comes out, and you look at the timing, right? of when all this police brutality is taking place, you kind of got to wonder, like, yo, do they be strategically launching these attacks? Like, and then they got the movie and major media being propagated to keep us passive. So that's what's taking place in that movie. And it's coupled with the time where police brutality is taking place. They might be trying to offset what would be an insurrection from the anger that people have and anxiety that's accumulated on account of the fact that we've been getting murdered consistently, especially in the latter stages of last year. So I, I think it's a, a defense mechanism for them. 
that they're putting out those kind of movies to kind of insinuate that you know what passive is good you because look look at how much change we got after being passive right you know what i'm saying all right so this is going to be a good one family i'm um i'm gonna say we ask y'all to come out february the 22nd is going to be taking place at the national black theater at 7 30 to 10 o'clock make sure you get 7 30 to 10 o'clock I, I believe this is on a sunday I believe so. I don't want to February say February the twenty second. I'd rather tell you the right date just in case. February the twenty second, I believe is on a Sunday. But we're gonna get it right now to make sure. Y'all look it up, y'all Google it, y'all see it. February the twenty second falls on a Sunday. Yes. Yeah, oh, hold on, that's March. All right. It's gonna definitely be live stream. I believe it's ten dollars admission, donation fee. Because yeah. see, what y'all have to understand is that we do these for you. And um, it costs, see now Tazori Akinaj UPK understand yeah. it costs to go in these buildings. That's see, because right. they doing this themselves. They, yep. they came out of their pocket to do this. Now they have an understanding got the right to of charge, how yeah. much it costs. So you have the right to charge and the people should be paying for this because we do this for you. All right? So February the 22nd, ISUPK, no cowards. Brother Tazori will be delivering a powerful speech I guess it's going to be guests involved, and we um just open it up to all our people out there. I will definitely be in the building, Brother Sarnetta. If Polite is still in town, I know he's going to come through. And our Brother Reggie and a few of us are going to come through to show some love and support for our brothers for coming through and showing the love and support for us. Okay. So that's how we do it now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. February the 22nd, yeah, then quick. integration kill Eric Gardner. That's interesting. Because now we got to say the integration kill um, Sean Bell. The integration kill my brother with the hoodie was his name. Come on. Come on. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Trayvon. Trayvon Martin. Hell yeah. I'm going to say hell yeah because we put too much trust and faith and love into white people. You know, and then when you got a strong black man to stand up and speak against that, y'all demonize us. That's right. You demonize. You look at us like we, we fucking crazy. Now watch this. Go ahead. I just wanted to say this on the debate note. Our uh, brother Daniela had a concern that I might use GMS as part of my pitch to the people to win the debate. And I gave him my word and I told him I wasn't going to use GMS. That's right. I told him what I got and what I intended to do as far as scholarship is concerned. I didn't intend to do that. So I didn't do it. Right. I didn't use GMS. I also told uh, ISUPK that I'm leaving them out the debate. Mm -hmm. I got. I told uh, brother Tazaria that I'm good. We developed a friendship. And communication with each other and you know they didn't want to be involved per se but he wasn't telling me don't bang but he was right. like you know if we don't have to have to, anything to do with it cool and and uh brother divine, although we was banging hard leading up to that yeah, that's yeah, just and brother divine asked for me to leave uh through email correspondence on behalf of his team for me to leave icpk out of it and guess what i don't have to do that you don't you you telling me how to not to bang on you for the debate you're trying to formulate my presentation Right. But I kept my word. I didn't use ISUPK. You see what I'm saying? I kept my word. I didn't use GMS. I dealt with the people at that debate immediately. And I had every right to use their doctrines because I had purpose for that. I could have did that. But I went into the debate and I left all that alone. I kept my word. Now, what I will say is this to my brother Nasi. You did violate me, man. You violated me twice. In there and, but you know what i disregarded it because i understood you was upset and it was hard for you to take pressure so it's all good now if you got a question about what i'm talking about you could call me and i will let you know directly but i think he was just angry man so that's why i just i i told divine head i was going to get people frustrated and flustered because they I, I told you they're strangers and they were man you should have seen this the look <laughs> on nazi face if you would have seen the look on my brother nazi face man when y'all when you was up there teaching, it was like a stone. Like ain't nothing gonna break this right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at his face and I'm like, God damn, Nazi man, it's a motherfucker. <laughs> but um, it all ended well. Everybody okay, came yeah, out. Yeah, they yeah. loved it. We loved and it. this is gonna be one to talk about. Kim is back on the map right now. Man, Thanks to brother Polite, the Amara squad. Man, Kim is back on the map, and I know ISUPK gonna wanna have something to say about that, brother. I hope they do, cause huh. I hope they do, because I left them out in hopes that we can have a political dialogue. Right. I, it don't have to be about the Bible per se, but they can use the Bible and they will. 
Right. But I did I didn't want the essence of it to be hit, but it's like but you know what? Let's have a political conversation. It was about this it. was called the final showdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because we didn't really deal with a lot of the issues that we were supposed to, because I'm gonna keep it real, other parties was afraid. Yep. Other members like yep, of absolutely. the Hebrews, That's real. they didn't want to deal with King James. They really didn't want to deal with the Exodus story. Nope. How are you not gonna deal and, with and the I Exodus? Left it alone. Now I'm gonna tell you something. You owe me money twice. Now <laughs> yeah, we got yeah, you. Right you here. laughed it. You laughed it. You know yeah. it. Now Hold I'm on. tell you something. Y'all saw him laugh. He's paused, right? <laughs> He's now, like, I'm gonna tell you something though. No. To Zoria, ISUBK, they definitely dealing with the um with that story. They definitely dealing with the King James Tell story. I did. I say, did. Say, I did. Yeah, look at look them in there. I did them. Now look, and and this is why we got to say this. It was the final showdown, right? But I complied with what the brothers on the other team wanted. They didn't want to deal with the Exodus story. They never put it into contract, and it's clear they didn't want to discuss it. It never happened. I told his brothers I won't bring up GMS. I told his brothers I won't bring up ISPK. Cool. They didn't want to deal with King James. Cool. So I mean, this this these. You know, this is in the spirit of scholarship. But like I said, for me personally, we don't have to do a, a Hebrew Kemet debate. I want to have a political viewpoint and disposition debate. That's what I want to have, a socio-political conversation and dialogue with uh, ISUPK and us. And not, not none of the other energies and stuff. We finally got that out the way. We done. But we should start having more politically engineered debates to see if we could come out of it with something very powerful. You see what I'm saying? Like solutions. So I would love for those brothers to take a stance and have a political dialogue with me and engage and, and, and express through their diatribe how they feel about the disposition of blacks and what can we employ via their sciences to get us out. And no matter what whoever leaves, they, everybody will get solutions. Nonetheless, whether you join us or not. So I would like to hear their viewpoint on what kind of solutions they would have based on certain subject matter that I got. So it don't have to be about the scriptures. You see, I got right. issues with them about the, some of their political viewpoints. And there's things that we need to know about the political viewpoints they may not even have. Because I, I contend that a lot of religious people don't even have a, a, a political framework or political design to respond to black people's issues. I believe is is the sentiment is saturated with faith based assertions and they omit the fact that there, there has to be some kind of social context to take us into the next or take us into a, a, a another What's nexus going out there? you know so that's what that's what i'm saying oh. i i want to have debates no. that's really charged I, i'm gonna statement. tell you something i ain't gonna front though when i got up on the chair and that sea of hebrews was out there and i said quam your shell <laughs> that kind of felt good man because no you heard no the doubt. roar the roar that stood up in there it was like oh, unity, man. Man. Uh, unity and right good. behind that i said black power and then you heard the other side oh, of the how room. you like that black power channel Hold up. but then the other side of the room was like black power yeah. so it was like even steven that yeah. yo, that shit was, that was the best. That was a lot of fun man. i felt the energy when i said quam your shell i didn't i didn't expect them to hit me back with that type of greeting yeah, the way yeah, I gave yeah, them, you yeah. know what I'm saying? That drink was like roll, like a raw sound. Yo. You could blow the roof off the top of that. I know you liked it, right? When yeah, yeah. When uh, remember when I was like, it's quiet as hell in here now. You don't hear one calm y'all Sharal in here now. <laughs> and you, heard, you see when they all started going crazy? Yeah, like, they was going. Woo, woo, woo. I like I own you. Right. I did got the control. Right. Like now I got you exerting your energy. You followed the will, but when you said. Who wants to do this debate? Or who wants this debate to keep going on? Or can we oh, go to intermission? Man. Yo, the, the response, the crowd was in this debate so much. They're in the balcony. They, that balcony was a nice experience. Yeah, too. you saw that, right? That looks nice. Saw us on the chair, and he's like, who wants to? And the whole audience was just, the whole audience. I'm there. That's why I'm looking here, because I can right, see you right, on the right, chair. Right. The whole audience is like, we want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but so I was like, yo, but we have to look out for the members. Yeah, we gotta do that. Man. Yo, I thought we was gonna have to get security. Yeah. <laughs> yo, right. it was so their conviction was so strong. You would have thought Sarnetta needed security just for trying to have a break. Right. 
Cause we gotta make. They sure ain't even want us to have a break, family. They wanted yeah. us to keep flowing through. Yeah, but we couldn't do that to the business. And I'm gonna tell you something. That's right. I was sitting there while you business were talking. Made money that day. I'm gonna tell you something. I was adding up the math in my head. That was a six thousand dollar event that people don't even know, brother. Oh, word, I'm talking word. about from the from the payments, from the renting of the space. Yeah, the yeah. place costed two thousand dollars for us to rent. Um, security, security, but check it, Shaka. Nasi, them two by themselves. Yep. yep. Then Hasha, um, Daniela, them two by themselves. Then Jonathan, Unk. The moderators. Yo, the moderator. Brother, I was sitting there when you was talking. See, the people out there don't know. They think we that was a $6,000 event Plus, that me and my brother, me and my brother right here, yep. paid before the goddamn event. Yep. Everybody was yep. paid yep. except for one brother. And that was only because it was hard for us getting him. He lost his phone, and that's our brother Hashal. Everybody else was taken care of, family. You see what I'm saying? So people don't give us that credit for that, man. And remember, the vendors made a great deal of money because we promoted so good. We had a large amount of people right. respond to it. So now it heightened the probability of what they would make. So and that's the vendors what I was to selling say. out. And the blue yeah. pill, red pill, with their shirts and with their sea moss. Right. Uh, us with the food. Which goes to my daughters and them. Yo, you sold out before the damn break. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, we no, two I told you, I said, you gotta bring money. Nah, we did it twice. But I'm gonna tell you something else. We brought it twice. All the money that was made there, guess what, family? Went to black businesses. Every last dime. Not black one white boy. Not business. one white man. See, so when y'all shit on us, it's you real. shitting on all the vendors that was around there that was making money to feed their family. How do it feel? Come on. How do it feel when you sit there and you watch an event? As successful as this last one, you see how much black people are benefiting from something that came out your consciousness. How it make you feel when you just see your power to create a better situation? Because everybody's yeah. gonna leave and feed their family. Yeah. Thanks to you, they got right. extra money. Right. They you don't know what hardship they was going through. Right. How it feel to know you have that impression on other people? Even some people probably set the table and hate you. Right. How does right. it make you, you feel? Know you know what I'm well, it, it definitely feel good, brother. And I'm gonna tell you another thing that made me feel good. They treated us like we were celebrities. Yeah, that's real. The that's family, real talk. Man. See, so for all the Negroes and all the ones that be that hating out there, we yeah, know, yeah. we know, y'all yeah, yeah, just a few. We know that we got a lot of love from oh, our man, people, brother. I couldn't say no. Like, Yo. brothers was coming up, sisters was coming up. They Yo, so out the country, Can I get a picture with you, state, brother? Man. Can I get a picture with you, brother, polite? And Yo. we couldn't say nah, brother. We just, even though I had so much to do, I had stuff to do. I had to stop and like be humble and said, all right, my brother, you know, and we take our picture. All right, sister, brothers with their wives was coming in and their wives was taking pictures with brother yeah. like taking pictures yeah. with us. The husband was taking the pictures, you know, yeah, I mean, man, that, yeah. they just showed us love. Like we was goddamn Jay-Z and, yeah, and, yeah. and just and like, yo, stop. I, really, and I feel good about I that. I love you, that bro, right bro. there. And I want to thank my people Word. out there, man. Word. I want to thank you. This is why I'm going to keep on bringing y'all free information right here on the live stream. Yeah. That's what I want to say. How yeah. do you feel about it? Bro? Oh, man, it's an amazing experience, man. It was like I was so elated by the experience. <clears throat> I can't even sleep last night. And I've been on high since. <clears throat> and that's how you know you had an amazing event. And when people that's like, yo, why he got to have rappers bringing him out and everything? Because we got a large contingency of people right. that come out. The youth was yo, in look, there. if you was to watch a hip-hop a hip hop battle, you'd be like, damn, all those black people be coming out to hear these brothers go in on each other. Yo, we are working our way up, man. And this is why I be telling people, be patient with us. Because every time we keep doing these events, we keep getting a bigger impact than we anticipated. Yeah. Yo, we got a bigger venue and we packed it out the first day. We say, no, nah, you know what? This venue should be good. Because in this venue, you know, we can we can accommodate for these people. Listen to me, yo. We packed that place out by the hundreds. We're ready to get a spot for the conscious community, put us in the thousands. I'm looking at the Apollo Theater, because I already know the owner. You know, I'm right across the We gotta get up. Apollo. We gotta I'm get looking it. at the Apollo <laughs> Theater because I'm right across the street from them. And I know the manager that works up in there. I already spoke to him about it. And think about that. The great debate. In lights. Because when you go past the Apollo in lights. <laughs> but we really, in, in order to do it there, we got to really bring in a heavy hitter. Yo, right a now. A fucking heavy 
hitter got to go up I, in there. I'm pocket. thinking about either one of two things. You got to have both sides represent the greater of their culture without undermining the other one. That would be good, too. You know, because that would be great. Or we just keep one side. You know, uh, I want to do a comedic uh, conference. I did Melanin Conference last year near this time. I did a comedic conference, Brother Seti. Mm -hmm. You know, we had Brother uh, Jonathan from uh, the Magi, Amin Ross squad there, of course, myself, and uh, whoever be putting it down, if DC, whoever, like all the brothers that's been putting this in, we see if we can get uh, Dr. Ricketti. I mean, I, uh, I'm in Ricketti, I'm in a sister, sister that's been soldiering and really helped revive the meta nature as far as our consciousness is concerned for over 20 years. Dr. Ricketti, I'm in this special to this community and she also influenced or, or affected people like Dio Fala Binga or Shake Auntie D up. A lot of people benefited from her works directly or indirectly and what she does with Meta Netch and she's been doing what she do for 20 plus years. So you know we can get people like that. We just have a comedic conference and just let everybody eat and mm -hmm. share what they learn with the community. That's it's right. a day about bringing out all the best things instead of being charged with accusations. Let's bring this thing together, full cipher. You dig? Mm -hmm. And that's why I also brought out uh, uh, Loaded because he really appreciate the information, man. He, he appreciate it on a certain level. And I appreciate how he gets the information and how he disseminates it in the hip hop culture because he's revered in the hip hop culture. And he's revered as a man that takes a stance on morality and he spits that fire and gives you conscious lyrics against brothers who's talking that unconscious stuff. And it takes a lot of heart to not be compromised and just start saying a bunch of negative stuff just because you want to try to win the battle. And he found a clever way to share progressive information aggressively where it feels like that same fire, but he's talking that conscious real. Like that right there, now I look up to that brother, man. He's great because of what he does. So when I bring him through, we have a bunch of brothers and sisters. Let's let's keep it real. Everybody that comes to these debates, they watch TV, they watch music videos, they listen to music, they go out to the movies. Mm -hmm. So why when you come to the debate, you're talking about you don't want entertainment. Everybody in there wants entertainment. Your world is revolved around entertainment. You want to entertain your mind even if you read or you study. Did you hear when our brother Saka first got up though? What he said? Oh man. He yeah. said that fucking um Lord Abbas said. I'm not here to entertain him. Oh, maybe you don't yeah, know. Yeah, you know, yeah. No, pressure starts and you, you start securing yourself. But even after a while, he did some entertaining stuff because he mm -hmm. learned. I told him in his ear, I'm like, yo, listen, yo, don't let them, don't, don't let them do that. This See, is if a, he was this smart, is a volatile environment. If he was smart, he would have opened up with one of his songs. Egypt was a black lad. That would have been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been crazy yo, right cause, there. Because, you know, it's all right. You know why? because we could do that. We innovative, we bring something special to this community. Watch this debate, I can't wait till this debate is up. You know why? The most beautiful part of the debate is the plethora of people that you see in there coming far and wide for knowledge. Right. And I'm not gonna front. That shit was intimidating for niggas who never did this. Yo, I, it's people from uh, Pennsylvania, York, Pennsylvania, that came out. We had some members, some young brothers too, man. I'm talking, 18 years old, 19 years old, 16 years old, that was also doing security. Young brothers, new brothers in New Covenant, right? So they came out, this is their first debate. You don't understand how they felt. They walked in to help me set up chairs and yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, and, and they was even coming to me and saying, yo, nice to meet you, brother, yo. for the first time. So they, show me what was happening. Yo, they walked in, in right? Covenant. They walked in, helped set up chairs and everything. Yep. So a few people coming in. Word to everything I love. I went back to the house. They came back to the house with me so they could uh, get some things to bring back to the event. 20 minutes later, they called me. Yo, it's almost filled up. 20 minutes later, they mm -hmm. called me like, yo, it's almost, I'm like, stop playing. You just left like 20 minutes ago. I told you, bro. Yo, I came back over there, man. Like 10 minutes after that call, I'm like, what the fuck happened in that little bit of time? <laughs> and mind you, the place was packed one hour before the event. One hour. I'm talking from the top to the bottom. We had to start working on a chair idea. So we asking y'all out there, come on out and spend the day with us, man. Yo, and everyone on, that man. came, that's why I don't like when debaters start getting all sour because they don't like how people looking at them at the end. And I told Divine this. I said, you're going to know that real because at the end of a debate, you always want to have somebody that got to keep making out post videos and they do the radio shows the same day or the day after. I'm telling you, this happens all the time. I said, 
I, you're gonna see it. He said, no, nah, no, nah. I said, on video, I said, you're gonna see. People do this all the time and they say they ain't gonna do it. Right. The main reason I don't like that is because it can take away from the experience. The, yo, that venue, Hebrews, I'm taking pictures with them that, that's meeting me for the first time. And my brothers is looking like, yo, this is real. They're like, yo, they're like, yo, we respect you, brother polite. We love what you do. We love your energy. We know you for our people. And they was keeping it real, the Hebrews in there, man. I'm not gonna say all of them, but the love in that room, it was a fair exchange. And the brothers conducted themselves powerfully. And that's why I meant it in my heart when the debate is over. I ain't give no slick talk. I said, yo, I love you, brothers. I'm glad you contributed. And then I, I, I thank my brothers who even didn't speak on our team. And I loved them for their, uh, I, I honored them for their research. Give, even, give our brother Reggie a shout out because he worked they, hard. He even worked if hard. Their research didn't touch my, my, my communication. I still gave them credit for the research because I know the intent was to make sure I'd be secure. So I gave them honors too, man. Sinjeti, Asaho Tech, those guys, man. I, I'm, I'm glad they didn't do what they was gonna do, uh, or, or get any more time to do what they was gonna do because, yo, it, that's not even right what they had, man. Yeah, y'all, Sinjeti, yo, we was overly prepared, and we we was we was acting like we was gonna deal with some people heavy in in academia. That's how we we treated this debate. Right. My brothers and them was planning for parties after the debate. Right. Talking about they're gonna call us up to do Metanetra, and we calling them out to do yo, try us, try us. You're gonna see it on video. We're asking them, try us. They said they was gonna call me to the stands. I show up, I'm here. They don't call me up. Then I, I'm talking to Jonathan. Jonathan said, Yo, that's whack. They said they're gonna call you up to see if you can read Metanetra. They said, That's whack, man. How come they so I so Jonathan and I was talking, so Jonathan was like, you know what? Yo, please, we should just we should just force it on them. So I said, yo, I bet. He said, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go at them, and I'm going to dare them to ask me to read something better than you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then, yo, when he did it, he did it aggressively. He was like, yo, right at Nazi, like, I can read it. Try me. Give me something. Yo, when yo, when he didn't try him, we was like, oh, these guys were just bluffing. We looking for the white man that Hashan was talking about he going to bring. You know what I'm saying? The curator. <laughs> He said, we got a white curator. And we like, oh, he was got white backup. Talking about sources. I'm like, yo, we came there prepared. Like, bring them. Bring them. And we like, oh, man, you mean to tell me all that was bluffing? We like, oh, we're going to bring up that Exodus story. Yeah. We ain't hear shit about Exodus story either. So you know what? And don't don't put that all to time. So don't play around. Because I mean, we know, oh, if nothing else, you're supposed to attack us on that metal nature first round. If nothing else, that was your biggest argument, which we said, man, that's stupid. But how about you break down our misinterpretation or misconceptions of Egypt? And then that you could show that we don't know the language. But instead, that's what we did to them. When you watch it, yo, Jonathan went ham on them. Y'all better watch that DVD. Jonathan went ham on the language. I was just a little... Jonathan went hard on that. I thought y'all was gonna touch on the um the, the King James and all that. Though. We wanted to touch I wanted on King Shaka James. I to really get in that. Well, that would have, Shaka would have been a better debate to do it yeah. because I was have been kind of off the context because yeah. the Kevin on trial really fell more on us. Right. Because right. Shaka shit was more personal about his book because Gabal was like, "I'm getting your book," but yo, Shaka had a set where he could have did that. I wish he would have did it because that King James thing. You see, I tried to pull a little something there. Yeah. It was relevant. You know what I'm saying? Because that was our uh, motion for exoneration, our declaration of innocence. Because the way the debate was structured, they're supposed to read the indictment and go at us in the opening round about why they feel we're guilty. And we were supposed to give them our declaration of innocence and our motion for exoneration. Yeah. So that's why when I went in hard, they start screaming, get that on trial. I'm like, hold on. Uh huh. <laughs> hold on. They was you guys can't, you can't ask you, questions about us. Give it on trial. You can't do that. I'm like, yo, I ain't asking you no questions. I told you what y'all be on. Now I'm like, people that be on that. Don't have the right. I like when you see policemen running red lights and then trying to enforce law. You don't take them serious. You say that's not fair. That shit is corrupt. You dig? So I'm like, how are you gonna bring us to court for and accuse us of the very things that you uh perpetrate in your own cultural paradigm? So it was fun, man. I had so much fun. I had fun every debate because it encourages yeah, you to you study. Killed that. Oh, thanks a lot, you bro. You killed that shit, man. Oh man, man. I'm gonna tell you something. We all signed off, man. Oh, I okay. Want to say it while we oh, oh, all right. Yeah, we're going to get so off. We signing yeah. off, family. Yo, see y'all later. Thank y'all for supporting. We're going to have to do something real crazy, real big for the community. It's going to be large. With Kemet, hopefully, we got the Hebrew brothers and we all could uh, present the same day and time. But even if we don't, 
We're going to have the largest comedic summit ever. We're looking to get the Apollo. Let's do this big. Let's go to the yeah. Apollo and let's just break it down and go in on comedic science so everybody okay. can be brought up to speed when it comes to this information. That would be nice, man. But I hope we can also have a fair exchange with our brothers, man. You know, I'm going to call Brother Lex. I'm going to call Brother uh, Devon Yeah, you Prospect. called me this morning. Who? Oh, you said Lex. I yeah. thought you said Lux. I'm going to call them. Yeah, Lux called me this morning. And yo, Star, can I come over? I'm going to build with them, yo. Yeah. I'm going I'm to build with Lex. Keep and, your and little Prospect. money, man. I want to take I, your money. I think they got a lot of pride in their, um, their scholarship, and I think they will do uh, real nice presentations uh, in a less volatile environment. So, you know, I, I'm going to extend myself to those brothers and speak to them because I, I think they would fit that kind of decoy intellectually. I think that would fit better. Yeah. For those brothers you know what i mean and and those two brothers should actually Can't catch them. No. in my opinion but i don't know how things go on 18 they should have been a lot at more time because that whole fit cat presentation polite way yankee hats uh, presentation that nazi and uh shaw was on that's when you ain't got nothing else that's yeah. all that's when you hey. take that tie out so now a they got slide it. on the hat a slide on the shoes a yeah. slide on the chain a slide on the shirt i like doodle in the vagina and I'm, oh like, yeah what the fuck? and then the cartoons with sperm Yo, we sitting here like, yo, that's what we debating? <laughs> Y'all said that this is supposed to be scholarship. That's why Jonathan was saying, yo, Hashar, you fly on the streets. But you and Nazi doing that stuff that maybe it was for shock value or something. I don't know. But you had people in there like feeling bad about that. Like, damn, like, did Polite get in your head so much that you got an actual slide on fucking fit caps and, and sneakers? When Kimmett is on trial, it's like, you was condemning me. I right, say Black Power, we out. Black hey, Power. Hey. Get that DVD. It's the hottest one going to be on the streets. Peace.